24 VI cross section 1 and Hashem called to Moses Rabbi Lazar begins by telling us that through the higher letters drawn from Bunna and the lower letters drawn from Malchut the earlier generations gained wisdom in how to manage the activities of the world they knew how to permutate the letters given to Moses at Mount Sinai we are told about the two clouds of Moses one over the tabernacle and one over the mountain Rabbi Lazar speaks at length about the movement role and impact of the various letters and the ministers and angels associated with them he says that when God called to Moses the summons to enter the tabernacle issued forth from the permutations of the letters one Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion with the verse ask a sign or letter of Hashem your Elohim ask it either in the depths or in the height above Yeshua 711 I looked at the earlier generations and the later generations what is the difference between the earlier generations and the Later generations the earlier generations knew and perceived the supernal wisdom and knew to permutate the letters which were given to Moses at Sinai even the wicked people among Israel such as Akis were familiar with letters of supernal wisdom for the prophet said to him ask a sign have if Akis was unversed in supernal wisdom the prophet would not have spoken to him thus and through higher letters drawn from Bun and lower letters drawn from Malchut they gained wisdom that helped them manage their lips too this is because each and every letter have that was transmitted to Moses was crowned and rose over the heads of the holy supernal living creatures the secret of the supernal chariot which are Chesed, Bure, Tiferet and Malchut all the living creatures were crowned with the letters even the living creatures of the lower chariot which is in Malchut they flew in the air of Israel Saba and Tabuna which descends from the supernal air that is fine and unknown which is in Supernal Abba and I am a three both great letters and small letters would go up and down great letters going down from the supernal chamber which is concealed from all Bana and the small letters going down from another lower chamber Malchut all of these were transmitted to Moses at Sinai for the joining of the letters which secretly joined in every letter such as Aleph which is a single letter secretly joined by two other letters namely Lame P.E. and pronouncing the letter so too and articulating the name of the letter Bet is joined by Yud and Taf they were all transmitted to Moses at Sinai as well and all are known in secret by the friends they are fortunate five ask a sign Hevoti means literally a letter Hevoti everyone was conversant in the secrets of the letters with Rashab what is written and give me a true token Hevoti Yahashua 212 this refers to the letter Bob which is called a true letter if you infer from this that the other letters are not true that is not so Nonetheless, this letter Bob is called the true letter, unlike the other letters which are not so called for Bob indicates C E I R and then called truth as in the verse you shall show truth to Jacob Misha 726 ask it either in the depths refers to the last hay of the holy name Yud Bob while or in the height above refers to the letter Yud the head of the holy name Yud Bob this is the hidden meaning of the verse ask a sign letter of Hashem your Elohim which means a letter from the holy name it is implied by the verse a sign of Hashem which is a name of the holy one blessed be he one letter of it the tabernacle which is Malchut which is called your Elohim is based on this letter because Malchut receives from C E I R and then which is Yud Bob therefore the verse states Hashem your Elohim seven come and behold when the cloud rose over the tabernacle and rested on it all of those chariots and all of those vessels of the supernal tabernacle Malchut were Within the cloud therefore it is written and Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting for the cloud rested on it Shema 4035 he questions it is written and Moses went up into the midst of the cloud and Moses was in the mountain forty days and forty nights Shema 2418 if Moses could not enter the tabernacle because of the cloud which rested on it how could he enter the cloud and remain on the mountain for forty days eight he answers there were two clouds one cloud which Moses entered and in which he remained on the mountain forty days and forty nights this cloud is of Malchut and one cloud which rested on the tabernacle this cloud is drawn from the left column of Bunna and Moses was unable to enter it come and behold what is written and the glory of Hashem filled the tabernacle Shema 4034 literally it is not written filled but was full which implies that a fullness was achieved on high in Bunna and below in Malchut with the enclosing of the cloud in it. Tabernacle below a concealed means of perfection which is called cloud descended from the left column of Bunda down to the Shechinah which is called tabernacle and tent of meeting and the Shechinah was perfected nine four aspects of camps of angels which are in Malchut called lower chariot were concealed by the cloud which descended on the tabernacle which is Malchut the first mending of this cloud was in the first watch of the four camps of the Shechinah before everything was mended. The head of the right side is Zantil chief minister superior of the camps under the dominion of Michael and with him all the camps under him were mended ten one minister was placed in command over four times three which are the four aspects below each comprised of three when all of these supernal camps descend below their names are changed into other names when they remain on high their names remain unchanged that minister Zantil stands over them from within and one letter glitters on. Their heads a small olive when this letter glitters they all travel to the place where the sparkle glitters eleven inside them that is within the aspect of Malchut namely Tiferet is Raziel high minister and superior of the camps who stands within under the dominion of Michael who is Jesus with him are all of the camps under him a minister named Romil is in charge over them at the portal surrounded by twelve ministers three times four for he himself being Tiferet of the side of Tiferet comprises twelve for the side of Tiferet has three angels Michael who is Jesus of Tiferet Raziel who is Bureau of Tiferet and Romil who is Tiferet of Tiferet Tiferet of Tiferet alone also consists of twelve just as the four sides of Michael do Raziel high minister is in charge over them all for his name is not changed one letter glitters on the heads of all these camps the letter rush when it glitters they all travel in the direction of that gleam this letter is prepared to punish those who Reveal the secrets as indicated by poverty had Rish and shame which lay 1318 as the name Rish indicates judgments 12 inside them that is within the aspect of Tiferet namely Bure is you file high minister and superior over the camps under the dominion of Michael with him were fitted out all of the camps under him not all the camps here are revealed in terms of numbers this is the illumination of Chakma which prevails in the left column which is Bure as explained earlier this is because they are not complete here until they come to the eternal house the secret of the temple built by King Solomon where they all achieve completeness and the camps grow in perfection that which is stated here in reference to the tabernacle before they achieve completeness is that all of these camps under Yephile were given over at that time to enter with him one minister is in charge over them named Chakamiel and twelve ministers around him three on each side as stated earlier thus the Side of Bura also has three angels, Michael Yephile and Shechamiel, being Chesed Bura and Tiferet of the aspect of Bura and Shechamiel who is Tiferet of Bura Ashin himself consists of twelve as does the whole assembly for Tiferet always includes everything and Yephile high minister is in charge over all of them for his name does not change thirteen one letter glitters over the heads of all these camps the letter cup for this letter glitters on the aspects of Bura when it glitters they all travel in the direction of that glittering this letter cup is suspended in the air and the judgments in it are subdued three times a day this is through the radiance of the three supernal columns of Zeir and which is called day however before it is mitigated by the three columns it goes up and down meaning that the chakma in it is drawn to descend downward and then the KUF is in judgments then one of these two letters cup and rush which are the letters in the middle of the word. Bayikra Bob Yud Kuf Rush Aleph covers the letter Aleph of Bayikra and one covers the letter Yud of Bayikra which follows the letter Kuf when starting from Malchut which is Aleph 14 inside them that is within the aspect of Bura namely Chesed is Kedumil High Minister and superior over the camps under the dominion of Michael and with him were fitted out all of the camps under him one minister named Ariel is in charge over them at the portal and twelve ministers around him three on each side of the four sides thus the aspect of Chesed has three angels Michael being Chesed of Chesed Kedumil being Bura of Chesed and Ariel being Tiferet of Chesed Ariel in himself consists of twelve as does the whole assembly this High Minister Kedumil is in charge over them for his name never changes there is a letter over their heads a letter Yud when it glitters they all travel in the direction of that sparkling glittering the letter cup as stated covers this letter Yud and the Rush. Covers the Aleph of Bayikra 15 in the innermost in the
Secret of this calling the glittering of the Bob to the Yud, the glittering of Yud to the Kuv, the glittering of the Kuv to the Resh, and the glittering of Resh to the Allah. The outlines of the glitters of the letters join and then issue forth to their function, for after the glitters are connected, the voice issues forth from them, and they are joined in the hidden meaning of an Hashem called Hebei Krash Moses. Vei 11 Moses used to observe all of these days that he didn't enter the tent of meeting, which is Malchut 17. After this, the letters returned and were turned in their imprints by the permutation of letters which were given to Adam in the Garden of Eden to induct the letter Aleph, which is Malchut, into concealment in the place called Holy I am a, Then the Bob issued forth and yielded place at the beginning of the word to the letter Aleph, and the Aleph connected with the letter Bob, which is followed by the letters Kuvresh the Yud, which is Jesus entered between the letters. Kuvresh to form Kuv Yud Resh they were imprinted and glittered as before and the voice which is the secret of the central column issued from among them the glitters of the letters connected and emerged outside and were revealed to all the camps that traveled with these letters which are the camps of the four chariots of Michael as mentioned above when the glitterings of the letters join becoming combined a voice strikes among them and their imprint is visible to all the chariots in the combination Aleph Bakav Yud Resh Oker the voice returns from them and calls among the chariots I will make men more rare have Oker than fine gold and mankind more than the pure gold of Ovar Yeshayah 1312 18 fortunate is Moses for he saw all this except the combination Okir Aleph Bakav Yud Resh which was not seen by Moses eyes only the first combination Vayik Rav Yud Kuvresh Aleph did Moses see this latter combination was not revealed to him for we do not state one's praise. In his presence, a sign of this is come out. You three, Bimit bar one hundred and twenty-four. It is written and called to Aaron and Miriam. Bimit five. It is also written with him. I speak mouth to mouth. Bimit eight. And it is written, My servant Moses is not so. Bimit seven. All of this is being said to Aaron and Miriam, not to Moses, because we do not state one's praise in his presence. Nineteen. The letters arose in this fashion and returned to all of these camps in the combination. Oker Aleph Bakav Yedresh. The voice issued forth and declared, I will make men more rare. Have Oker than fine gold. And the letters were drawn down and glittered on the heads of all these chariots, and they subsided until they were set in their places. Twenty. The head to the left side. Malchut is Jeskiel, high minister and superior over the camps of all these who stand at the portal of the tabernacle, which is Malchut under the dominion of Gabriel. For Michael rules over the right of Malchut, and Gabriel over her left with him are fitted at that portal. All these camps under him, one minister named Gazriel is placed in charge over the portal from the outside with him are twelve ministers who surround him, three on each side at all four sides, twenty-one. These are the ones whose hands hold the blade of the revolving sword. This minister Chiskiel is in charge over them much higher on the inside. One letter glitters over their heads, the letter Aleph, which is the side of Malchut and Gabriel for these camps stand and travel only according to the secret of Aleph, which is the right, which is Malchut that issues forth with Chesedim, which is the right side for the left of Gabriel travels only with the right meaning by being enclosed in Chesedim, and the right travels always to the left meaning with the inclusion of the left. The Aleph is a letter which glitters and issues forth from the right meaning Malchut from the aspect of Chesedim in her, then all the camps travel to that place where that glitter radiates twenty-two inside them that is within. The aspect of Malchut meaning the aspect of Tiferet is the minister Rahatil superior of the camps who stand within under the dominion of Gabriel with him are all the camps under him one minister named Katshiel is in charge over them at the portal and twelve ministers surround him four times three that minister Rahatil is in charge over all of them for his name does not change here too in the aspect of Tiferet there are three angels Chesed Bira and Tiferet namely Gabriel Rahatil and Katshiel one letter glitters over the heads of all the camps it is the letter Zayin which is the side of Tiferet and Gabriel it is exchanged with the setting of the tabernacle for the letter Lame meaning that it is mitigated with Bino which is represented by the Lamed which is a tower flying in the air this exchange is alluded to in the verse he shall pour headnizel the water out of his bucket the midbar 247 for Bina is the bucket of Tiferet the Zayin is exchanged in the engraving of it. Letters and is called the substitute of Lamed when this letter glitters on the head of all these camps they all travel to the side of that glittering 23 inside that is within the aspect of Tiferet meaning the aspect of Bura is Capsule High Minister and Superior of the camps under the dominion of Gabriel with him are fitted all these camps under him those which are entrusted to him at that time one minister named Azel is in charge over them and twelve ministers surround him three on each side as we have established here two in the side of Bura of Gabriel there are three angels Jesus Bura and Tiferet namely Gabriel Capsule and Azel Azel by himself who is Tiferet contains twelve as explained above and Capsule High Minister is in charge over all of them one letter glitters over the heads of all these camps it is the letter Dalit which is the side of Bura of Gabriel and they all travel towards the glittering of that letter this letter is suspended in the air over Two other letters Aleph and Lamed 24 inside them that is within the aspect of Bura of Gabriel meaning his aspect of Chesed Ias Shamil High Minister this one changes to four names because he does not remain in his position at times he is on the right side and at times he is on the left side at times to the east and at times to the west he is named according to his function with him are twelve ministers who surround him three on each side as we have established Rak Shiel High Minister is over these twelve ministers under the other minister Shamil here two in the side of Chesed of Gabriel there are three angels of Chesed Bura and Tiferet namely Gabriel Shamil and Rak Shiel Rak Shiel by himself contains twelve one letter glitters on the heads of all these camps the letter Hey this letter is suspended in the air over all the other letters Aleph and Lamed as we stated regarding the letter Dalit these two letters Dalit Hey rise above all the others for they are Chesed and Bura. Which are the first three Sfirot, they all travel to that glittering which is suspended from that letter A25 in the innermost in the place called Holy Head Coach Bina. One letter glitters in the concealment of Holy, the letter close MEM for the close final MEM always illuminates at the left side of Bina. It glitters with a spark over all the letters, Aleph Lamed Dalit and Hey, and a voice issues from among the letters the glittering of this letter the close MEM strikes and takes it. Last two letters which are glittering suspended in the air, namely Dalit and Hey, leaving Aleph Lamed that connects with the others to the right Vayikra, they strike each other and they all travel and the first letters Vayikra return to gleam as before they issue forth from Malchut outside to Moses whereon Hashem called to have Vayikra El Moses the call and summons to Moses to enter the tent of meeting issued forth from these permutations of letters section 2. Came to my garden Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Shimon discuss the title verse and give several explanations for it having chosen Israel for his own God which to separate them from others and to protect them the very day that the tabernacle was erected on earth another tabernacle was erected on high but Moses could not enter the newly built tabernacle until sacrifices were offered the title verse also refers to the upper garden of Eden since all are sustained by the flow of the river that issues. From there 26 and Hashem called to Moses and spoke to him out of the tent of meeting saying Vayikra 11 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse I came to my garden my sister my bride I have gathered my myrrh with my spice I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine with my milk Sure Hasherim 51 the beginning of the verse disagrees with its ending and its ending with its beginning it says I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine with my milk. And following this, it is written, Eat, O dear ones, if one who invites others to eat does so when the food is set before him. However, once he has eaten, how can he invite another to eat with him? Yet it is written, I have eaten my honeycomb, he have drunk my milk, indicating that he has already eaten. 27 He answers, Israel were fortunate that the Holy One blessed be, he wanted to purify them and chose them from among all the nations, having chosen them, he wanted to distance them from all. Persecutors in the world come and see the very day that the tabernacle was erected below another tabernacle on high was erected with it on the very same day as is written, the tabernacle was erected, Shema 4017, not specifying further because it also includes the tabernacle on high, which is Malchut, that day was the time of rejoicing for the Holy One blessed be, he 28 what is written, once
When these see Iron and Malchud which are alluded to in the verse I came are blessed on high through what are they blessed and sated entirely through the aroma of the sacrifices 31 come and see when the congregation of Israel Malchud descended to rest on earth in the tabernacle the Holy One blessed be he addressed Malchud with this verse I came for blessings and joy were present throughout the world she Malchud was sweetened so that blessings may go forth from her to all for when. The six extremes of Zeir and Pen are blessed which are alluded to in the verse I came then all the worlds are blessed together below and on high and Israel are blessed from all of them another explanation of I came to my garden my sister my bride Rabbi Yitzhak said the Holy One blessed be he unites with the congregation of Israel Malchud only when these six extremes of Zeir and Pen which are alluded to in the verse I came are saturated from the flow of the river which does not stop by Rai Mahin the faithful shepherd 32 he opened the discussion with the verse I came to my garden my sister my bride this is Malchud which is called Adonai I have gathered my myrrh refers to Chesed which is a level of Abraham regarding whom it states I will get me to the mount of Mershur Hasherim 46 meaning the mountain of Mari with my bomb refers to Netzach which is a level of Aaron regarding whom it states take you also to you the best spices Shema 3023 they are the union of the right arm which is Chesed with the right leg which is Netzach this is alluded to in the verse at your right hand are pleasures forevermore had Netzach Tehillim 1611 the two corresponding blessings in the Amid of prayer are Magan Abraham lit shield of Abraham which is Chesed and the other is Ritzalit be favorable which is Netzach 33 I have eaten my honeycomb Shur Hasherim 51 this is Bira which is called the fear of Isaac with my honey but this is Hadith. Level of David and this is the union of the left arm which is pure with the left leg which is hot I have drunk my wine with my milk this is the torso which is Tiferet and the member of the covenant which is Yezid that is Jacob who is Tiferet with Solomon who is Yezid and Kami oh dear ones and drink drink deep loving companions who are the twelve tribes and the twelve blessings of the Amid of prayer and the additional blessing regarding heretics that I ask Velmal Shinem lit and for slanderers who eat at the one regarding whom it states I came to my garden my sister my bride thirty four some divide the six extremes of Zeir and Pen according to a different hidden meaning I have gathered my mer with my bomb refers to the torso and the member of the covenant Tiferet and Yezid I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey these are the right leg and the left leg which are Netzach and hot I have drunk my wine with my milk is the left arm with the right which are Chesed and Bira for wine refers to Bira and milk to Chesed and Rai Mahin the section 3 eat O dear ones and drink drink people loving companions Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Abba give their interpretations of the verse but Rabbi Shimon tells them that the secret meaning is that eat O dear ones refers to those above and drink people loving companions to those below those above are Eden Abba and the river Iamah thus the source and the flow are never parted those below are male and female who unite occasionally but not constantly as do Abba and Iamah the eating and drinking are the completion of all 35 Rabbi Yehuda said eat O dear ones and drink drink people loving companions Sure Hasherim 51 these are all those who sob and wail for they are drawn from the left column and the judgments of the left prevail over them wherefore they constantly sob and wail this is because they were all sated and blessed together on the day that the tabernacle was erected for they all enjoy the king's feast which is the central column when do they all eat when the king comes joyously therefore the king is made happy and he first gladdens the queen then they all eat and rejoice 36 Rabbi Abba said eat O dear ones and drink drink deep loving companions these are the six extremes of Zeir and Pen which we have stated regarding these it states the king has brought me into his chambers Sure Hasherim 14 drink deep loving companions alludes to that wine which satiates all this is the illumination of Chakma which is called wine Rabbi Lazar says about all the lower beings the angels and souls of Briah once these six extremes of Zeir and Pen are blessed all the lower beings are blessed 37 Rabbi Shimon said all this is fine but the secret meaning is eat O dear ones above and drink deep loving companions below Rabbi Lazar said to him who are those above and who are below Rabbi Shimon said to him you ask well above refers to a lofty place where they are in unity and joy and they never part from each other supernal Abba and Ima and these are called dear ones thus it is written and a river went out of Eden Beersheet 210 Eden Abba and that river Ima never part they are always in goodwill unity and joy drink deep loving companions refers to those below who are called loving companions male and female which unite at certain times during prayer on Shabbat and festivals but not constantly as do supernal Abba and Ima this has been explained 38 come and see with regard to those above Abba and Ima we find written only eating but not drinking what is the reason it is because one who has bottles of wine needs to eat and since thereby supernal Abba and Ima is the preserved wine therefore eating is mentioned by them yet in regard to those below male and female who are in need of irrigation drinking is mentioned for all the plantings need irrigation from the deep river which is by therefore in regard to the ones it is written eating and the others drinking supernal Abba and Ima are called dear ones while male and female are called loving companions 39 Rabbi Lazar said to him it appears that the loving companions are in love so why are they below Rabbi Shimon said male and female which are lower than Abba and Ima desire one another but are not always together therefore they are called loving companions supernal Abba and Ima who are constantly together and are never concealed or parted from each other are called dear ones therefore the dear ones are in goodwill and unity constantly and the loving companions are in desire at times but not constantly the eating and drinking stated in the verse are the completion of all in order that the congregation of Israel which is Malchut be blessed and joy prevails throughout the world's 40 Rabbi Shishkiah explained the verse eat O dear ones as referring to sacrifices for they are the king's feast to be offered before him and the masters of Judgment enjoy them all are sated and joy is found amongst all 41 Rabbi Acha explained the verse eat O dear ones as referring to when the Sheshanah entered the tabernacle where there was blessing and joy everywhere the Sheshanah entered the tabernacle like a bride to the Shema marriage canopy and Israel then achieved perfection below and were united with the Holy One blessed be he on earth thus it is written and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them Shema 258 then the higher beings and the lower beings were sated section 4 the flowers appear on the earth Rabbi Shimon examines the flowers appear on the earth the time of the singing bird is come and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land we learn from this that the Holy Land is blessed from the plantings that God made and that turtle dove Torah is the oral Torah the great voice who shows the way Moses is connected to the written Torah Zir and Pen 42 and Hashem called to Moses Vayak 11 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse the flowers appear on the earth the time of the singing bird is come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land Sure Hasherim 212 this verse must be examined it is already written appear on the earth so why does it state again is heard in our land it would suffice to mention the land once he answers the flowers refer to the saplings which the Holy One blessed be he uprooted and planted elsewhere where they grew as plantings producing flowers 43 appear on the earth that land Malchud was blessed from them as is proper for now Malchud is blessed from Zeir and Ben and Bina and who is it? it is the Holy Land the supernal land Malchud which assuredly is a land the time of the singing bird also pruning is come means that the time arrived to uproot the dominion of the ministers of the nation so that they would no longer have power over Israel this was the time when the tabernacle was erected 44 and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land this is the land below which Israel inherited through Joshua what is the voice of the turtle dove it is a great guide Hetar is similar to Tor turtle dove who shows the way this is Zeir and Pen which is called Torah which coupled with Malchud when Solomon built the temple below then the Holy One blessed be he was bedecked with his crowns the Mokin of the first three Sfirat of Ima which are called crowns as a groom with a bride as is written go forth O daughters of Zion and behold King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him Sure Hasherim 311 45 in the book of Gita it states that the voice of the turtle dove Hetar refers to the oral Torah which is Malchud for the written Torah which is Zeir and Pen is simply called Torah the oral Torah is called Torah as you say the variants Vayikra and Vayikra where Vayikra implies
For Moses is the chariot to Zeir and in section 5 why when I came was there no man we are told that when the children of Israel perform good deeds the holy name is complete but when they do not and when they are punished by exile that name is not complete even though they are in exile God is still among them yet although he comes to the tabernacle no one is there whose spirit is awakened 47 he called to Moses Vayikra 11 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion with the verse why when I came was there no man when I called was there none to answer is my hand limited that it cannot redeem Yeshayah 500 and to Yisrael are fortunate because the Holy One blessed be he is wherever they are and prides himself with Yisrael as it is written Yisrael in whom I will be glorified Yisrael 493 48 furthermore Yisrael make hold the faith the secret of Malchut on earth Yisrael is the perfection of the Holy Name when Yisrael are perfected in their good deeds is it where the Holy Name is complete but when they are not complete in their deeds below and are punished by exile it is as if the Holy Name on high is not complete we have learned that one rises and the other descends for the supernal Yisrael Zeir and withdraws and rises on high the congregation of Yisrael Malchut descends below and they withdraw from one another and the Holy Name remains incomplete all this is because the congregation of Yisrael is in exile 49 although Yisrael are in exile. The Holy One blessed be he is amongst them and comes early to the synagogue he calls and says return faithless children and I will heal your backsliding your mayah 322 but there is no one whose spirit is awakened and the Holy One blessed be he says why when I came was there no man when I called was there none to answer I came early yet there is no one whose spirit awakened section 6 and offering to Hashem as soon as the tabernacle was complete God rested in it and called out to Moses informing him that because Israel would sin in the future their tabernacle would be taken away from them therefore they must offer sacrifices Rabbi Shizkiah and Rabbi Shimon discuss the offerings that are done to awaken mercy and not judgment it is important that one stands by the altar with a broken spirit feeling remorse for his actions so that judgment may be softened 50 come and see on the day that the tabernacle was complete the Holy One blessed be he quickly Come and rested in it immediately literally he called to Moses and Hashem spoke to him out of the tent of meeting saying Vayikra 11 and Hashem spoke to him he informed him that in the future Israel will sin before him and this tent of meeting will be taken as pledge because of their sins and will not remain in their hands this is what is written and Hashem spoke to him out of the tent of meeting meaning regarding the tent of meeting that it will be taken as pledge in the future because of Israel's sins and it will not remain in existence the remedy for this is if any man of you bring an offering to Hashem Vayikra 12 here are sacrifices for you which protect for all 51 Rabbi Shishkiah was in the presence of Rabbi Shimon he said to him that which is called an offering had should have been titled bringing near Hekirov or drawing near Hekirov why then is it called an offering had he responded it is known among the friends that an offering is the Drawing near of those holy crowns, namely the Sfirat, Shizid, Birat, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut, who are all drawn together and mutually connected until they all form a perfect unity, so that the holy name be properly set. That is the meaning of an offering to Hashem, an offering is the drawing near of those holy crowns, Shizid, Birat, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut, to Yudhe Bapheh, which pertains to mercy, denoting the central column, thus this holy name may be perfected and unified properly, so that mercy can prevail throughout the worlds, and the holy name will assume its crowns to perfume everything. 52 All this is done to awaken mercy and not to awaken judgment, therefore it is to Yudhe Bapheh and not to Elohim, for why Yudhe Bapheh indicates mercy, while Elohim indicates judgment, and we require mercy and not judgment. Rabbi Shishkiah said, Happy is my portion that I have asked and merited these words, it is a clear explanation, but is it not written? It? Sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Elohim you will not despise. Tehillim 5119. Thus it is written, the sacrifices of Elohim instead of the sacrifices of Hashem. 53 Rabbi Shimon responded, certainly this is true. Namely, the offerings of Elohim is not written, but the sacrifices of Elohim. This alludes only to the actual slaughtering that is designated by the name Elohim, for which reason it was performed at the north side of the altar for the north side. Alludes to the name of Elohim, which is judgment. Sacrificing is to the name of Elohim, which is the side of Bura, so that the spirit of judgment will be mitigated and broken, and judgment thus be weakened, thus bringing mercy to overpower judgment. Therefore, it is written, the sacrifices of Elohim to break the strength and power of harsh judgment, as it is written, a broken spirit. This implies that the strong spirit of judgment is broken, and its spirit and power shall not be overpowering thus man is to stand by the altar with a broken spirit and feel remorse for his actions in order that this strong spirit be broken so that judgment may be softened and mercy overpower judgment. 54 Rabbi Lazar said the scriptural verse if any man of you bring an offering to Hashem should have been written in this manner if any man brings an offering to Hashem why is the phrase of you interposed here he answers the scriptural verse comes to exclude the first man who also brought an offering. When the Holy One blessed be he created the world he did not bring in sacrificial offering from the cattle and sheep but a horned ox with one horn we have stated that of you alludes to any man so if any man of you bring an offering would exclude the other man implying the first man since he is not one of you Rabbi Shimon said to him you explained it quite satisfactorily indeed it is so section 7 great is Hashem we learn of the importance of the female to the Male and are told that a man is not even a man without a woman, that a king without a queen is no king, that Hashem is not great without Malchud. When they join, everyone rejoices, and the congregation of Israel is blessed. 55 Rabbi Abba introduced the following psalm a song, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Tehillim 481. This hymn transcends all other psalms of hymns the sons of Korah merited to praise him. It is a double chant, being a song and a psalm indicating a praise upon a praise, a praise that was divided into two praises. 56 The sons of Korah merited to sing and recite the praise of the congregation of Israel. What is it? It is in the phrase, Great is Hashem and highly praised in the city of our Elohim in the mountain of his holiness. If it to clarify, when is the Holy One blessed be he called great when the congregation of Israel that is Malchud is with him, as is written in the city of our Elohim, he is great to elucidate together with the city of Elohim, which is Malchud, he is. Great 57 Rabbi Yehuda said to him why did it have to say here our Elohim would it not have sufficed to say in the city of the mountain of his holiness he said to him assuredly it is so for the city Malchut is called the fear of our Elohim and it is a praise of Israel what does the verse teach us it teaches us that a king without a queen is no king he is neither great nor highly praised as was said before hence whoever is not comprised of male and female is devoid of all praise and is not even a man moreover he does not deserve to be blessed 58 it is written so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east Eo 13 we have learned in the book of Rabham not Asaba, that Job's spouse was his equal in fearing the holy one blessed be he and he was called great from his wife's side here also great is Hashem and highly praised in what is he great he repeated the words in the city of our Elohim in the mountain of his holiness namely Malchut from her side Hashem is called great because Chakma the secret of greatness does not emanate to Zeir and save when he is with the female 59 for this reason this praise is uttered on Monday as the first three days of the works of creation correspond to the three columns of Zeir and the second day being the left column once Chakma is drawn to Malchut in accordance with the secret of the verse his left hand is under my head sure Hasherim 26 you may ask why it is not written that it was good of the second day seeing it is of such value that Chakma is drawn from it he answers the reason is that they are destined to be separated the secret of the words it is not good that the man should be alone Bereshit 218 is that as long as he is alone when the female is not yet taken from him it is written not good thus it is not written that it is good of the second day 60 great is Hashem and highly praised means as we said that he is great only when he is with Malchut beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth Mount Zion Tehillim 483 is the praise to their union beautiful for situation is the holy one blessed be he that is the righteous namely is it of Zeir and it is the joy of the whole earth for then everyone rejoices and the congregation of Israel Malchut is blessed 61 Elohim is known in her palaces for a fortress before
is not considered an offering and there are no blessings with him neither above nor below this is understood from the verse if any man of you bring an offering he is different because he is not a man not a part of mankind and the Sheshana does not dwell on him because he is defective and is considered deformed a deformed man is distanced from everything most of all from the altar and from bringing an offering 64 Nadab and Abba who proved this as it says in the verse and a fire went out from Hashem Vayikra 102 because they were not married hence it is written if any man of you bring an offering a man consisting of both male and female is worthy of bringing an offering but no other 65 Rabbi Abba said although we interpreted Nadab and Abihu in a different way it is surely so that it happened because they were not married but in sense is superior to any offering in the world since for its sake the upper and lower beings are blessed yet they were not worthy of bringing this offering which is higher than any offering as they were not married to a woman therefore they were not worthy of bringing an offering all the more so higher matters like incense for they were not worthy of it that the world shall be blessed through them 66 you may say and a fire went out from Hashem and devoured them Vayikra 102 wherefore were they so severely punished he answers it is like the story of a man who came before the queen to announce that the king would come to her house and Stay with the queen to rejoice with her. The man came before the king, and the king saw that the man was deformed. The king said, It is beneath my honor that through this crippled man I shall come to the queen. In the meantime, the queen prepared her house for the king when she saw that the king was ready to come to her. Yet that man caused the king to stay away from her. The queen gave orders to kill that man. 67 When Nadab and Abihu likewise came in holding incense, the queen Malchud rejoiced and prepared herself to accept the king's eir. And when the king saw that these men were flawed and deformed, the king did not want to come to the queen through them to stay with her. Thus the king went away from her. When the queen saw that it was because of them that the king was gone from her, immediately a fire went out from Hashem and devoured them. 68 The reason for all this is that he who is unmarried is flawed and deformed in the eyes of the king, and the holiness of the king is gone from. Him for it does not dwell on a flaw of this it is written if any man of you bring an offering let he who is considered a man bring it but he who is not considered a man, namely he who is unmarried, shall not bring an offering. 69 of the cattle Vayikra 12 is a generalization including all kinds of animals unclean and clean of the herd and of the flock if it is a specification after the generalization for the general contains only what is in the particular namely only those which are kosher for eating it is forbidden to bring as an offering those animals which are not kosher to eat it has been discussed elsewhere which animals are kosher and which are not kosher and the secret meaning thereof section 9 if his offering be a burnt sacrifice Rabbi Shia says that God's thought is the beginning of everything emanating ways and paths just so is man's thought that emanates ways and paths including the evil inclination and sinful deeds from Rabbi. Shimon we learned that the thought of the burnt offering rises to the place of thought and the deed of the offering draws near to the ending of thought 70 if his offering be a burnt sacrifice Vayikra 13 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways Yeshayah 558 my thoughts have much of has a defective spelling without a vav come and see the thought of the Holy One blessed be he the sphere of Chakma is the highest and the beginning of everything ways and paths emanate from that thought so that the Holy Name is present and established properly from that thought the waters of the Garden of Eden issue forth to refresh all things from that thought are maintained the higher and lower beings that thought gives existence to the written Torah Zeir and the oral Torah Malchut that is they emanate from it 71 man's thought is the beginning of everything ways and paths emanate from that thought that turn his ways in this world and in the world to come from that thought issues and comes out the filth of the evil inclination to harm him and everything transgression sins and malicious deeds prevail from that thought as do idolatry incest and bloodshed scripture therefore says about it for my thoughts are not your thoughts 72 since thought is the beginning of everything it starts first of all with if his offering be a burnt sacrifice may I cry 13 as a burnt sacrifice atones for thoughts of the herd of it but not any of the herd what then only a male a young bullock and not a cow which is a female rabbi it's hoxed of the herd is unspecified indicating both male and female scripture then specifically adds let him offer a male without blemish of it and not a female because the male is considered to be above the female and the female is considered to be below the male similarly of the flock of it namely of the sheep or of the goats but not female 73 all that is brought as a burnt sacrifice is male and not female because the burnt sacrifice hebala also rises rises above the heart surely it is above the heart to what thought is higher than the heart it is known what is above the heart namely thought for thought chakma is considered male and the heart of female namely by this is the secret of the understanding heart as it receives from chakma the burnt sacrifice thus rises higher and is male exclusively the verse therefore begins with it burnt sacrifice rather than the other offering because thought is the beginning of everything 74 rabbi yehuda said if this is so then the burnt sacrifice should have been offered to the place of high thought namely the sphere of chakma why then is it brought before a low place namely is it rabbi Shia could offer no explanation he came before rabbi shimon who said to him the beginning of everything is thought namely the sphere of chakma the beginning of zeir and, pen, and the ending of Thought is the place called morning head baker what is it? it is the final part of the body that perfumes the female namely is at the ending of zeir and that is called body similarly man's thought is the beginning of everything thought ends when the deed he contemplated is done when i asked that in the morning booker as is written woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil on their beds midget 21 when when the morning head booker is like they executed it the morning light alludes to yes that is so called hence the thought of the offering rises to the place of thought chakma and the deed of the offering surely draws near to the ending of thought yes at section 10 the virgin of israel is fallen she shall no more rise rabbi yehuda tells us that because she is called Bathsheba, daughter of seven the virgin of israel means a virgin blessed by the seven spirot but he also says that in other verses of lamentation the virgin clearly means it Congregation of Israel so Rabbi Yehuda is confused and goes to Rabbi Shimon for an interpretation Rabbi Shimon uses an allegory to explain that although in the first exiles there was always a set time limit in the final exile there is not at the end of the earlier exiles the congregation of Israel returned to God but in the final exile God will come and raise her himself 75 Rabbi Acha was walking with Rabbi Yehuda on the way as they were walking Rabbi Yehuda said we have learned that the virgin of Israel means a virgin blessed by the seven Sfirot she said be retired at Netzach Hadiyazit and Malchud of Zeir and as she is called Bath Sable daughter of seven namely Malchud we have explained it in many places the virgin below inherits seven blessings for herself yet the word son of man take up a lamentation for the virgin of Israel assuredly relate to the congregation of Israel which is Malchud hence it is more difficult to understand than anything else for it is written the virgin of Israel is fallen she shall no more rise Amos 52 the interpretation of the friends namely the virgin of Israel is fallen she shall no more fall again but rise is correct but we would have said so if the passage were said by way of consolation but in this passage a lamentation was uttered this verse proves so literally that it is a lamentation 76 he said to him assuredly it is so a lamentation and this was the most difficult for me to understand and I came to Rabbi Shimon with a darkened face he said to me from the look on your face what is in your heart is seen I said to him indeed my mouth and heart speak the same he said to me speak up I said to him it is written the virgin of Israel is fallen she shall no more rise so if a man who is angry with his wife and she goes away she will never go back to him if so woe to the children who are exiled with her he said to me is what the friends said about this not sufficient to you I said I have heard what they say and it is graceful but my mind is not yet clear about it. 77 he said to me everything the friends have said is good but woe to the generation where there are no shepherds and the flock wanders and goes without knowing whether neither right nor left assuredly this verse needs to be familiar and everything is revealed to those who look through the way of the Torah in a true way. 78 come and see for all the exiles of Israel he set a time and limit to them all in them all day. Turn to the Holy One blessed be he and the virgin of Israel Malchud returned to her place in the time decreed on the last exile it is not so for she will not return as in the times of the other exiles this verse teaches this for it is written the virgin of Israel is fallen she shall no more rise and not written is
written the virgin of Israel is fallen she shall no more rise by herself therefore it is written on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen name is 911 she will no more rise as in other times but I shall raise her she will not rise of herself this is why it is written on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen I will raise up the tabernacle of David what is the tabernacle of David it is the virgin of Israel that is fallen as in the words is fallen it is to the glory of the virgin of Israel and to her praise that she will no more rise of herself but the holy one blessed be he will raise her I have learned this at that time 82 Rabbi Yehuda said surely you have persuaded me and it agrees with me this is the explanation of this matter this agrees with another explanation which I have heard but forgotten but now I have regained it we learned what Rabbi Yussi said that the holy one blessed be he will proclaim about it Congregation of Israel saying shake yourself from the dust arise and sit down O Jerusalem Yeshua 522 namely like one holding his friend's hand saying shake yourself and rise so will the Holy One blessed be he hold her and say shake yourself arise 83 Rabbi Yishai said to him all the retinue of the king's palace started also to speak to her in this language arise shine for your light is come Yishai 601 for the king is here surely then when the king makes peace with her it is her glory and the joy of everyone on every occasion she came before the king and rose before him as written and she came into the king's presence and stood before the king I may lash him 128 this time it is not so but the king will come to her and placate her and return her to his palace hence it is written behold your king comes to you Zechariah 99 and not you to him he comes to you to pacify you and to raise you he comes to you to perfect you in everything and he comes to you to raise you to his Palace and join you in a constant everlasting union as written and I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. Hashia 222 section 11 and then the voice of the shofar sounded louder and louder. Rabbi Abba says that in the voice of the shofar two things are being referred to the voice and the shofar he says that the Torah issues from here and that it was given from the place that comprises all voices. The first tablets were engraved from this place from where all freedom comes. Rabbi Abba concludes by telling us that there is nothing in the Torah that is weak or broken. Any weakness or emptiness comes from the individual 84. While they were walking Rabbi Abba came towards them. They said here comes the man of wisdom. Let us welcome the presence of the Sheshana. When they approached him he came down from the saddle and went to the 85. He opened the discussion saying and then the voice of the shofar sounded louder and louder. Shema 1919 the ancient. Books are divided on this subject, all stumbling on the same thing. Some say that the voice of the shofar is two, the voice being one, and the shofar one, namely Tiferet and Binda. This is strengthened by the words which do not say the shofar sounded louder and louder, but the voice of the shofar, which indicates the voice coming out of the shofar, as the voice is C E I R N, which comes out of the shofar, that is Binda. Assuredly, Binda is called the shofar, as written, the great shofar shall be blown. Yeshayah 2713. This Binda is a great shofar through which slaves are given everlasting freedom for the 50th year, is the secret of Binda, which illuminates and sets slaves free. All the enslaving clipot are abolished through its lights. We have already established this 86. Some learn and specify that it is all one since it is written, the voice of the shofar, namely the voice that is called shofar Binda. Once do we know that Binda is called the voice from the words a great voice which was. Not heard again. Devarim 519. This great voice Bina is called the shofar. Therefore, it is written. And then the voice of the shofar sounded. Lit went. Whither did it go? If you say to Mount Sinai or to Israel, it should have said descended. But the Torah issues from here from Bina. And the word went refers to the Torah. The Torah was given from this place Bina, which comprises all voices. When you look at things, all is one. For there is no conflict between the two explanations. 87. Since the Torah came out of Bina, the first tablets were engraved from this place from Bina. This is the secret meaning of the words engraved. Had Chera on the tablets. Shema 3216. Do not pronounce it Chera, but Chera. Live freedom for it. Is real freedom being the place on which any freedom depends for freedom from all clipot comes only through the lights of Bina. Come and see that there is nothing in the Torah on which there is disagreement about which all friends argue and discuss this one. So and. That one so that does not wholly follow into the same place Malchut and gather into one source he has at 88 and then the voice of the shofar sounded lit went this has the same meaning as all the rivers run lit go into the sea Kahilat 17 namely into Malchut called sea it is also written all go to one place Kahilat 320 namely into Malchut louder lit becomes very strong is as we have learned that Bina is the secret of a vessel that contains 40 measures very strong teaches that there is nothing in the Torah that is weak or broken when you look at it and know it you shall find it strong as a hammer that breaks rocks if it is weak it comes from you as we established from the verse for it is not an empty thing Devarim 3247 if you find it empty it is from you therefore scripture says very strong section 12 Moses voice Rabbi Abba examines the verse Moses speaks and Elohim answers him by voice and determines that the voice with which Moses spoke is the voice of Zir and Pen and that nothing proceeded from the mouth of Moses alone yet whatever Moses spoke was included in the voice of Elohim 89 it is written Moses speaks and Elohim answers him by voice Shema 1919 in this place high things are comprised namely high mysteries we indeed learned that and Elohim answers him by voice refers to Moses voice the voice which Moses held onto namely Zeir and Pen called voice we should look into this for it used to say the opposite and Elohim spoke yet here it says Moses speaks 90 some say that it is because it is written and they said to Moses speak you with us and we will hear but let not Elohim speak with us Shema 2016 that Moses speaks and Elohim answers him by voice unlike what was before where it is written and Elohim spoke there is nothing in the Torah that comes from the mouth of Moses alone as we said in relation to the curses in the book of Devarim that Moses uttered with his own mouth. We did not say by himself but with his own mouth which means that these curses in Vayikra were uttered by the mouth of Hashem Bureau which is Malchut meanwhile he uttered those in the book of Devarim with his own mouth the mouth of the voice to which he held Zeir and that is so called this matter is well explained 91 in the rabbinical academy's book of Agita it has been said that although the whole Torah was uttered by the mouth of Hashem Bureau which is Malchut it was uttered also by Moses himself who is Zeir and what exactly for example the curses in the book of Devarim they were then included in the mouth of Bureau therefore says Moses speaks and Elohim answers him by voice Moses speaks this is the voice of Moses namely Zeir and and Elohim answers him by voice this is Bureau namely Malchut that acknowledged the voice hence it answers him by voice that is by the voice of Moses now he who opened the discussion with words of the Torah let him speak up they sat down section 13 but if a priest's daughter be married to a stranger we learn from Rabbi Abba that when God completed the world below he wished to complete the body of man with the soul so he created him male and female only when a man joins with his wife and they have a son and daughter is man complete in the likeness of above if a man does not have children his soul does not join the holy name when he dies Rabbi Abba tells us that a priest's daughter is the holy soul because it issued from the union of Zer and Pen and Malchut he adds that no stranger shall eat of it means that anyone who did not have children will not be able to partake of the supernal delight in God 92 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse but if a priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child they cross 2213 happy is the portion of Israel above all the heathen nations for when the holy one blessed be he created the universe he created it solely for Israel so that they would receive the Torah on Mount Sinai and would be completely purified and righteous before him. 93 Come and see when this world was completed in Israel as above namely like the upper male and female and Adam was placed on earth with his head reaching the top of the sky the Holy One blessed be he wanted to complete the Holy Soul from above downward so that they would be united and connected to each other the soul with the body and the body with the soul hence it says. And Hashem Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath lit soul of life. Bereshit 27 so that they would cleave to one another and he would be complete in the likeness of above and prepare himself in this way. 94 He therefore created him male and female so that he would be whole when his man called whole like above when he is united with his spouse with joy and desire and he and his wife issue a son and a daughter then his man complete in it. Likeness of above and he completes
Body is male and female, the soul being female and the body male. This is the meaning of the words be a widow to with the soul would be widowed without the body to which she cleaved for it died or divorced for it was divorced from its portion in the holy name. And all this is for what reason? Because it would have no child in whom it may find a likeness above with which to attach itself to the holy name as explained before. Therefore it has returned to her father's house. May I cross 2213 what? Is returned just returned namely it corrects itself as it used to be before descending into a body then it has returned to her father's house this is the holy one blessed be he as in her youth but as before after it is right it she shall eat of her father's bread and delight in the delights of the king 97 from now on no stranger shall eat of it lit holiness but who is a stranger he who did not establish the holy name below namely did not beget a son and a daughter has no part in it shall not eat of it he has no part in the supernal pleasure which has the aspect of eating as written eat oh dear ones sure hasherim 51 referring to supernal eating the delight of the holy one blessed be he this delight dwells wherever delight dwells when the savor of the offering would rise section 14 israel sustained their father in heaven we learned that the meal is made of the savor of the offering when it rises to god the savor is for his servants and the sweetness is for God who does not eat until he has prepared a meal for his servants only the souls of the righteous partake of God's meal 98 come and see when there are vittles below there are vittles above this is like a king who prepared his own meal but not one for his servants after preparing one for his servants he would eat his own meal hence it is written I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey but this is the king's meal eat oh dear ones and drink drink deep loving companions but this is his servants meal the meal is made of the savor of the offering when the savor of the offering rises it is therefore called a sweet savor to Hashem Vayikra 19 the savor the illumination of Chakma from the left is for his servants and the sweetness the illumination of Chesedim from the right is for Hashem the king's meal was therefore delayed for his servants meal this is why we have learned that Israel sustained their heavenly father for he eats not before Preparing a meal for his servants who then partakes of the king's meal only the souls of the righteous section 15 how good and how pleasant we are reminded that God gave the children of Israel neither to a minister nor a messenger but holds to them himself and calls them his servants his children and his brethren 99 he again opened the discussion saying how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity Tehillim 1331 happy are Israel that the holy one blessed be he gave them neither to a minister nor to a messenger but Israel hold to him and he holds to them the holy one blessed be he called them servants for the love he had for them as written for to me the children of Israel are servants they are my servants may I cross 2555 afterwards he called them children as written you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 later still he called them brethren as written for my brethren and companions sake Tehillim 1228 since he called them brothers he wanted to place his Chechenah on them and not to stir from them and it says how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity section 16 and if a man shall take his sister from the book of Rabbi Yebisab the elder we learn that when the congregation of Israel is in unity they rejoice in God and he in them the word one indicates complete union whereby Israel are united with God Rabbi Shimon had also said that one means the union of male and female but now at the time of this exile God is not called one because the union of Zer Enpin and Malchut is undone we then hear about the oil of the holy ointment that is drawn from Atika Kaddish as the ointment flows down it must be met by the incense rising from below 100 the holy luminary said that how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity Tehillim 1331 resembles the words and if a man shall take his sister Bayai Cross 2017 he explains his words Rabbi Yebisabah the elder said in his book a man is the holy one blessed be he and shall take his sister refers to the congregation of Israel why is it so it is a disgraceful deed have cheesed it but indeed it is cheesed as we already explained therefore how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together let also in unity namely the holy one blessed be he and the congregation of Israel the word also adds Israel below because when the congregation of Israel is in unity to a joint face to face with the holy one blessed be he Israel below also rejoice in the holy one blessed be he it is therefore written also together Rabbi Hamnadisaba says in his book that also together includes the righteous Yezid in the congregation of Israel who are united as one hence it says together have Yashad as Yashad is derived from Ashad one thus combining both explanations to mean one thing 101 he explains why the word one Indicates complete union saying we learn the portion of Hero Israel Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 what is one it is the congregation of Israel united with the Holy One blessed be Zeir and as Rabbi Shimon said the union of male and female is called one the place where the female rest is called one what is the reason thereof a male without a female is considered half a body and half is not one when two halves of a body become one body then they are called one 102. Now in exile the Holy One blessed be he is not called one the secret meaning of this is that the congregation of Israel Malchut is in exile and the Holy One blessed be Zeir and rises high above the union of Zeir and and Malchut is undone and the Holy Name is not Holy One nor is it called one when is it called one when the queen is with the king and they are joined together hence it is written and the kingdom of militia shall be Hashem's Obadiah 121 what is the kingdom have? Malusha is the congregation of Israel when Malchut is attached to her and on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 therefore scripture says how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity 103 it is like the precious ointment on the head Tehillim 1332 he asks what is the precious ointment he answers it is the oil of the holy ointment that is drawn and flows from holy ancient one Atika Kaddisha which is Kedah for this oil is the lights of Atika found in the supernal river Bina that suckles the children male and female thus the candles namely the spirot of male and female are lit and oil as the male and female suckle from Bina flows on the king's head and from his head to his precious beard from thence it flows on all the rhymes of glory the king dons namely all the spirot of Zeir and hence it is written running down over the hems or attributes of his garments the hems being the king's crowns namely the spirot. Call the tributes whose holy name is in the 104 come and see each flow and every joy in the world's descents to bless the world only by the holy crowns namely the Sfirat of Zeir Anpin which are the name of the holy king namely Yudi Habab the secret of Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut thus scripture says running down Hebel over the hems of his garments surely it is running down over the hems as it says by the order Hebel of Aaron and his sons Bimidbar 427 plenty flows by its hems descending to all the world so that there will be blessings for all come and see this precious ointment is not present until the service below rises and they meet each other as is written ointment and perfume or incense rejoice the heart Mishlei 279 the ointment is the plenty above and incense is the service below which encounter each other to everybody's joy Rabbi Acha and Rabbi Yehuda raise their hands and thank Rabbi Abba section 17 and Elohim Came to Abai Melech Rabbi Acha tells us that when Elohim is mentioned it always means the minister appointed over them as in the title verse the question arises of who is being sinned against in for I also withheld you from sinning against me Rabbi Shimon offers the explanation that a people's minister above is removed from power as a result of the sins they committed below the sins of men always cause a defect above to wit that they end the rule of their minister above for this reason an offering must be brought 105 Rabbi Acha opened the discussion with the verses and Elohim came to Abai Melech in a dream by night Bear she 203 and, and Elohim said to him in a dream I do know that you did do this in the integrity of your heart of it six words and Elohim came to Abai Melech make us ask why the difference between the nations of the worlds of which it says and Elohim came and Yisrael of which it does not say and Elohim came he answers we have so learned that every Elohim mentioned here is that power the minister appointed over them just as Elohim came to Bilam at night. Bimidbar 2220 is also the power appointed over him 106 if you say that in the verse and Elohim said to him in a dream for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Beer she 206 of necessity the word sinning against me allude to the Holy One blessed be he answers surely it only alludes to his minister he explains the words I too know why does it say here too it stands. For an addition though it is known to
The flesh is written I abhorred Hebekuts and Vayakra 2023 20, like thorns have got stuck in the flesh. What does that teach us? It teaches us that the sins of men cause a defect above what is a defect. It is like the verse and for your transgressions was your mother put away. Shea 501 the transgressions of the nations to blemish their minister and that his rule is ended 108 due to this reason that the sins of the lower beings cause a defect above an offering is brought what is an offering. We have explained it in relation to the words and for your transgressions was your mother put away. The sin causes separation between Zeir and Pen and Malchut by its blemish as Malchut was sent away for the sin. The offering that is brought brings near the supernal world Zeir and Pen and the lower world Malchut and all becomes one Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yehuda came and thanked Rabbi Ch. Section 18 Sir Hashem with gladness Rabbi Yehuda reminds us that men must Perform every service for God with a glad and willing heart so that his service will be complete. The difficulty is that a man cannot come before God in gladness when he has sinned because he should be broken hearted. The gladness therefore is accomplished through the priests for they are far removed from judgment and through the levites who are responsible for singing. Man must approach God through two gates. Chesed and fear 109. Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying Sir Passion with gladness come before his presence with singing. Tehillim 1002. We have learned that any service man wants to perform before the Holy One blessed be he should be done with gladness and a willing heart so that his service will be complete. If you say that it is impossible to do so with the service of the offering because that man transgressed his master's precept, the precept of the Torah and repented before his master, how would he face him with a broken spirit? At least where is gladness? Where is Singing 110 he answers oh we have learned as a man who has sinned before his master and transgressed his precepts should be of low spirit a broken spirit when he comes to bring an offering and rectify himself it is best if he cries there is no gladness or singing they are contrived by the priests and the levites who add gladness and singing to him gladness is established in the priest for he is always far removed from judgment the priest should always have a more joyful and happier countenance than the rest of the people for his crown a priest who causes him the singing is in the levites because the levites are always responsible for singing as we explained 111 the priests and levites stand by him and the service of the holy one blessed be he is completed through them the priest stands by him and proceeds with gladness and joy to properly unify the holy name and the levites proceed with the song and it says know that hashem he is elohim Tehillim 1003 this is it Offering lift drawing near which draws mercy nearer to judgment and then everything is mitigated for Hashem is mercy and Elohim judgment and they are perfumed together as one 112 now that there are no offerings whoever has sinned before his master and has repented is surely bitter sad and of a broken spirit how can he observe gladness and singing seeing that they are not in him we have learned that the praises he offers to his master the rejoicing in the Torah and singing the Torah are the actual gladness and singing we also learned that it should not be done in sadness namely man should not stand before his master in sadness if he cannot for he is broken hearted for his sins what should he do 113 he replies the secret of this matter is that we learned that a man should always enter the distance of the opening of two gates and say his prayer hence it says waiting at the post of my doors Mishlei 834 namely he should enter two gates could you possibly think that these are literally two gates rather the amount of the distance of the opening two gates here is an allusion to David's words lift up your heads O you gates Tehillim 249 these are the temple and the sanctuary that are the inner and innermost at the beginning of the grades called Chesed and fear namely viewer these are the gates of the world it behooves man therefore to direct his prayer towards the holy of holies that is the holy name and then say his prayer these are the two gates the two crowns namely the two Sfirot Chesed and Vira of Zeir and 114 some understand it this way gladness is the congregation of Israel Malchut called gladness gladness as we explained is like in the verse for you shall go out with joy Yeshua 5512 which means that Israel are destined to go out of exile with joy what is it, it is the congregation of Israel Malchut hence scripture says serve Hashem with gladness namely with the aspect of Malchut as written thus live with this heads off them. Shall Aaron come into the holy place? Vayikra 163, which means with the aspect of Malchut called Zot. Here too, the meaning is to serve Hashem with the aspect of Malchut called gladness, and all is one. Namely, Malchut is called Zot and gladness. 115, come before His presence with singing. This makes her perfect for gladness is in the heart and singing in the mouth, and there is more perfection in the mouth. The perfection of this gladness is revealed, and it is known what it is. It is the correction of man who should be perfected before his master and be worthy of it. When one is worthy of it, then know that Hashem he is Elohim, for He forms the unity of Hashem is Elohim. Both interpretations come to the same conclusion that the holy name should then be well unified, and that one would be connected to the other, so that all will be one. Such is the service of the holy one. Blessed be Rabbi Ch. and Rabbi Abba said to him, Surely this is so happy is the portion of the righteous who. Are occupied in the Torah and know the ways of the Holy One. Blessed be he. They rose and walked three miles with Rabbi Abba. Section 19. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your love. Rabbi Abba says that the title verse refers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who composed the prayer before God. Therefore, a man should consult them before he goes to the synagogue and prays. 116. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion, saying, But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your love. Tehillim 58. We have learned that it is not good for a man to go to a synagogue before consulting Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they instituted the prayer before the Holy One. Blessed be he. Hence, in the verse, But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your love. I will come into your house is Abraham. I will worship towards your temple if it is Isaac, and in the fear of you if it is Jacob. They should be included first, and then he. May enter the synagogue and say his prayer. Then does it say, You are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified? Yeshua 493, section 20. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice, Rabbi Yussi says that people are to sacrifice what they can afford. An animal of a herd or an animal of the flock or a bird, Rabbi Lazar says that people should sacrifice in correlation to the sin they have committed. He explains that the rich man must compensate for pride, but the average man is not so proud as the poor man has the humblest spirit of all. He therefore brings the smallest offering. Rabbi Lazar asks his father, Rabbi Shimon, why God then kills the poor from famine, but let the rich survive as the rich will continue to sin even more. Rabbi Shimon reminds him that God avenges himself on the wicked by giving them peace in this world, but causing them to perish in the next world. We are introduced to Yehuda, the other who divided all his possessions and gave them away and Settled himself down to study Torah every night. Yehuda the other tells us that God comes before whoever brings him an offering with a willing heart. He says that the poor man brings God two offerings. One is his own fat and blood, and the other is his sacrifice. The poor man's offering is the most worthy of all. One hundred and seventeen. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, Vayikra Rabbi thirteen. Rabbi Yossi said, What difference does it make whether he brings a burnt sacrifice of the herd of the flock or of the birds? If they are the same, why are they separated from each other? Seeing that they all become the same thing, namely a burnt offering. He answers, He who can afford it offers of the herd. If he cannot, he brings of the flock. And if he cannot afford even this, he should bring of the birds. Thus it is written, and if he be poor and his means do not suffice, Vayikra one thousand four hundred and twenty-one. For the holy one blessed be. He does not overload on a man that which he cannot bear. One hundred and eighteen. Rabbi Lazer said, One should offer in. Correlation to the sin the rich man whose heart is proud at times should offer a bullet for his heart is more bent on sinning before his master an average man should bring of the flock because his spirit is not proud enough to sin the poor man whose heart is not proud and whose spirit is humbler than them all brings the slightest offering namely of the birds all of their offerings are acknowledged individually and the holy one blessed be he judges each one with balanced scales 119 rabbi. The laser asked his father rabbi Shimon we heard that for three sins of the world famine comes on the world namely the priestly tithe on produce had trim and tithing and setting aside a piece of dough for the priest had hollow that they do not take all these sins are common among the rich only because their hearts are proud but not common among the poor what justice is there that the holy one blessed be he kills the poor and lets alone the rich as only the poor die of hunger
care of the world and the sound of the cry of the poor men may the merciful save us from them and their shame it is written I will surely hear let hearing will I hear their cry Shema 2222 it is twice written here one is for paying attention to their cry and the other to take revenge on those who caused them to do this hence it also says that I will hear for I am gracious Ibid 26 and my anger shall be inflamed Ibid 23 therefore woe to the evil rich when there is famine in the world for the sound of the cry of the poor man before the Holy One blessed be he 122 come and see the poor man's offering is the lightest because his heart is broken even if he meditates on sinning the sin passes from him because his sorrow and the sorrow of his household suffice therefore each and every offering are all individually known to the priest 123 there is a story of a certain rich man who brought two pigeons before the priest when the priest saw him he said to him this offering is not for you he came home sad his brother said to him why are you sad he said to them the priest did not sacrifice my offering they said to him what was the offering he said to them two pigeons they said but this is for the poor not for you as it is written and if he be poor and his means do not suffice may I cry 1421 but you should bring your own offering he said to them what is it they said to him a bullock 124 he said to them so contemplating sin is so grave that a bullock should be brought as a burnt offering for it I vow that no sinful thought shall ever enter my heart from that time on what did he do he occupied himself with commerce by day and slept at night when he woke from sleep he called his brothers who taught him the words of the Torah which he studied until daybreak he thus became knowledgeable in the study of the Torah he was called Judah the other one day Rabbi Yesus Abba saw him dividing his possessions half to the poor and half to sailors to sell on the sea and then settling down to study the Torah 125 Judah the other opened the discussion saying and Moses said to the Canaanites I Shmuel 156 who are the Canaanites they are the children of Jethro Moses father-in-law who built their nest Hebken in the desert like a sparrow in order to study the Torah as written even the sparrow has found a home Hebken Tehillim 844 the Torah has neither need of pleasure nor of merchandise but one should labor in it night and day therefore they went to the desert away from the pleasures of Jericho hence the children of the Canaanites Moses father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees Shoftim 116 126 for you have shown kindness to all the children of Israel I Shmuel 156 he gave delight to Moses in his house and Moses comprised the whole of Israel then he also added one portion to the Torah thus being kind to all Israel 127 why is this matter brought up in relation to the war with Amalek he answered Saul said that when Israel came out from Egypt none of the nations in the world came to persecute Israel except for Amalek which caused evil and waged war on Israel but the Canaanites hastened to come in peace and did kindness with all therefore you are not worthy of joining Amalek 128 moreover it is written of Jethro and Jethro Moses father-in-law took a burnt offering and sacrifices for Elohim Shema 1812 as he brought an offering to the Holy One blessed be he and intended to convert the verse teaches us that his offering was of value to the Holy One blessed be he when he brought an offering before the Holy One blessed be he it is written and Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses father-in-law before Elohim but before Elohim is precise for it teaches us and we learn from it that the Holy One blessed be he comes before the man who brings an offering with a willing heart 129 come and see the poor man's offering is of great worth before the Holy One blessed be he is he brings before him two offerings the one is his fat and blood and the other is the sacrifice he is offering though he has no food for himself he still brings an offering thus his fat and blood lessened the offering of the poor is the lightest two young turtle doves or two young pigeons or he may even bring a little flour and he is forgiven at that time a proclamation resounds saying for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the poor wherefore is that because the offering of it poor man is the worthiest of all for the poor man's offering that i wanted to bring caused me to be in the portion of the holy one blessed be he in the portion of the torah i therefore gave all my possessions to the poor for they namely their offering brought this on me 130 as the poor man boils his fat and blood so is the flour he brought fried with precious oil from this we learned that everyone offers a meal offering in a pan or a deep pan offering just as the sin eats his fat and Blood with the fire of the evil inclination and all his body parts are heated in the fire so does this offering burn in the very same manner for the essence of the offering is like sin it behooves one to offer before the Holy One blessed be he the desire of his heart spirit and soul for he prefers it to anything else 131 happy is the portion of the righteous who bring this offering daily before the Holy One blessed be he what is it they bring before him themselves and their souls I wish to bring this offering for this is what the Holy One blessed be he asks of man in this world a real offering is better for it is through it that all the worlds are blessed section 21 blessed be Hashem out of Zion we learn that the title verse refers to Malchut whenever the moon shines by the light of the sun and they draw close to each other never removing their light from each other sometimes the moon is called by the name Yudhei Bapei and sometimes even an angel is called by that name 132 he also spoke saying blessed be Hashem out of Zion he who dwells at Jerusalem Hail Yuyat Hailim 13521 he asks his Z-E-I-R and been called why Yudhi Bapi blessed out of Zion which is Malchut but was he not blessed out of the supernal deep river by Noah did it say blessed be Hashem out of Zion but he replies blessed be Hashem alludes to Malchut whenever the moon Malchut shines by the light of the sun Z-E-I-R and been and they draw close and do not remove their lights from each other the reason it says blessed be Hashem why Yudhi Bapi is that the moon Malchut is sometimes called by the name of the king Z-E-I-R and been just as he is called Yudhi Bapi so is she called Yudhi Bapi is written and Hashem rained on S-D-O-M and on Amora brimstone and fire from Hashem out of heaven Bereshit 1924 the first why Yudhi Bapi refers to Malchut and the second why Yudhi Bapi refers to Z-E-I-R and been moreover even a messenger namely an angel is called by the kings. Name Yudhi Hei 133 Another interpretation for Blessed be Hashem out of Zion Whence is it made known that the Holy One Blessed be He is blessed He says again out of Zion from the place called Zion That is the Yezid of Malchut It is made known He is blessed What is the reason thereof Because it is written For there Hashem has commanded the blessing Tehillim 1333 And since He pours blessing on Zion It is made known there that He is blessed For the blessed pours blessing Rabbi Yes is said to him Happy is your portion that you have merited All this happy are those who study the Torah For it is as if he who studies the Torah Is attached to the Holy One Blessed be He as is written But you that did cleave to Hashem Your Elohim are alive Every one of you the state of Aram 44 section 22 7 firmaments and 7 lands Rabbi Yehuda tells us that when God created the universe He created 7 firmaments above 7 lands below 7 C7 River seven days seven weeks seven years seven times and seven millennia in which the world exists, and God is to be found in the seventh of each of these we hear a description of the firmaments and the lands and the different creatures that are found in each of them and the role that Adam plays and where he dwells 134 and if his offering be a sacrifice of peace offering Bayakra 31 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse and Elohim said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters bear sheet 16 come and see when the Holy One blessed be he created the universe he created seven firmaments above created seven lands below seven seas seven rivers seven days seven weeks seven years seven times seven millennia in which the world exists to it endures for six thousand years and for one thousand it is in ruins the Holy One blessed be he is to be found in every seventh of all that is mentioned above namely in the seventh millennium seventh year and so on 135 there are seven Firmaments above with stars and constellations in each and attendants ministering in each and every firmament in all those firmaments there are chariots on chariots that take on themselves the yoke of their master's kingdom in all the firmaments there are chariots and suns that are different from each other the ones on the other some with six wings and some with four wings some with four faces and some with two faces and some with one face some are of flames of fire some of water and some of wind hence it says who makes the winds his messengers the flames of fire his ministers tail in 1044 136 all the firmaments are on top of each other like onion shells clothing each other some below and some above for those that are inside are considered to be below and those on the outside to be above all firmaments tremble with the fear of their master by whose decree they journey by
Uppermost world called universe head table as we said as it is written playing with the universe head table is earth Mishlei 831 this universe cleaves to the firmament above where it holds to the supreme name hence it says and he will judge the universe in righteousness Tehillim 99 with righteousness indeed which is Malchut called righteousness for this reason the children of Adam are in the supernal land called table and are superior to all in the likeness of above as the supernal man is. Superior to all as will be talked of 139 what is the reason that man below is in the likeness of above it is that above all firmaments there is a firmament superior to them all on which sits the throne of the Holy One blessed be he has written the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone and on the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above on it Yushchikal 126 which is the secret of why you have faithfully spelled to the numerical value of MEM. A45 correlating to the numerical value of Adam so here too in this table there is a king above all who is he man that is not the case among the lower beings 140 he asks whence do the lower beings come from he replies from the vapors of earth and by the help of the firmament above come out creatures different in their appearance from each other some of them are clothed some in shells like worms that are found on the earth some of them with red black and white shells and some from any color all creatures are like that with a lifespan of 10 years only 141 Rabham Manasava the elder explains further in his book that the entire inhabited land rolls around like a ball so that some are up and some are down to with the creatures around the globe are opposite each other and the seven sections of the globe are seven lands all the creatures of six of the lands are different in their appearance according to the difference in the atmosphere in each place and they live like any other man 142 there is an inhabited place so that when there is light on some, on that side of the globe, it is dark for others on the other side of the world thus when it is day for one group it is night for the others there is an inhabited place where there is day only and no night save for a little while it has been said in ancient books and in the book of Adam that there are seven lands the one below the other with a firmament separating each and every land and this is correct to it. He does not disagree with them in his words that they are all one globe that is divided into seven parts as shall be explained it is written as such in I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works Tehillim 13914 and how manifold are your works Hashem Tehillim 10424 all is therefore well for both are words of the living Elohim we must not question how both interpretations can be right seeing that they contradict each other because the secret has been Transmitted to men of wisdom and not to those who set and divide natural limits and it is a deep mystery of the Torah 143 similarly there exist creatures in the sea of different appearances hence it says so is this great and wide sea wherein are creeping things innumerable both small and great beasts there go the ships there is a Leviathan Tehillim 10425 all are interdependent all in the likeness of above in all the worlds none rules over everything but man and the Holy One blessed be he rules over him 144 Rabbi Nehorisaba sailed on the great sea there was a storm on the sea and all those aboard the ship perished a miracle happened to him and he descended through certain paths at sea and came out underneath the sea into a civilization he saw creatures all of them small who were praying but he did not understand what they said a miracle happened to him and he came up he said happy are the righteous who labor in the Torah and know the mysteries of the supernal secrets Whoa. To those who disagree with what they said and are not believers 145 from that day onward he cried when the sages spoke words of the Torah in the house of learning they said to him why are you crying he said to them because I sinned against belief in the words of the sages that is he did not believe there were seven lands in which there were strange creatures until he saw them as explained and I fear retribution in that world section 23 the illusions of the four letters of Yudhei Vahe we learn from Rabbi Yehuda that the firmament that divided between the upper and lower waters is the reason that there is peace between them the world is established upon peace and God's name is peace Rabbi Abba talks about the letters in the name of God Yudhei Vahe and concludes by saying that the Yud is the essence and root and perfection of everything 146 and Elohim said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide water from water. Bear sheet 16 Rabbi Yehuda said were it not for that firmament that divided between the upper and lower waters the secret of right and left between which there is controversy controversy would have come to the world from them but this firmament the secret of the central column made peace between them and the world is established on peace alone come and see the holy one blessed be he is called peace he is peace and his name is peace thus everything is connected to peace Rabbi Abba said I see that the supernal name is holy of peace namely in all its grades and it is all on its way separate into the side and that side namely right and left 147 the yud of the holy name is connected with three ties hence yud has an upper tip a lower tip and a middle one therefore these three links evolve into a chain as follows the upper tip is the supernal crown higher than all the high beings the beginning of every beginning which stands above everything 148 the tip in the middle of the yud is another beginning for there are three tops to the yud each a top in itself thus the tip in the middle is another beginning that comes from the upper tip it is the beginning of all beginnings through which the holy name is built this head is more concealed than everything it is called chakma that emanates from the first top the supernal keter 149 the lower tip which is another lower top of the yud is by the head which waters the garden malchut a source of water by which all plants are watered because all the mokin of male and female and bria yitzra and asiyah flow from bina this is the secret of the yud of three knots keter chakma and bina which is therefore called a chain for it is like a chain of three rings connected to each other and all is one 150 we have learned from the book of enoch that when he was shown the wisdom of high mysteries and saw the tree in the garden of eden zeir and the tree of life in the garden he was shown wisdom Namely the lower Chakma known as Malchut by a high mystery united with Zeir Anpin which is above her and he saw that all the worlds are interconnected he asked them upon what are they established they said to him that they all are established on Yud namely Chakma from which they were established and evolved as written in wisdom have you made them all Tehillim 10424 he saw that they all trembled for fear of their master and that they were named after him 151 in his book King Solomon said that the Yud expands through a chain of three rings that are part of the knots of its body one is feared by all namely Keter before which all tremble with fear another is a concealed path concealed Chakma and another is a deep river by 152 afterwards he explained in detail about the letters of the name Yud Hey the house completely built is Yud Vav Dalat Hey namely in accordance with the secret of the words through wisdom a house is built Mishle 243 it builds Everything he explains the perfection of the holy name is Yud the Yud being the beginning of all it fathers all namely Chakma the Bab of the Yud fully spelled is the son it begot and issued namely Zeir and from whence comes the Dalit of the Yud fully spelled which is a daughter and a matron namely Malchut who is in charge of all judgments who are male and female of Chakma they are hidden throughout the worlds for the upper beings male and female of Atzalat issue from it and sustain it. Upper and lower beings together these male and female of Chakma are the secret of Yisrael Saba and Tevuna namely Bina from which all the worlds issue and are sustained both the higher which are male and female of Atzalat and the lower which are the three worlds of Bria Yitzra and Asiyah thus is Yud the perfection of everything and the holy name Yud Hey Bab is built by it and hidden within it 153 afterwards the Yud let out everything and chained everything in one connection to. Each other thus the holy luminary has explained that the Yud Chakma produced from it a river by as male and female of Chakma became by of which it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bereshit 210 this is the first Hay of Yud Hay Vav Hay as Vav Dalit of the Yud fully spelled the secret of male and female of Chakma were formed into Hay which is the image of Dalit over Vav the secret of Bina it is the supernal Iyame namely Yitzrael Sab and Tevuna 154 that river Bina produced two children as we learn Zeir Anpin and Malchut who are nourished by her later the two children Zeir Anpin and Malchut come out and the daughter is sustained by the son Vav the son is the king that all pieces is the secret of Tiferet namely Zeir Anpin and comes Hay namely the daughter Malchut that is nourished by the Vav as we already explained thus the Yud is the essence and root and perfection of everything is written through wisdom house is built Mishle 243. Section 24 10 names by examining the letter Yud we find that it is the essence of duality Zer Enpin and Malchut male and female the Yud is the father of all and the source of the
155 We learned that ten names were constructed and came from this Yad. The Yad is the tenth letter in the alphabet. The Yad immersed them all in the Holy River Bano which became pregnant with them. All the ten names are concealed within one supernal name. All concealed within the Yad. The Yad contains them and the Yad issues them. It is the father of all father of the fathers, namely Chisit Vira and Typhoret 156 from the Yud come out Babdalat with which it is fully spelled. This is alluded to. By their numerical value which is ten like the Yud, the letters of Yud include Bob Dalit which are the perfection of everything Bob Dalit are male and female Z-E-I-R and pontifying Bob and Malchut personifying Dalit which are male and female of Chakma they are called do spell Dalit Bob which means two therefore man is created with two faces these faces were male and female like it is above they are read as Bob Dalit from above downward starting with Bob inferring Z-E-I-R and pen followed by Dalit. Implying Malchut they are read as Dalit Bob from below upward whereby Malchut is first and then Z-E-I-R and pen it all amounts to the same thing the thirteen attributes of mercy depend on the Yud namely on the upper tip of the Yud which is Keter in which are the thirteen attributes of mercy the Yud therefore includes Bob Dalit as an indication of the male and female inside it from which Israel Saba and Tavuna the secret of Bano were made they are turned again to be Chakma once all Mokin. Emerge the perfection of everything the secret of the full spelling with Bob Dalit of the same numerical value as Yud as we have learned and established 157 come and see the ten names correspond to the ten letters to it to the Yud the tenth letter in the alphabet it therefore consists of ten letters in his book Rav Hamna Asaba said that there are eight names from Bada downwards and the two grades Keter and Chakma correspond to two firmaments that is they are hidden and unnamed because a name means revelation and what is incomprehensible cannot be known by name the number of names changes into ten when counting from Keter nine when counting from Chakma eight when counting from Bada and seven when starting from Chisid 158 he starts counting from Chakma saying the first name is Yaya Hay which is Chakma since Yud includes Hay within it to it the Yud fully spelled includes Bob Dalit which form the shape of Hay and Hay of Yud Hay Bob Hay comes out of Yud Itias. Formed of Bob Dalit with which Yud is fully spelled it came out of Yud the secret of Chakma and became by the thus the two letters Yud are included within Yud which is Chakma Chakma is therefore called Yah 159 the second name is Yud Hay Bob Hay called Elohim namely Yud Hay Bob Hay with the dwelling of Elohim which is Bina for that river Bina is of mercy but since judgments rouse from it due to the rising of Malchut to Bina not from itself its name is therefore spelled with the letters of mercy Yud Hay Bob Hay with the dwelling of Elohim to it with the vowels Eoa but it is not spelled with the letters of Elohim which represent judgment 160 the third name is El it is greatness namely Chisit it is called the great El the fourth name is Elohim from which judgments awaken it is severe judgment namely the sphere of viewer the fifth name is Yud Hay Bob Hay that includes absolute faith it is mercy perfected the sphere of Typhoret the sixth and seventh names of Netzach. And Hot are called Tayyid 161. The eighth name is Living El as written for their Hashem has commanded the blessing even life. Tehillim 1333. This is the righteous namely Yizid from whom all life comes. It is called Yod Hay as written Hashem Yod Hay tries the righteous Tehillim 115. It is the small Bob of the holy name and therefore the fully spelled Bob of the holy name comprises two Bobs. The first Bob being Tiferet and the second Bob Yizid 162. The ninth name is Adonai. It is the holy Malchut from which judgments come into the world. It is the last crown namely the last sphere of all names. The name Ahiyah is inclusive concealed in the first sphere of supernal Keter beginning of all beginnings. Its name is concealed and is not revealed for Ahiyah means I will be revealed but now I am not yet revealed as has been explained in the book of Agatha. The ten names are spelled differently but I have not learned it that way. 163. Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with it. Verse awake north wind and come you south blow on my garden that the spices thereof may flow out let my beloved come into his garden and eat its choicest fruits sure hashering 416 awake north wind these are burnt offerings ritually slaughtered on the north hebzaphone side of the altar because they are due to thoughts hidden hebzaphunum in the heart and in a place of judgment as the north side is left in judgment this is because thoughts come at night a time of judgment the north wind blows at midnight when people wake from their sleep and David's harp the secret of Malchut playing to the holy one blessed be he plays on its own people's thoughts and awaken 164 and come you south these are peace offerings that are slaughtered on the south side of the altar the side of Chesed right because they bring peace to everyone peace to the upper and lower beings as peace offerings hebshalomim brings peace hebshalom and perfection hebshalom they are the perfection of it Directions of the world overall perfection from the aspect of faith Malchut since peace offerings are overall peace the owners eat of them and enjoy them for it gives one peace and everyone is on the same level sin offerings and guilt offerings are eaten by the priests alone not by the people who brought them since it is for the priests to atone for them and to commute their sins of all offerings the peace offerings are the most beloved by the holy one blessed be he because they bring peace to the upper and lower beings 165 best of all offerings is incense which is completely wholesome and not burned for sin nor for any inadvertent trespass nor any wrongdoing but for joy as written ointment and incense rejoice the heart Mishlei 279 as we have already explained incense therefore is offered only when oil is offered hence it is written and Aaron shall burn on it sweet incense every morning when he dresses the lamps he shall burn incense on it and, and when Aaron lights it Lamps at evening he shall burn incense on it. Shema 307 to 8. This is so that incense and oil shall be together as oil alludes to Chakma and incense to Bina and Chakma and Bina are always together. Come and see peace offerings bring peace to everything and thus dissension and persecution never appear in the world but incense binds the bond of faith by drawing Mokin to Malchut called faith 166. Rabbi Lazar said all ten names are written in the Torah and we learned that the first name I will be Hebihaya Shema 314 is concealed high above as one saying I am what I am without it being known who he is it is Keter it is then written that I will be Hebihaya Shema 314 which is Chakma meaning I will be revealed in these other crowns at first it is concealed namely in Keter and then it begins to be revealed namely in Chakma and Bina until the holy name is revealed in Tifer at 167 thus it is first written by Moses Ahiyah which is concealed more than everything namely. Keter which means I am what I am then Asher Ahiyah lit that I will be which is Chakma meaning I will be revealed then comes the last Ahiyah namely Ahiyah has sent me to you of 15 which is Bina this is when I am a becomes pregnant with male and female yet the name is still concealed when is the name revealed when it is written go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them Hashem the Elohim of your fathers of it 16 this name is overall perfection and here lies the revelation and unity of the holy name which is Tiferet 168 therefore the first name before all is Ahiyah Keter the second is Yah which is Chakma as Chakma Yud issued Hay Bina which is concealed in it and never separates from the Yud this is the secret of Bina included within Chakma and they are called Supernal Abba and I am a Chakma is therefore called by the name Yah we have already explained the words and a river went out of Eden Bershi 210 which means that Bina called river Comes out of Eden Chakma this Bina is the secret of Yisrael Saba and Tevuna meaning lower Chakma and Bina they look like the shape of Hay that is the right angle of the letter Hay is the secret of Yud which is Chakma referred to as lower Abba and is called also Yisrael Saba the letter Hay which is Bina called lower Ima and called Tevuna extends from IT 169 I have learned from my father that Yud is Chakma as we said and came Yah when Chakma produced Bina inside it in the secret of Bob Dalit of the fully spelled letter Yud the secret of Supernal Abba and Ima who never separate from each other afterwards Yud produced Hay in the shape of Hay this Hay has a mark of a Yud at the corner of the Hay thus we have Yud which is Yisrael Saba and the river that comes out from it which is Tevuna the actual Hay that extends from the Yud in its corner and they are the secret of the first Hay in the name Yud Hay Bob Hay 170 drawn down from Hay namely Yisrael Saba and Tevuna are two children coming out from them from the
Keter Shakma and Bada alluded to in Yud as we already learned and IT behooves us to write Yud Hey which never separate from each other in the shape of the letter Hey that is first the Yud should be drawn at the upper right angle then two lines should be drawn from it one up as a roof and one below as the right leg with a small line as the left leg thus both will be completely perfect the father and the mother included within the Yud the supernal Abba and IMA then Yud issues its full spelling Bob. Dalit and the letter Hey is formed from them in the form of Hey which are a son and a daughter of Yud for Bob Dalit of the fully spelled Yud are the secret of Zeir and Ben and Malchut included within Shakma and are called a son and a daughter in the same manner Yud Hey should be written behold faith perfected which is by 172 afterwards faith has spread which is by and two children come out from it from the whole and go their different ways the son Zeir and Ben issues from them both. From Israel Saba and Tabuna, he is Bob of the holy name Yudhe Bob, hey, the daughter Malchut issues from the side of Iamate Tabuna, she is the last hey of the holy name Yudhe Bob, hey, she is completed only with Bob as Malchut reaches perfection only through Zeir and Pen, for she is sustained, namely receives her flow of plenty from him, therefore the form of hey should be drawn first as Bob and hey like this, which is Zeir and Pen and Malchut included within Malchut, behold Bob together with the expansion coming from it that completes the shape of hey resemble the river Tabuna that comes out of Yud that is Israel Saba as was explained in the form of the first hey of Yudhe Bob, hey in the earlier paragraph as the hey which is by is nourished from Yudhe, the same holds for the last hey, one should first draw Bob and then draw from it the shape of hey because this hey is nourished from the Bob, this Bob forming the first outline of the hey is the sun that comes out from Bob of Yudhe. Bob hey downward into the last hey to wit it is Zeir and within Malchut 173 these matters were expounded to me by my father and when I come by these words I say them thus because it is a token from my father to wit they were thus transmitted to me a man should be careful with the holy name to write it in this manner for this is how it is proper if it is not done in this manner it is not considered a holy name but is considered defective and he who renders the holy name defective it were better if he were never born 174 after explaining the first two names Zahaya and Yahidah and Shachma he explains the third name which is Yud hey Bob hey called Elohim namely but as we learned by is actually of mercy but judgment comes out from it it is therefore spelled Yud hey Bob hey mercy but pronounced Elohim judgment as it is held with the bowels of Elohim this is the river that comes out from Eden which is by the fourth name is great El we have already learned that it his greatness, namely the sphere of Shisa, the fifth name is Elohim, which is always pure. The sixth name is Yud Hey Mercy, overall perfection, the essence of everything, the bond of faith, which holds onto all ends as it includes all of the six extremities. Shisa, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid, it is the glory, Tiferet of Israel, 175. The seventh and eighth names are called together, Tzvoti, these are Netzach, and Hot, thus the name Yud Hey Hey Tiferet is close to everything and attached to all ends. For sometimes IT is written Hashem Yud Hey Elohim, an indication that Tiferet has an affinity to Bure, other times IT is written Hashem Tzvoti, an indication that Tiferet has an affinity to Netzach, and Hot, called Tzvoti. We learned that it can be concluded from the words of the true prophets that when they had proclaimed, thus says Hashem Elohim, and thus says Hashem Tzvoti, they knew the place from where the words of prophecy had come, 176, the ninth name. Is Shade namely Yezid which said to the world enough had die enough means it is satisfied in all its needs satisfaction comes to the world only from the righteous the foundation of the world who said to the world enough namely all its needs are satisfied the tenth name is Adonai Malchut because the judgment of Malchut is true judgment have din indeed and Adonai is spelled with the letters of din it is used for waging the wars of the king namely Zeir and in the world it is called lore. Vira and is called righteousness 177 these are the ten names of the holy one blessed be he with which he is called they are attached to each other in a complete union these ten names are the holy spirit of the king Keter Shachma Bani Shisid Vira Tifer and Netzach Hadiyazid and Malchut through which he is made known they are his name and he is they when they are all connected as one by the scent of incense then it is considered there as incense which means bond in Aramaic the bond that the grades have together happy is the portion of the righteous who know the ways of the Torah and know how to acknowledge the glory of their master of them it is written and they shall come and see my glory Yeshaya 6618 section 25 10 shekels apiece Rabbi Shimon speaks about the ten works of creation and the ten sayings or commandments in the Torah when Yisrael are occupied with the Torah the world prevails Rabbi Shimon places the ten statements of creation in bear sheet side by side with the ten commandments and points out their correlation he says that as in the title verse these two tens were weighed in the same scales and due to this the world endures 178 and if his offering be a sacrifice of peace offering they cry 31 Rabbi Shimon said it is written weighing ten shekels apiece headcough after the shekel of the sanctuary bar 786 he asks wherefore does it say literally ten ten twice he answers ten are in the works of creation and ten in the giving of the Torah for there are ten sayings in the works of creation namely ten times and Elohim said the verse in the beginning I also considered a saying and there are ten sayings namely the ten commandments in the giving of the Torah he asks what does that teach us he answers the world was created solely for the Torah and as long as Israel are occupied with the Torah the world prevails when Israel are idle from the Torah it is written if my covenant be not day and night it whereas if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth your may 3325 this means that if it were not for the Torah about which it says but you should meditate there in day and night Yahashua 18 it whereas if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth the lesson in the verses that caf equals 20 is Malchut which comprises twice ten of the creation and of the giving of the Torah that are interdependent 179 come and see there are ten sayings in the works of creation as we Learn that the world was created by ten sayings. The ten sayings of the giving of the Torah are the ten commandments. The ones correspond to the other. For were it not for those of the giving of the Torah, those of the works of creation would not have prevailed. It is written, I am Hashem, your Elohim, Shema 202, in the giving of the Torah, and it is written in the works of creation. Let there be light, and there was light. Bear sheet 13 for the faith of the Holy One, blessed be He, Malchut, which is the secret of I am is called light. As written, Hashem is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Tehillim 271. Thus they are one 180. It is written, You shall have no other Elohim beside me. Shema 203, which resembles the words, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Bear sheet 16, Let there be a firmament means let Israel, who are the portion of the Holy One, blessed be He, be gathered to the place called heaven, which is Zeir, and this is the meaning of what Rabbi Yesus once asked of Rabbi Ila the Holy One, blessed be he placed all the other nations under the charge of appointed ministers, but where did he put the children of Israel? He sent him this, and Elohim sent them in the firmament of heaven. Ibit 17, a goodly answer did he send to him that Israel are united in heaven, which is Zeir and 181 in the midst of the waters. Bear sheet 16, namely in the midst of the words of the Torah, for the Torah is called water, and let it divide water from water. Ibit. To wit, the Holy One, blessed be he who is called the well of living water from idolatry, which is called broken cisterns that can hold no water. Yermea 213, this is bitter water, muddy water, gathered water, foul and filthy. Holy Israel, therefore divide water from water. The Holy One, blessed be he from idolatry, thus this verse resembles the words, You shall have no other Elohim beside me. 182, it is written, You shall not take the name of Hashem your Elohim in vain. Shema 207, and it is written. In the works of creation, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place. Bear sheet 19, come and see whoever swears falsely by the holy name. It is as if he separates I am a Malchut from her place above. Thus the holy Sfirot do not settle in their place as it says, and a complainer separates close friends. Also, Chief Michelet 1628, the chief is none other than the holy one. Blessed be he, it is written, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together to one place. Bear sheet 19, which means not to cause separation between the grades called water by swearing falsely, but to one place as worthy of the
Lights are your father and mother. Your father is the sun. Zeir Anpin and your mother is the moon. Malchut the sun is none other than the Holy One. Blessed be he is written for Hashem Elohim is the sun and shield. Tehillim 8412 and the moon is none other than the congregation of Israel. Malchut is written nor shall your moon withdraw itself. Yeshayah 6020 therefore the two verses are 1 185 it is written you shall not murder. Shema 2013 and it is written in the works of creation. Let it. Waters swarm abundantly with living creatures. Let a living nefesh. Bereshit 120. This teaches us that you must not murder man. That is called a living soul. For it is written, and the man became a living soul. Bereshit 27. You shall not be like the fishes of which the bigger swallow. The smaller the verses therefore resemble each other. 186. It is written, you shall not commit adultery. Shema 2013. And written in the works of creation. Let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind. Bereshit 124. From this we learn that a man should not be false by being with another woman who is not his spouse. It is therefore written, let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind. A woman should bear children only to her own kind. What is her own kind? Her husband. 187. It is written, you shall not steal. Shema 2013. And written in the works of creation. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb yielding seeds. Bereshit 129. Namely, whatever I have given you. And entrusted to you shall be yours, and you shall not steal anything from another. 188 It is written, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Shema 2013 And in the works of creation, and Elohim said, Let us make man in our image. Bereshit 126 Which means that you shall not bear false witness against whoever is in the king's image. Whoever bears false witness against his neighbor, it is as if he bore false witness against that which is high. 189 It is written, You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Shema 2014 And written in the works of creation, it is not good that the man should be alone. Bereshit 218 Here is a spouse before you, for Eve's wife was given him. Therefore, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. 190 This is what we said about the ten sayings of the works of creation and the ten sayings of the giving of the Torah. Hence it says, Weighing ten shekels apiece after the shekel of the sanctuary, Bimid bar 786 as these two tens were weighed. Together in the same scales had Mishkal due to this the world endures and peace abides in it therefore and if his offering be a sacrifice of peace offering Vayikra 31 is meant to preserve the world in peace furthermore it atones for positive precepts and negative precepts in order to bring peace to all section 26 peace offerings Rabbi Shimon tells us that truth and peace are connected together and that peace offerings represent perfection and overall peace since they are attached to both the positive and negative precepts he and the other rabbis talk in depth about the offering of thanksgiving 191 it is written dominion and fear are with him he makes peace in his high places eo 252 this verse was explained by the friends furthermore dominion is abraham of whom it is written here us my master you are a mighty prince among us bear 236 and, and i will bless you and make your name great bear 122 fear is isaac has written and it Fear of Isaac had been with me. Bear sheet 3142. He makes peace in his high places. Is Jacob as written? You will show truth to Jacob. Mishah 720. And love the truth and peace. Zechariah 819. For truth and peace, which are the secret of Tiferet and Yezid, are connected to each other. Therefore, Jacob is overall perfection. 192. Peace offerings. Hebshalim represent perfection. Hebshalim and overall peace. He who brings peace offerings increases peace in the world since peace offerings are the aspect of the central column. Like Jacob, Jacob makes peace as we said, being attached to this one and that one, namely the right column and left column, are joined in him. The secret of Abraham and Isaac. Peace offerings are attached to the positive precepts. The secret of the right column and the negative precepts. The secret of the left column, namely to the side and that side. Like Jacob, being also the central column, they are therefore called peace offerings. The secret of the words and Jacob was a. Plain man, Bereshit 2527, which means a perfect man, as every perfection abides in the central column, is that he is whole above in Zeir Anpin and whole below in Malchut 193. Rabbi Cha said it is written, if he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil. Bei cross 712. He asks, what does this teach us? Why is there need to sacrifice unleavened cakes with it? He answers, this is like the verse that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing lit on her. Bei cross 55, where on her is precise for the sin he committed against and the blemish to Malchut. Here too, the thanksgiving offering is brought because of the blemish he caused in Malchut. For the thanksgiving offering is brought for delivery from suffering. There are four that are required to give thanks, and no suffering comes where there is no sin, so it must follow that each thanksgiving offering is for some iniquity, but this iniquity infringes only on. Malchut like the guilt offering where it also says under therefore one should bring unleavened cakes we explained what are the unleavened cakes and wherefore they are brought that the unleavened cakes are the aspect of Malchut and they are brought because Malchut was blemished the words Matzot Kalat unleavened cakes have a defective spelling without Bob because a sin was committed against Malchut and therefore Bob Tiferet does not shine within her 194 Rabbi Shia taught that it is written these to be added to his peace offerings of thanksgiving Vayikra 713 this is overall perfection peace offerings indicates the dual we know what thanksgiving is Rabbi Yehuda said to him we know thanksgiving to be Malchut but as for peace offerings wherefore are there two as you said he said to him they are the two Bob's Tiferet and Yezid namely his peace offerings an indication of overall peace 195 Rabbi Yitzhak said his peace offering of thanksgiving means he decrees there to be peace in everything and awakens mercy throughout the world. His peace offering of thanksgiving. Rabbi Yossi said that what Rabbi Shia said is well for the congregation of Israel. Malchut is blessed by these two Tiferet and Yezid which constitute overall peace. Rabbi Yossi says it is known that leavened bread is an indication of the hold of the external forces. We learned that in relation to the sin of allowing the external forces a foothold, so should one sacrifice in exactly the same manner. Therefore, leavened bread is brought. 196. Come and seek a lot. Matzod lit unleavened cakes has a defective spelling without Bob as we learned. Mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. Of 12. What does this allude to? Rabbi Shimon said they sweeten the bright blade of the revolving sword for all those of the aspect of the bright blade of the revolving sword are in charge over the ways of men and over those who transgress the precepts of the Torah. Therefore, all is made of. Fine flour mingled with oil in order to draw the anointing oil from the highest place supernal Abba downward so that everyone shall be blessed by the oil of holy ointment the abundance from Abba 197 this is the libation wine that one brings which is drawn from Miami we have explained that it should contain the fourth part of a hin which is a measurement of Malchut called the fourth part of a hin one place Malchut called altar is filled with wine and oil and water for a drink offering we explained that water is the secret of Shesedim drawn from the river by to water the garden Malchut and all its plantings namely her grades there is therefore holy water and proud water of the other side in relation to wine too there is a goodly place and a place which the wine comes to punish being judgment 198 therefore if someone sees wine in his dream it is good for some but punishment for others if he be a scholar of the Torah it is written and wine that makes glad the heart of Man 10,415 and for your love is better than wine. Sure Hasherim 12 it is the preserved wine that makes everyone glad if he is not a scholar of the Torah it is said of him. Give strong drink to him that is ready to perish and wine to those of heavy hearts. Mishle 316 for there is another kind of wine which is judgment it is therefore a good thing to bring these things as an offering in order to remove judgment and awaken mercy remove the wine of the other side which is judgment and bring the wine of holiness which is mercy similarly in everything one should remove judgment and stir mercy 199 and his offering shall never want oil except the meal offering of jealousy as written he shall pour no oil on it. Bimid bar 515 it does not require mercy being completely of judgment as written and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall fall away. Ibid 27 and Hashem make you Ibid 21 it says of it and this is the Torah of the peace offerings which he shall offer to Hashem. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, Vayikra 711, section 27, Behold, bless Hashem, all you servants of Hashem. Rabbi Yitzhak says that the
Illumination of the left stirs at midnight the dome Alchute stands up to praise the Holy One blessed be he Zeir and when she stands up many thousands and tens of thousands maintain stand with her all of them start to praise the Holy King 202 the Holy One blessed be he listens to the deserving one who rises at midnight to study the Torah as we explained in relation to the verse you that dwell in the gardens the companions hearken for your voice cause me to hear it Sure Hashirim 813 all the crowd up above and those who praise and who sing to their master are all quiet before the praises of those who study the Torah and declare Behold bless Hashem all you servants of Hashem but bless Hashem you who study the Torah bless the Holy King bedeck the King 203 that dome Alchute adorns herself with that man stands before the King and says see with what son I have come to you with what son I have risen before you who are those whose every praise is to the King you repeat it who Stand by night in the house of Hashem, but those called the servants of Hashem are worthy of blessing the king, and their blessing is indeed a blessing. Hence it says, Lift up your hands to the sanctuary and bless Hashem, but do you merit the blessings of the holy king for the blessing on your hands is a real blessing. Section 28 Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Here we learn that the sanctuary is the highest place, Chakma, and that Malchud receives blessings from God through the righteous. The righteous, because he is deserving, increases peace above and below, as do the words of Torah 204. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Tehillim 1342 He asks, What is the sanctuary? He says, It is the highest place, Chakma, whence the source of the deep river Bana comes from, as written, and a river went out of Eden to water. Bear she 210. The river being Bana and Eden, the name of the highest sanctuary. Hence, lift up your hands in the sanctuary to what one should. Raise his hands to Chakma and receive their from holiness in abundance. A man who does so and attains it, they proclaim of him. May Hashem bless you out of Zion. But three to it, you shall bless the Holy One. Blessed be he out of the place called the supernal sanctuary, and he will bless you out of the place called Zion, so that you and the queen shall be blessed together. 205. As your union of that man and Malchut is made in order to praise the king, the congregation of Israel is also blessed out of that place, namely out of Zion, which is here. Is it out of which place he will call forth blessings on you? Hence it says, Hashem shall bless you out of Zion, and you shall see the good of Jerusalem. Tehillim 1285. What is the good of Jerusalem? These are the blessings that come to Malchut from the king through the holy grade of the righteous, namely, is it of Zeir and of the scripture says, Hashem shall bless you out of Zion, and you shall see the good of Jerusalem. It is all the same. 206. And you shall see your children's children of it six he asks and you shall see your children's children is very well what though is this latter phrase in the verse and peace on Yisrael what does on Yisrael imply here he answers since that man increases peace above because he is so deserving he increases peace above and below peace on Yisrael namely Yisrael below and peace which is the praise of the upper and lower the praise of all the world's words of Torah increase peace in the world as written Hashem will give strength to his people Hashem will bless his people with peace Tehillim 2911 section 29 if a soul shall sin Rabbi Yossi says that before the soul is born God advises it with promises and punishments so that it will observe his commandments when the soul is in the body and it sins the Torah wonders how this can be Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Lazar agree that the soul must repent of its sins before the time comes to die Rabbi Shimon says that Anyone who forgets the words of the Torah or refuses to study it is as though he forgot God altogether. 207 If a soul shall sin, Vayikra 42 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying, Before the day cools and the shadows flee away, Sher Hashirim 217 How much should men fear sinning so as not to sin before their master? For every day a crier comes forth and declares, People waken your hearts before the Holy King arise to beware of your sins. Rouse the Holy Soul he placed in you out of the supernal. Holy place 208 We learned that when the Holy One blessed be he takes out the soul to bring it down amongst men, he advises it with many promises and many punishments so that it will observe his precepts. Furthermore, he passes it through a thousand and eight worlds to have delight and see in them the honor of those who study the Torah. It stands before the king with a precious garment of a worldly shape with a precious supernal garment that daily beholds the king's glory and he adorns it with. Many crowns 209 when the time comes to descend into this world it fixes its abode in the garden of Eden for 30 days to behold the preciousness of the master of the righteous it then rises to its place above afterwards it descends into the world the holy king adorns it with seven crowns and it then comes into a man's body when it is in a man's body and sins in this world and is occupied with darkness the Torah then wonders at it and says why with all this glory and perfection with which the most high king perfected the soul does it sin before him if a soul shall sin wherefore does it sin 210 Rabbi Yossi said if a soul shall sin let us return to the verse before the day cools this is advice to the soul to beware of its sins and return to be cleansed before the day cools of this world then that harsh day will come when the king will demand to execute judgment and take it out of this world and the shadows flee away it is a secret among the friends who say that when a man's time comes to leave this world, the man's image leaves him, hence it says before the day cools, before the day passes and leaves this world, and the shadows have to lull and flee away as the image Hephzalim departs to return before its master. 211 Rabbi Lazar said man has two images Hephzalim and when he is alive one big and the other small as it written shadows Hephzalim in the plural the least of which I ask you when they are together man is alive it is therefore written and it shadows flee away it behooves a man then to examine his actions and to rectify them before his master and confess them for the holy one blessed be he is called merciful and gracious and accepts them who repent before him. 212 this continues until the day cools and the shadows flee away when these shadows depart from him and he is put in chains and about to die it is considered repentance as well if he then repents but not as good as repentance he does when alive King Solomon declares. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come. Kahilat 121, 213. Therefore, before the day cools, it behooves man to make good his deeds for when his time comes to depart from the world, the Holy One blessed be he wonders at him and says, If a soul shall sin and hear the voice of adoration, Vayai Kra 51, I have made it swear by oath in my name that it will not be false to me and warned it when it descended into the world and is a witness of it for several times. I admonished it to keep my precepts hence since a man is a witness when he returns before the king whether he has seen or known of it, but whether he has seen the sins he committed and looked at them or known clearly that he transgressed his master's command. If he does not utter of it and confess before his master when he departs from the world, then he shall bear his iniquity, but when he bears his iniquity, how will an opening be open to him and how shall he stand up before his Master, it is therefore written, if a soul shall sin, 214, if a soul shall sin, Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse, all this is come on us, yet we have not forgotten you, nor have we been false to your covenant. Tehillim 4418, all this is come on us, he asks, why didn't it say, all these are come instead of come in the feminine singular, he answers, all the judgments above included in Zot, let this fam have come on us to what it says, all this have Zot, because Zot is Malchut, which includes all the upper judgments, scripture therefore says, I has come in the feminine, yet we have not forgotten you, namely we have not forgotten the words of your Torah, from this we learn that he who forgets the words of the Torah and refuses to study it, it is as if he forgot the Holy One, blessed be he, as the whole Torah is the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, section 30, nor have we been false to your covenant, we read here of the importance of the Holy. Covenant of circumcision the Torah is also called the covenant Rabbi Shimon says that the two Sfirot of judgment and mercy join together and are the openings to all the other Sfirot the covenant is attached to them day and night we hear about the difference between the children of Israel and the heathen nations 215 nor have we been false to your covenant Tehillim 4418 whoever is false to the sign of the holy covenant imprinted on him it is as if he is false to the name of the king is the king's name is imprinted on man through circumcision there is another verse which teaches the saying if we had forgotten the name of our Elohim or stretched out our hands to a strange El 21 if we had forgotten the name of our Elohim is parallel to you, yet we have not forgotten you of 18 and the words or stretched out our hands to a strange El Carly 2 nor have we been false to your covenant this all amounts to the same thing what is falsity here stretching out the hands to it.
Blessed be he caused his name to dwell inside him as written he designated it in Jehoshaphat for a testimony Tehillim 816 by adding the name Yud Hebab to Joseph he was thus worthy of the blessings of this world and the blessings of the world to come 218 Rabbi Yitzhak said that it is written the firstling of Hitchard ox grandeur is his Devarim 3317 it is because Joseph kept this covenant that he deserved the ox the first among the offerings Rabbi Yehuda said to him why was he blessed by something which pertains to the left a side of judgment he should have been blessed from the right indeed it is written the face of an ox on the left side Yashiskel 110 he said to him so that he will be protected from the sin of Jeroboam whose sin was causing the left to overcome the right through his idol worship 219 he said to him I have learned a mystery from this verse this is because Joseph kept this covenant which is attached to two grades Yezid and Malchut both being called a Covenant and these two upper grades are called by names we learned in the portion of the red heifer that this heifer Malchut is one of these two supernal grades of the covenant and the spouse of the heifer is called an ox to it since Malchut of the covenant is called a heifer then Yezid which is attached to her is called by the name of ox this is the meaning of the verse the first ling of his herd grandeur is his and his horns are like the horns of a wild ox surely he has grandeur as it is from the illumination of the left called ox that beauty and grandeur come this is not a common ox like other oxen of the world but his horns are like the horns of a wild ox for his horns are superior to all others therefore with both of them he shall push the peoples all together to the ends of the earth Devarim 3317 220 Rabbi Abba said from this it is understood that these two supernal grades are attached to whoever keeps the sign of the holy imprint to keep him in everything and adorn and with supernal glory Joseph therefore attained two kingdoms one for himself and one for his descendant namely Jeroboam since King Solomon adhered to foreign women the kingdom was given to Jeroboam for the covenant is more precious than everything 221 Rabbi Shimon said therefore a man who begets a son is attached to the Shechinah which is an opening to every supernal opening an opening which is attached to the holy name Yud Hebab Hey as every sphere is an opening to a higher one it blood which flows from the child during circumcision is kept before the holy one blessed be he when judgments are awakened in the world the holy one blessed be he sees that blood and saves the world hence it is written and any male son that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you Bereshi 1712 for the eighth day alludes to Bino which is eighth from below upward from which flows the illumination of the face of an ox namely from the left column of Bino therefore it behooves us to Wait for the eighth day it is also written or if by reason of special strength eighty years Tehillim 9010 to wit if he draws life from by the eighth sphere all is deduced from the same argument 222 we have learned that through the blood of circumcision the world merits to be scented by Jesus and all worlds endure as written if my covenant be not day and night it were as if I had not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth here may I 3325 he asks if my covenant be not as well so. Why does the verse also need to say day and night 223 Rabbi Shimon said we have learned that two Sfirah join together Zeir and Pen and Malchut and that they are the openings to all the other Sfirah we learned that the one Malchut is of judgment and the other Zeir and Pen is of mercy the male and the female are perfumed from each other on the side of the male Zeir and Pen Jesus abides and on the side of the female Malchut abides judgment the one is white and the other is red in order to be. Perfumed by each other, they join each other, and the covenant is attached to them day and night, which are judgment and Shesed, namely attached to Malchut and Zeir and the covenant begins with judgment in accordance with the secret of the verse. His left hand is under my head, Shur Hashirim 26, and Shesed dwells in it, and everything is perfumed with both Chakma and Shesedim. This is the covenant called day and night, namely of the verse. If my covenant be not day and night, which is attached to them both to Zeir and called day and Malchut, called night 224, whoever deserved to keep this covenant well and did not sin against it all his life, I as a chariot to Yezid, he is attached to day and night, which are male and female like Yezid, and attains both this world and the world to come. Abraham is therefore called complete as written, walk before me and be perfect. Bereshit 171, when is he called perfect, which means complete when he attains both day and night as written, Hashim will. Command his steadfast love, Lachisa, in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me. Tehillim 429 Abraham inherited both, but Chisa did not prevail in him completely until he was circumcised. Once he was circumcised, Chisa prevailed in him since he attained them both. He was considered complete. 225 We have learned that much from the verse as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Bereshit 181 The tent door is the tent sphere of the king, namely Malchut, the opening to the whole holy tabernacle of the other Sfirah. King David named it opening to as written open to me the gates of righteousness. Tehillim 11819 which is Malchut and this is the gate of Hashem. Ibn 20 as the tent door is Malchut. The heat of the day prevails when the light of Chisa of Zeir and shines, which is Abraham's portion of inheritance as he sits by the tent door Malchut. So does he sit by Zeir and by its Chisa called the heat of the day when we're both prevalent in him when he was. Circumcised it is therefore called the covenant of day and night we study the verse Hashem will pass over the door Shemot 1223 what is the meaning of Hashem will pass over the door IT means that Shesed rests on the door Malchut so as to perfume the door and will not allow the destroyer of 226 Rabbi Lazar said we learned that when the proselyte is circumcised and brought under the wings of the Shechinah he is called the proselyte by conviction lit of righteousness but nothing more. He is a proselyte of righteousness because he is worthy of entering the sphere called righteousness Malchut yet you say day and night that he who is circumcised attains both namely Zeir and as well 227 Rabbi Shimon said to him a laser my son he who comes from a holy root a scion of truth is not like he who comes of an evil stock from the root of heart and evil dirt it is written of Israel and I have planted you a noble vine an entirely true seed Yermea 221 of the heathen nations is written whose members were like those of asses and whose issue was like that of horses Yashiskel 2328 Therefore Israel are holy a seed of truth a stock which was perfumed on Mount Sinai from which every filth was stopped therefore they all perfumed themselves and received the holy sign of day and night so as to be perfect in everything like we said it is difficult to remove the filth from the heathen nations even up to three generations hence he is called the proselyte of righteousness since he enters only the sphere of Malchut called righteousness but not Zeir and 229 as Rabbi Hamdan the elder said before they are circumcised the abode of the heathen nations is by the lower unholy crowns and the spirit of defilement rests on them when they convert and circumcise themselves they abide by the holy crown which dwells above all the other lower crowns namely Malchut and the holy spirit rests on them but Israel holy children to holy people by stock and root who were perfumed on Mount Sinai and entered the complete holy faith when they are circumcised they abide everywhere namely in Zeir and Pen and Malchut called day and night as written but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you this day of Aram 44 section 31 the waters of Noah this section is essentially about peace and about how it is brought to the world above and the world below through the righteous the righteous man must argue on behalf of the whole world when God proposes to destroy it even if he is informed that he himself will be saved Moses is our model for this rather than Noah who did not beg for mercy for the world in the sense the waters of Noah were Noah's fault it was due to him that all the people in the world died but it was also due to Noah that the land endured after the earlier generations had corrupted it 230 then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away. Vayikra 523 Rabbi Yossi said, For this Hebzad is as the waters of Noah to me, as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. Yeshayah 549 This is a difficult verse, for it is written that the waters of the flood were on the earth. Bereshit 710 And neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Bereshit 911 It is written the waters of the flood and not the waters of Noah. Moreover, it is written for this is. While it should have been for these are 231, yet we have learned that when there are many righteous men in the world, the Holy One blessed be he rejoices and takes pride in them. We have learned that when a righteous man is in the world and dwells in it, he brings peace to the world which is Malchut, and the whole world is
For peace precedes everything because it is of more importance peace is therefore written first namely peace shall he make with me he shall make peace with me why here does not the word peace come first because the serpent should first be removed which dwells by the female Malchut then the male Zeir Anpin will come to dwell in his place with Malchut hence he shall make comes first to it first he will work to remove the serpent then there is peace between Zeir Anpin and Malchut 233. We learned that when there is a righteous man in the world no judgment stirs or rules over the world because that righteous man is a sign in the world namely he is of the aspect of Yezid called sign the Holy One blessed be he desires his honor and the world exists due to him 234 we learned that Rabbi Yossi said that when men are found guilty before the Holy One blessed be he if there is a righteous man in the world the Holy One blessed be he will be reconciled with them and will influence him so that the man asks for mercy on behalf of the world what does the Holy One blessed be he do he speaks with him about the wicked men of the world and tells him he will be good to him alone and destroy everybody what course does the righteous man take he minds not himself but takes it on himself to argue in favor of the whole world so that the Holy One blessed be he will be reconciled to them 235 whence do we know that from Moses when the Holy One blessed be he said to him Israel have Sin they have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it. Shema 328 He also said to him, Let me alone that I may destroy them. Devarim 914 Moses then said, If for the sake of my honor Israel shall be annihilated from the world, then I prefer death rather than have them say that for my honor I neglected that of the whole world straightway. And Moses besought Hashem his Elohim. Shema 3211 And delivered himself to death several times for Israel as written yet now if you will forgive. Their sin and if not blot me I beg you out of your book. Ibit 32 We learned that Moses did not move from there until the Holy One blessed be he forgave Israel. Hence it says Hashem relented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Ibit 14 And Hashem said, I have pardoned according to your word. Bibit bar 1422 But of Noah it is written, and Elohim said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Bear sheet 613 Noah said to him, What will you do to me? He said to him, But with you will I establish my covenant of 18 make yourself an ark of gopher wood but 14 he did not beg for mercy on the world rain came down and the inhabitants of the world perished therefore it is written of Noah the waters of Noah surely they were the waters of Noah for they were due to him since he did not ask for mercy on the world 237 Rabbi Yossi then quoted the words and Noah began Hebbyachel to be a husband and Bereshit 920 the word Bereshit has the same meaning as in he shall not break Hebbyachel his word Bimit bar 303 for he became not spiritual Hebkol husbandman lived man of the land means it was due to him that all the inhabitants of the world perished because he did not ask for mercy on them another explanation man of the land because it was for his sake that the land endured after the earlier generations corrupted it as written I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake Bereshit 821 section 32 the holy one blessed be he decrees a sentence and the righteous man nullifies it. We learn that the rainbow appears in the sky as a sign of God's protection only when there is no righteous man in the world to protect the world with his prayer. In Rabbi Shimon's day, the world did not need the sign of the rainbow for he himself could nullify any decree that was pronounced over the world. So God decrees and the just man nullifies when God sees that men perform good deeds. The face of Atika Kadisha is revealed. In Zer and everyone is blessed when transgressions increase in the world. The ancient one is concealed. This is how the wicked turn mercy into judgment. 238. We learn they are called the waters of Noah because it was after him that they were so named to it because he did not pray for them. But what is the meaning of four heads? Zot the 549. He answers the Holy One. Blessed be he said the waters of Noah brought it on me that Zot appeared in the world which is Malchut. Called Zot that appeared in the secret of the rainbow to protect the world as written as for me this is my covenant with them Yeshayah 5921 and this Hebzot is the token of the covenant I have set my bow in the cloud Bereshit 912 to 13 so as to protect the world to with the rainbow is an indication that no one cares for the world to pray for it but I who does it for the glory of my name that is alluded to in Zot who caused this the waters of Noah who did not pray nor protected the world 239 this is a sign for a pious and righteous man that the rainbow never appears in his days and that during his life the world is not in need of the sign as he protects the world with his prayer who is such a man that could ask for mercy on the world and is worthy of protecting it a man like Rabbi Shimon in whose days the world was not in need of the sign as the sign is a token in the world that there is no one to give protection save the Holy One blessed be he has explained 240 there was not a decree that was pronounced above over the world that Rabbi Shimon did not nullify this is the meaning of he that rules over man to Shmuel 233 namely the verse the rock of Israel spoke to me he that rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of Elohim the Holy One blessed be he rules over men who as it were rules over the Holy One blessed be he the righteous man rules for the Holy One blessed be he decrees and he nullifies 241 Rabbi Shimon the son of Yaqa sat one day by the gate of Lot he lifted up his eyes and saw the sun shining and concealing its light three times while it happened the light darkened and black and green appeared on the sun he said to Rabbi Lazar his son follow me son and let us inquire for assuredly a decree has been pronounced above and the Holy One blessed be he wishes to inform me indeed the decree impends above thirty days and the Holy One blessed be he does not act before informing the righteous hence it says surely Hashem Elohim will do nothing without revealing a secret to his servants the prophet Amos 37 242 while they were walking in the vineyard they saw a snake coming with its mouth open blowing on the ground in the dust Rabbi Shimon was distressed and his hand struck the snake's head the snake stopped and closed its mouth Rabbi Shimon saw its tongue hissing and said to it O snake go and tell the supernal serpent the persecutor and denouncer that Rabbi Shimon is in the world the snake put its head inside a hole in the ground Rabbi Shimon said I decree that as this low snake returned to a hole in the ground so will the supernal serpent return to the hole in the great abyss 243 Rabbi Shimon whispered a prayer while they were praying they heard a voice saying the decrees were stopped go back to where you were the plagues of the demons are no longer in the world because Rabbi Shimon son of Yaqa nullified them happy are you Rabbi Shimon whose master is desirous of your honor more than that of all the inhabitants of the world of Moses it is written and Moses implored also trembled Shema 3211 it also implies that he was struck with an illness but you Rabbi Shimon decree and the Holy One blessed be he establishes it and he decrees and you nullify it 244 in the meantime he saw the sun shining and the blackness gone Rabbi Shimon said surely this is because the world was sent it he came home and discussed the verse for Hashem is righteous he loves righteousness the upright shall behold his face Tehillim 117 what is his face and wherefore Hashem is righteous he loves righteousness because the upright shall behold his face namely the upper face of the inhabitants of the world for they have to beg the Holy One blessed be he for mercy in all their needs 245 Rabbi Lazar his son said to him in that case it should have said an upright shall behold in the singular or in the plural why does it say the upright singular shall behold plural he said to him it is a supernal mystery the olden days namely the Sfirat of the most hidden Atika Kadisha Keter and the days of the world the Sfirat of Zer and Pen called his face look at each other directly to see what needs seen to with the face of Zeir and Pen sees the face of Atika and the face of Atika sees the face of Zeir and Pen directly without turning right or left this is the importance of the verse the upright shall behold his face 246 we learned that when the Holy One blessed be he eats it world and sees that the deeds of men are proper Atika Kadisha is revealed which is Keter and Zer and Pen at all these faces of Zeir and Pen look at the concealed face of Atika and everyone is being blessed wherefore are they blessed because they look at each other in a direct way to it by way of the central column which turns not right nor left hence the upright shall behold his face for the face of Atika and Zeir and Pen look at each other in a direct manner namely in the aspect of it Central column then everyone is blessed as the rivers of blessings flow from one to another until all the worlds are blessed and all the worlds are as one then it is considered that Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 247 when transgressions increase in the world Atika Kadisha is
Judgment and overpower mercy is written gathered together against Lit above Hashem Bimit bar 1611 truly above Hashem namely Bina which is above Zeir and been called Yud Hey Vav Hey the worlds are then found wanting as they are not whole and dissension arises in them all 249 when the inhabitants of the world better their deeds below judgments are mitigated and removed and mercy stirs and overpowers that evil which arose from the judgment when mercy stirs joy and consolations abide because they overpower evil hands Hashem relented of the evil Shema 3214 for the judgment is subdued and mercy reigns 250 we learn that when judgments are mitigated and mercy reigns each sphere prevails again and all of them are blessed together when they do so IMA is mitigated by the coming together of the decrees that return to her aspect and repentance is considered complete and the world is atoned for IMA sits completely joyful as written as a joyful mother of children 1139 she is then called Yom Kippur Day of Atonement of which it is written that you may be clean from all your sins Vayikra 1630 then 50 gates are opened of the sides of the decrees 251 we study the words then it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty Vayikra 523 why does it begin with the words he has sinned and then at the end it says and is guilty he answers indeed we learn because he has sinned refers to those transgressions called sins as written any sins that man commit Bimit bar 56 and is guilty Habisham is equivalent to let the trespass Habisham which is recompensed to Hashem of and is guilty means it behooves him to rectify it the meaning of then it shall be because he has sinned is that if he rectifies his deeds then he shall restore that which he took violently away Vayikra 523 Rabbi Yossi said this is understood from the words that he shall restore which means he restores it of his own initiative because he is desirous of Rectifying his deeds it does not say that he should restore in the imperative but he shall restore which is accurate and means of his own accord section 34 four times a year we learn that four times a year judgments stir if people repent God causes the judgments to return to their places but if they do not the voices stopped and the judgments are fulfilled Rabbi Yisa had said that God swore an oath not to enter the celestial Jerusalem until the children of Israel enter the terrestrial Jerusalem and until that time there will be anger in the world 252 we learn that the voices stopped and judgments stir four times a year penitence then impends until it is made ready when judgments stir a voice resounds and the four corners of the world go up and down a herald proclaims but no one takes heed to awaken the holy one blessed be he is ready and in case they repent judgments return to their places if they do not the voices stopped and it Judgments are enacted and he is considered as it grieves him at his heart. Bear sheet 66 namely in the external houses 253 Rabbi Yehuda said we learned that since the temple was destroyed not a day passes without evil anger. Why is it so as we learned Rabbi Yehuda said that Rabbi Yehuda said that the Holy One blessed be he swore an oath not to enter the celestial Jerusalem namely Malchut until Israel entered the terrestrial Jerusalem for that reason there is anger in the world the oath was regarding permanence because on a temporary basis there is a union between Zeir and Pen and Malchut even during the days of exile that is during prayer services on Shabbat and festival section 35 the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover Rabbi Yehuda says that the evil inclination always grows stronger through immoral sexual conduct alone that all sins are attached to nakedness when Malchut is uncovered her children below are also uncovered when she is Covered all the grades return one by one and are all blessed this is considered repentance because all the grades become repaired again 254 Rabbi Yossi said it is written the nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover Vayikra 187 and she is your mother you shall not uncover her nakedness if it we learn that your mother is surely Malchut Yisrael's mother if he uncovered her nakedness why should he return it by means of repentance surely he should rectify his uncovering as will be explained 255 according to what we learned when the evil inclination grows stronger within man it does so through immoral sexual conduct alone all sins are attached to that nakedness it is written shall you not uncover when one makes amends one does so for uncovering it this is called repentance 256 Rabbi Yitzhak said all the sins of the world are connected to the uncovering of nakedness so much that mother Malchut is uncovered for the sins to it. Her nakedness is uncovered when it is all her children Israel below Malchut's children are uncovered it is also written you shall not take the mother bird together with the young Devarim 226 when the lower world is corrected everything is corrected until the correction rises to holy I am a Malchut she is then corrected and that which was uncovered is covered it is therefore written blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered Tehillim 321 she is then called repentance indeed and called Yom Kippur as it says that you may be clean from all your sins before Hashem Vayikra 1630 257 Rabbi Yehuda said when is Malchut called repentance when the mother which is Malchut is covered and stands joyfully by the children she then provides them with every goodness as written a joyful mother of children she is established as she was before they infected her with defect and that which was closed and concealed returns to its place all the grades return one by one. Each lower one ascends to the higher one and are blessed every one of them and it is considered repentance repentance in general that includes everything because all grades became repaired again 258 Rabbi Yitzhak said when the world Malchut is corrected all of it is corrected at once as it is written for your steadfast love had Shisa is great above the heavens Tehillim 1085 above the heavens means that Malchut rises above the place called heavens what is it, it is I am a namely Bina for Zeir Enpin is called heavens and Bina is above Zeir Enpin when Malchut goes up there it is corrected at once like I am a this is considered repentance lit return because Malchut returns to Bina 259 Rabbi Yehuda said it is written precisely above Hebmiel the heavens if it would have said a lit above the heavens it would have meant the place which is situated above the heavens Bina and no more since it says Miel lit above it refers to the place situated high above the heavens which is Atika Kaddish as will be explained 260 we learned that when deeds are improved below and IMA is joyful Atika Kaddish Akita is revealed and the light returns to Zerampin everyone is glad and all is perfect and blessings about everywhere mercy is available and all the worlds rejoice hence it says he will again return and have compassion on us he will suppress our iniquities Misha 719 who will do it again Atika Kaddish will again be revealed in Zerampin and that which was concealed from the start will be uncovered again everything is considered repentance after Atika Kaddish who again will be revealed 261 Rabbi Yehuda said everything is included within that he will return like Atika Kaddish everything is general without exception it is also written that Hashem may turn return from the fierceness of his anger and show you mercy Devarim 1318 Rabbi Yitzhak said assuredly everything is comprehended in repentance we stated as much before Rabbi Shimon. Section 36 that he shall restore that which he took violently away Rabbi Shimon says that someone who steals must pay reparation four or five times because he feared the humans from whom he stole more than he feared God on the other hand someone who steals with violence must pay only by restoring what he took because he feared men and God equally the person who takes violently away is sinning with both body and soul and when he corrects his actions the flow of the abundance of above will be restored 262 that he shall restore that which he took violently away Vayikra 523 in relation to this the friends asked why it says in relation to taking by force that one should restore that which he took and no more while of a thief it says that he should pay twice even four or five times he answers we have established that he who takes violently away treats equally the upper with the lower fear fear of man to what he fears neither the holy one blessed be he nor people he who Steals has placed before him the lower fear of people but not the upper fear thus he has put more value on the fear of people than on the fear of Hashem 263 it is written before if an official person shall sin Vayikra 42 as we said the Torah and the Holy One blessed be he wonder at it and say if an official shall sin or if an official committed trespass Vayikra 515 or if an official swear before Rabbi Yitzhak said in all these verses it says an not Ruash or Neshama because the Ruash and Neshama do not sin but are only blemished because of the sinning Nefesh while here in relation to taking violently away robbery body and Nefesh is written that it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty that he shall restore that which he took violently away as it said of him who comes to correct his actions he shall restore as we discussed it he shall restore what is the meaning thereof someone who corrects his actions so that the springs
Exile and that God is also the cedar in Hebrews like a cedar in Lebanon and Lebanon is the supernal Eden. Rabbi Shimon also speaks briefly about the time of redemption and the time when the world will be destroyed and rebuilt. 264 Rabbi Abba was sitting before Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Lazar his son entered. Rabbi Shimon said it is written the righteous man flourishes like the palm tree. Tehillim 9213 Why like the palm tree he answers of all the trees of the world none is as slow to flourish as the palm tree for it grows seventy years wherefore I ask the righteous man like unto the palm tree though the verse bears witness to it none of the friends wishes to reveal this 265 the righteous man flourishes like the palm tree talks of the exile in Babylon from which the Shechen are returned to her place only after seventy years hence it says that after seventy years are accomplished at Babylon I will take heed of you your may 2910 this is the righteous man flourishes like the palm tree for it grows as male and female for seventy years the righteous is the holy one blessed be he who returned to Babylon after seventy years hence it is written for Hashem is righteous he loves righteousness Tehillim 117 Hashem is righteous Shema 927 and say of the righteous that it shall be well with him Yeshua 310 indeed the holy one blessed be he is called righteous 266 he grows like a cedar in Lebanon Tehillim 9213 what is a cedar he replies it is the holy one blessed be he as written excellent as the cedars sure Hasherim 515 he grows in Lebanon but surely in the Lebanon which is the supernal Eden namely Chakma of which it is written neither has the I seen an Elohim besides you Yeshua 643 the cedars Eir and will grow in that high place to it when it ascends towards IT 267 in the last exile the Holy One blessed be he is like a cedar that is slow to flourish and grow from the time it starts growing until it is mature namely until redemption comes a day passes namely the day of the Holy One blessed be he which is a thousand years long and the beginning of the second day until it throws a shadow in the daylight namely after midday when the sun begins to decline which in the day of the Holy One blessed be he lasts 500 years after 1500 years redemption will come and the cedar grows only when supplied with water as it says like cedar trees beside the waters Bimid bar 246 so he grows like a cedar in Lebanon whence from Lebanon which is Chakma's source of water and a river, which is Bina, issues to water the cedar. The cedar is the Holy One, blessed be his Eir Anthem, which receives the water as written excellent as the cedars 268. Those that are planted in the house of Hashem, Tehillim 9214, at the time of Messiah, they shall flourish in the courts of our Elohim, but at the revival of the dead, and they still bring forth fruit in old age, but 15 when the world will be destroyed, namely in the seventh millennium, they are fat and flourishing afterwards when the world will be rebuilt as written the new heavens and the new earth. Yeshua 6622, then it is written, let Hashem rejoice in his works. Tehillim 10431, what is the purpose of all this to declare that Hashem is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Tehillim 9216, section 38, a complainer separates close friends. Rabbi Shimon opens with a perverse man's strife and a whisper. Separates close friends, he says that evil men cause a blemish above because they separate men from God and male from female and Zer and Ben from Malchut. He causes the plants to nourish from the side of judgment. Rabbi Shimon says that the penitent stands in a higher place than the holy righteous because the penitent draws abundance down to the place of the righteous and the righteous draw it down to the world. He also talks about the loss of faithfulness. 269. He opened the discussion again, saying a perverse man sows strife and a complainer separates close friends. Also, Chief Mishlei 1628. As we said, a perverse man sows strife means that evil men cause a blemish above. For strife means a blemish and a complainer separates a chief means that he separates the chief of the world. The holy one blessed be he. 270. Another explanation for a perverse man sows strife. Had Madonna, but what it sows it means he sows strife by the plants male and female to what he causes them to. Nourish from the side of judgment the left side of Bino which is judgment strife means judgment and a complainer separates close friends as we said an evil man causes a blemish above separates alludes to a lack of union between male and female for he separates the queen from the king and the king from the queen hence it is not considered one because one is only when Zeir and Ben and Malchut are together in a union woe to the wicked who causes separation above happy are the righteous who preserve the upper establishment namely the union of male and female and happy are the repentance who return everything to its place 271 we learned that where the repentance stand the holy righteous may not what is the reason thereof he answers the repentance are placed in the high place where the garden's potion is namely Bino which waters the garden Malchut this is repentance as explained above the returning of Malchut to Bino they are therefore called repentance let men of return the holy righteous are placed in a different place called the righteous Yezid of Zeir and 272 the penitents therefore dwell in an elevated place by and the holy righteous in a small place namely Yezid of Zeir and what is the reason thereof the penitents return the water abundance to its place from the supernal place of the deep river by to the place called righteous Yezid of Zeir and the holy righteous draw that abundance from where they dwell namely Yezid of Zeir and to this world the penitents are therefore high and the holy righteous are lower happy is the portion of the repentant sinner who draws abundance from by into Yezid of Zeir and happy is the portion of the righteous to whom the world owes its existence for they draw abundance from Yezid of Zeir and into this world 273 it is written that it shall be because he has sinned and is guilty they 523 it is written before or have found that which was lost and have lied concerning it Ibid 22 for the sinner causes a blemish above the Holy One blessed be he is therefore gone from everything as if the Holy One blessed be he were non-existent because the congregation of Israel Malchud was separated from her place hence it says faithfulness is perished. Yermeah 728 what is faithfulness it is the congregation of Israel as written and your faithfulness every night. Tehillim 923 night being Malchud faithfulness is perished resembles the words why does the land perish. Yermeah 911 it is all the same for Malchud is called both faithfulness and land we explain that it is written as a transitive verb perish also lose which means that Malchud lost her spouse yes it is not written as a passive verb which would mean she herself was lost it is likewise written the righteous perishes also loses Yeshayah 571 it is not written that he is lost but that he loses which means he lost his spouse Malchud therefore it is written faithfulness has lost and it is. Also written, he shall restore that which he took violently away of the thing lost object which he has deceitfully acquired. Vayikra 523 Malchut that has been defected by his sin is considered a lost object and it is required to return that lost object to the righteous that is Yezid who lost her. Section 39 There are places in Gehenom. The faithful shepherd tells us that there is a place in Gehenom for every sin. The Satan is in charge over every chieftain who rules those places and he is appointed over all sins. But if one repents, the record of every sin is blotted from its place in Gehenom. The sages of the Mishnah taught that an evil man's sins are engraved on his bones while a righteous man's merits are engraved on his bones. The souls of evil men will be burned by the fire of the throne. The fire of the four fiery living creatures that surround the throne of judgment are Ai Mahim, the faithful shepherd. 274 The faithful shepherd who is Moses said. There are places in Gehenom reserved for those who desecrate the Shabbat in public and did not repent the desecration. There are chieftains appointed over them. There are also places in Gehenom for those who commit sexual misconduct, who interpret the Torah improperly, and those who shed the blood of the clean. Also for those who swear falsely, who sleep with a menstruating woman or with a woman who worships a strange Elohor or a mate, and even for those who trespass the 365 negative precepts. 275 For every sin there is a place in Gehenom and a chieftain over it. The Satan one's evil inclination is appointed over all sins and places and those in charge over them. If one repents, it is written, I have blotted out as a thick cloud your transgression. Yeshua 4422 The record of each and every sin is blotted from its place in Gehenom. 276 Some sins are recorded above but not below in this world, and some are written below but not above. Some are recorded below and above if the sins are. Blotted below in this world through repentance they are blotted above after repentance the sages of the mission explain further that an evil man's sins are engraved on his bones and a righteous man's merits are engraved on his bones why so that they will be
40. Nahar died in the river of fire. We are told that the souls of the righteous bathe and cleanse themselves in the river of fire, but the souls of the wicked are consumed by it like straw by fire. The faithful shepherd describes the line of fire that descends from the living creatures by the throne of judgment and who burns the offering and the demons in charge of the sinning members and the living creatures in charge over the merits draw near from the throne of mercy repentance. The name Yudhe. Bob Hay brings peace between the living creatures and allows water to draw near fire without either of them extinguishing the other 278. It is written of that river of fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Daniel 710. The souls of the righteous bathe and cleanse themselves in it, and the souls of the wicked are sentenced in it and consumed by it like straw by fire, namely the fire devouring fire. Yudhe Bob Hay with the bowling of Elohim, which is by his son Adonai is its. Sheet, this is a mystery which has been explained that in the future the Holy One blessed be he will take the sun out of its sheet so that the name Adonai Malchut will not cover the name of Yudhe Bob Hay with the bowling of Elohim which is by the then the fire of judgment of the left column of Bina will be uncovered without the sheath of Malchut the righteous are healed in it and the evil men are judged by it. 279 from the fire of the living creatures of the throne of judgment the lion. A fire descends to devour and burn the offerings and the appointed chieftains for to every sinning member there is a demon prosecutor appointed over it we have established that he who commits one sin acquires one prosecutor as soon as a fire descends from up high and burns the body parts of fat and the portions of the bullocks the sheep the he goats and the she goats which is a secret of Yudhe Bob Hay that descends like a lion of fire to burn them their members are burned and the demons in. Charge of the sinning members are burned. Israel sins are atoned for who are the members of the Shechina 280. The living creatures in charge over the merits and draw near from the throne of mercy repentance, namely the supernal Yami Bina. How do they draw near by the name of Yudhe Bob which enters them? Therefore, it is an offering to live approaching Yudhe Bob for no one could draw near the living creatures and elements and bring peace between them except the name Yudhe Bob Hey, which is CEIR and from the central column by its name Yudhe Bob Hey, water draws near fire, namely the right column to the left column, yet they do not extinguish each other and air the central column draws near the dust malchute with no one to separate them. Section 41 The six combinations of Yudhe Bob when the living creatures and elements fire, water, air, and dust are completed, they are called holy. We read about the six permutations of Yudhe Bob and the tree. Typhoret that connects them all and the final hay that completes each of them as a peace offering the significance of the number 18 is explained and how the addition of hay changes life chai to animal chai the faithful shepherd also brings the ark of Noah into the discussion and talks about six grades six directions and six fire rock, concluding with the fact that the letters arranged properly yet hay bob hay rise and expand incorporating this fire rock, and having kolam as a crown on all the letters 281 at that time these living creatures and elements are peace offerings they are called sacrifices for none is defiled among them moreover the peace offerings have shlamim are last hay of the name yud hay bob hay namely malchut it is the completion of the central pillar zeir and with all the yud hay bob hay's included within zeir and in its six extremities the six fire rock, said, Bure, Typhoret, Netzach, Hot, and yezid of zeir and zeir and himself is the secret of yud hay bob of Yud Hay Bob Hay, which comprises six permutations, as was said before, and the last Hay completes each permutation. 282. The secret of this, as was said in the book of formation, have Sefer Yetzirah is that he sealed the top and turned upwards to Yud Hay Bob on the right side, which is Jesus. The first permutation, then he turned to Hay Bob Yud on the left side. Viewer the second permutation to Bob Hay Yud on the central pillar. Typhor at the third permutation to Yud Bob Hay and Netzach the fourth permutation to Hay Yud Bob in Had the fifth permutation to Bob Yud Hay and Yezid the sixth permutation. The tree which connects them all is Typhor. As Typhor comprises all of the six directions, it is a fruit bearing tree. Whenever the tree falls, there will be Yud Hay Bob an illusion that Typhor is called by the three letters Yud Hay Bob alone, and the last Hay Malchut is connected to it. Therefore, its six directions are distinguished by the six permutations of Yud Hay Bob. Similarly, in every Yud. Hey Bob Hey of the six directions there is Hey as last letter a peace offering Hebshalim to Yud Hey Bob Hey as the last Hey completes Hebshalim and Yud Hey Bob Hey and all the Yud Hey Bob Hey's of the six directions are attached to it thus Yud Hey Bob together with Hey turns into Yud Hey Bob Hey Hey Bob Yud together with Hey's Hey Bob Yud Hey Bob Hey Yud with Hey's Bob Hey Yud Hey so it is with the other Yud Hey Bob Hey's 283 the six permutations of Yud Hey Bob consist of 18 letters of the six directions Jesus Bureau Typhor at Netzach Hot and Yezid included in the righteous the life Hebshai equals 18 of the worlds who is Yezid of Zeir and together with Hey Malchut it becomes Chayulit animal the mystery of this is Hey such as the Ark of Noah Malchut in which every kind was gathered two and two and seven and seven of the animals for offering two and two are four seven and seven are fourteen and together they are eighteen Hebshai the Ark itself is Hey being Malchut. Thus the word Chaya is completed 284 the righteous Yezid is comprised of six grades namely six directions for which reason it has been decreed that the bettering of a bad dream is performed with three times peace three verses in which peace is mentioned and three ransoms three verses in which ransom is mentioned for Yezid is Bob and they together amount to six corresponding to the six grades of Yezid as the bettering of a bad dream is done through Yezid it is the latter in Jacob's dream which comprises six fire rod it is set up on the earth Bereshit 2812 namely the lower Sheshana Malchut called earth the last hay and the top of it is Yud of which the righteous Yezid is seventh it reached to heaven but to supernal Yame this is the supernal hay namely Bina of Bina of the side of the dream which is of the aspect of the left hay rules over Yud which is the top of the ladder which is the secret of hay Yud of Elohim hence the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. Bear she 2812 not the angels of Yudhe Bob Hay 285 the letters arranged properly Yudhe Hay Bob Hay ascend through the dot of Kolam the Baal which is Keter above them the four letters expand from Chakma to Holy Malchut as Chakma is Yud Bina is Hay the six fire rot Chisid Bure Typhor at Netzach Hot and Yezid Arbab and Malchut is the last Hay Kolam is a crown on all the letters end of Rai Mahin the section 42 tell me O you whom my soul loves from Rabbi. Hamna Nisab's book we learn that as long as the congregation of Israel is with God God willingly feeds himself and others from the eternal flow from Bina the secret meaning of this is that no blessings rest on a place without a male and a female two alternate explanations of the title verse are given both of which place importance on righteous men and on school children who study the Torah 286 if the priest that is anointed do sin to bring guiltiness on the people Vayikra 43 Rabbi Abba. Open the discussion with the verse. Tell me, O you whom my soul loves, if you know not, O you fairest among women. Sure, Hashirim 17 to 8. These verses were explained by the friends to refer to Moses when he departed from the world, for he said, Let Hashem, the Elohim of the spirits of all flesh, appoint who may go out before them. Bimidbar 2716 to 17. He then told the Holy One, Blessed be he. Tell me, O you whom my soul loves, where or how you feed, who would you appoint to feed Israel? We learned that this was said of the exile 287. Come and see these verses were said by the congregation of Israel. Malchut to the Holy King Zeir and Tell me, O you whom my soul loves, which may be read as you who loves my soul, as in have you seen him who loves my soul? Sure, Hashirim 33 to the Holy King. It was said, O you who loves my soul, how would you feed? Bimidbar 17288. Rabbi Hamna Nisab said in his book, As long as the congregation of Israel is with the Holy One, Blessed be he, the Holy One, Blessed be. He so to speak is perfected and willingly feeds himself and others he feeds himself by sucking milk from supernal Yami by receiving abundance from Bina from the sucking he waters all the others and suckles them we learned that Rabbi Shimon said that as long as the congregation of Israel is with the Holy One blessed be he the Holy One blessed be he is in perfection and joy blessings rest on him and from him go to all the others namely to all the worlds whenever the congregation of
He said to the congregation of Israel, let alone what is mine to which he is not to talk about the needs of Zeir and Pen, for what is mine is too secret to be made known. But if you know not of what concerns yourself, here is some advice. O oh, you fairest among women, if it resembles, behold, you are fair, my love. Sure, Hasherim 41, that is the name of the congregation of Israel. Go your way forth by the footsteps of the flock. Sure, Hasherim 18, these are the righteous trodden by the heels to it. Everybody treads on them with their heels, and through them strength will be given you to survive and feed your kids beside the shepherd's tents. But these are school children for whose sake the world endures. They give strength to the congregation of Israel during the time of exile. Beside the shepherd's tents, these are the schools and their teachers' houses of learning where the Torah always dwells. 293. Another explanation for if you know not, O oh, you fairest among women, come and see when there are righteous men and school children who study the Torah in the world, the congregation of Israel can't exist due to them in exile. But if there are not enough of them, it is as if she and they cannot exist in the world. If there be righteous men, they are caught first and die to atone for people of their generation. If not, the kids for whose sake the world endures are caught first, and the Holy One, blessed be He, takes them from the world even though they are without sin. Not only that. He even removes the congregation of Israel away from him and she goes out into exile. Section 43 If the priest that is anointed do sin, we are told that the anointed priest only sins because of the guiltiness of the people. Rabbi Yitzhak talks about Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, saying that Israel is complete in every respect. God made the patriarchs swear by the supernal patriarchs, Jesus, Bura, and Tiferet of Zir, and Ben Rabbi Yossi wonders when a priest sins who will bring an offering for him and make atonement for him. Rabbi Shia says that another priest brings his offering and then the high priest himself brings an offering. This is acceptable to the Holy King. 294 It is written, If the priest that is anointed do sin to bring guiltiness on the people, Vayikra 43 The anointed priest is the Holy One, blessed be he, and wherefore should he sin because of the guiltiness of the people to it because of the sins of the world that brought it on him? It is surely. Because of the guiltiness of the people, not his own due sin means that he will withhold his goodness and judge everything using judgment as written. I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. I may lash him 121. Another explanation if the priest that is anointed or the Holy One blessed be he, as we said, do sin that I as withhold from the congregation of Israel and from the world by not giving them blessings according to their needs. Why should he do so? Assuredly, it is because of it. Guiltiness of the people because of the sins of the people. The two explanations are close in meaning, and the second adds what the first lacks. 295. If the priest that is anointed do sin, Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion with the verse. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants. Shema 3213. This is a difficult verse. It should have been written. Remember Abraham and Isaac and Israel. Why is it written Isaac without any answers? We have learned that the left is always. Included within the right and is part of the right for the right was made to always include the left it therefore does not divide the words by an Isaac as it would have divided between Abraham and Isaac so as to include Isaac who is left in Abraham who is right it is therefore written Abraham Isaac in one alliance and then in Israel a second alliance for he holds them both with his wings thus he is complete in every respect 296 to whom you did swear by your own self if it Holy one blessed be he made the patriarchs swear by the supernal patriarchs Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and Penhance it is written to whom you did swear by your own self your own self namely by those above those who dwell in your own self to what he swore by his own Chesed Bura and Tiferet and did say to them I will multiply your seed that I have spoken of if it he asks it says that I have spoken it should have said that you have spoken for you cannot say that the Holy One Blessed be he said that I have spoken since he just swore and said that to them. Surely Moses said this, but he should have said that you have spoken. He answers the Holy One. Blessed be he said it to the patriarchs once and again, and it is possible that he said that I have spoken, which means that he has already spoken to them before. Moreover, that I have spoken means that which I desired with my soul. There is no need to say that he already spoke to them, for speaking means desiring. Hence it says Hashem said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I may lash him 812, and whatever your soul desires, let says I will do for you. I shall rule 204, 297, and they shall inherit it forever. Live for the world. Shema 3213. He asks, What is the world? He replies, It is the supernal world, Zeir and to which the land Malchut is attached, and by which it is sustained. If the land is driven into exile and is not attached to Zeir and what is it due to the guiltiness of the people? Ideas. Therefore written and they shall inherit it forever to it Malchut will be united with Zeir and forever and will not go into exile. He thus explained the verse if the priest that is anointed Zeir and do sin in withholding union from Malchut so that she will go into exile it is because of the guiltiness of the people. 298 Rabbi Yitzhak said if the priest that is anointed do sin refers to the priest below who prepares himself for service in the temple and a sin is found in him. It brings guiltiness of the people for the people will be blamed for it because woe to those who rely on his service. Similarly if a sin is found in the cantor woe to those who count on him Rabbi Yehuda said all the more so the priest to whom all Israel above and below look and expect to be blessed by 299 we have learned that when the priest starts to meditate and bring the supernal offering to it bring about the unison between Malchut and Zeir and everyone is blessed and joyful. The right Jesus begins to awaken and the left judgment is included within the right and everything is attached and connected to each other all are blessed together thus through the priest the upper and lower beings are blessed as we already explained hence if he sins an offering should be brought for him so that his sin will be atoned for 300 Rabbi Yossi said we learned that through the priest a man sin is atoned for when he brings an offering for him he asks now that he himself sinned who will bring an offering for him and who shall make atonement for him you may say that he should bring an offering for himself yet he sinned and he is unworthy that the upper and lower beings be blessed by him for if the lower beings are not blessed by him all the more so the upper ones Rabbi Yehuda said yet it is not holy so since it is written and have made atonement for himself and for his household Vayikra 1617 why should he need another to make atonement for himself for his sin if he can make atonement for himself as written and have made atonement for himself. 301 Rabbi Shia said it is known to what place the high priest is attached which is Chakma and to what place the other priest is attached who is called his deputy Chisa. Another priest therefore brings the offering of the high priest the one who is called an anointed priest first and raises him to where he himself is attached namely to Chisa of Zeir and Ben after the priest raises the offering to that place. Chisa the high priest is not stopped from rising it further to his place Chakma in order to atone for his sin therefore another priest brings his offering and since another brings it it does not suffice because he can raise it only up to Chisa and the aspect of the high priest is Chakma then afterwards the high priest himself brings an offering and the upper ones all join to atone for his sin it is acceptable to the holy king in the same manner he who prays and hears let another take his Place section 44 The blowing of the shofar Rabbi Lazer tells about the blowing of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur and about the day that Isaac was bound on that day God raised Abraham teaching us that the right was constructed and perfected by binding the left God told Israel that they should not be afraid of the judgments of the left column for he detains those judgments from coming out when the sound of the shofar rises up the prosecutors above are pushed aside by the sound and cannot prevail Rabbi Lazer talks about the worthiness of the messenger saying that a priest and a Levite should be examined before they begin their service to be sure they are worthy of it then they shall put incense on the altar so that everything is perfumed and so that blessings will prevail in all the world's 302 Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Abba were sitting Rabbi Lazer said I saw that my father on the day of Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year and on Yom Kippur Refused to listen to the prayer of a man unless he was with him three days in advance to purify him as Rabbi Shimon used to say by the prayer of the man who I purify the world is atoned for all the more so by the blowing of the shofar for he did not accept the shofar blowing of a man who did not have the knowledge of blowing according to the meditation on the secret meaning of blowing 303 we have learned that Rabbi Yesus Saba discussed the order of the shofar blowings the first order comprises all of them to wit including Shabarim and Truah
Adorned to be at the head of the patriarchs on that day it is written the sinners in Zion are afraid Yeshua 3314 on the day Isaac was bound and bound everything Sarah wails and the peel of the shofar grows very strong happy is the portion of he who passes between them and escapes them Rabbi Abba said the reason we read the portion of the binding of Isaac on that day is that the day Isaac was bound below he was also tied to the one above when was he tied at the time that it is written and he bound Isaac his son Bershi 229 305 Rabbi Lazar said on that day Isaac was bound Isaac crowned Abraham with the mokin of the first three sfirot that are called crowned in accordance with the meaning of the verse with the crown with which his mother crowned him Sure Hashirim 311 it is written that Elohim detest have Nisa Abraham Abed one what is Nisa it has the same meaning as in the verse and set up my standard have Nisi to the peoples Yeshua 4922 and called the name of it Ado Nisi lit Hashem is my banner Shemot 1716 IT is a language of elevation and exaltation not of testing for in the binding of Isaac he raised and elevated Abraham he asks what does that teach us he answers it teaches us that the right was constructed and perfected by binding the left hands it is written Elohim to test Abraham it is accurate to use Elohim being the fear of Isaac that is the attribute of viewer the left column 306 Rabbi Abba said that it is written but Elohim is the judge he puts one down and lifts up another Talim 758 but Elohim is the judge Elohim is Bure and the judge is Tifera call justice the meaning of this is that if the judgment of Isaac the secret of Bure and the left column were removed from where Jacob dwelt who is the secret of Tifera and the central column and were mitigated there woe to the world who meets its judgment this is the secret of the words for by fire will Hashem execute judgment Yeshua 6616 the fire on it left is judged by Yudi Hei Vavhei the central column which joins it with the right this is how the world is perfumed 307 since Isaac the left column enters the place of Jacob the central column and Jacob holds onto him the fire is a peace and its goal school namely the judgments of the left column this is like a man who put on arms in his anger and went out to kill people a wise man stood by his door seized him and did not let him go out the angry man said to him were it not for you who held me and opposed me there would be killing in the world as they were arguing with each other and seizing each other his anger cooled off with his desire to kill the wise man thus proved who endures the anger and the harshness of that man's rage namely whoever stands by the door to detain him from coming out 308 thus spoke the holy one blessed be he the secret of the central column to Israel my children do not be afraid of the judgments of the left column for I stand by the door to Detain the judgments from coming out cheer up on this day and give me strength with what with the shofar if the sound of the shofar is found worthy and people meditate on it below the sound rises and joins the right and left by which the fathers are crowned Abraham and Isaac are in Jacob's abode because he brings about this unison and one should therefore be careful with the shofar to know that sound and meditate on it 309 there is no sound of the shofar which does not ascend to a certain firmament and all the crowd in that firmament gives room to the sound they say and Hashem utters his voice before his army UL 211 that sound stands in that firmament until another sound comes and they assemble and rise joined to another firmament we therefore learn that there is a sound that raises a sound what is it it is the sound of Israel blowing below 310 when the sounds below are joined they rise to the highest firmament in which the holy king the central column abides they are all adorned before the king and the thrones of judgment are overthrown and another throne of Jacob the central column is fixed and prepared 311 I have found that Rabham Nadesav said in his book in the section of the prayers of Rosh Hashanah about the prayer and the sound of the shofar a righteous man makes with the shofar that comes out from his spirit and soul that that sound rises up on that day prosecutors stand ready above but when the sound of the shofar rises they are all pushed aside by it and cannot prevail happy is the portion of the righteous who know how to concentrate their will before their master and who know how to mend the world on that day by the sound of the shofar it is therefore written happy is the people that know the joyful note Hatira Hotelim 8916 it is written no not blow 312 on that day the people should see that a man who is perfect in every way who knows the ways of the holy king and the glory of the king says the prayer for them on that day and introduces the sound of the shofar to every world with the meditation of the heart wisdom will and perfection with his help judgment will be removed from the world woe to those whose messenger is found unworthy for the sins of the world will be remembered because of him hence if the priest that is anointed do sin the messenger of all of Israel it is for the guiltiness of the people they I cry 43 because judgment rests on the people 313 when the cantor is worthy happy are the people for all judgments are removed from them by him all the more so for the priest for whose sake the upper and lower beings are blessed Rabbi Lazar said a priest and a Levite should therefore be examined before they begin their service to search their ways and actions otherwise they may not rise to start their service also in the Sanhedrin in relation to judging no man is accepted to become a member of the Sanhedrin before he is checked to see whether he is worthy of it 314 If the priest or the Levite is found worthy a restrictive measure due to the greater import of the temple is put on him but if not he does not start his service hence it says and of Levi he said let your Tumim and your Urim be with your pious one Devarim 338 Wherefore is he worthy of the Urim and Tumim and of performing service we conclude this from whom you did prove at Massa but because you tested him before and found him worthy who said of his father and of his mother I have not seen him but nine when he is in these grades then they shall teach Jacob your judgments they shall put incense but ten they shall put incense so that anger will be soothed and peace invited and whole burnt sacrifice upon your altar but so that everything will be perfumed and blessings will prevail in all the worlds then bless Hashem his substance of it 11 section 45 Lilith who was first with Adam Rabbi Shimon says that when God made man he created him whole male and female and the female was included within the male then he talks about Lilith who was Adam's first wife and who lives in a hole in the great abyss at first Adam's body was created without a spirit and God had to prevent thousands of spirits of the left side from entering his body until he appeared Lilith was always with Adam when he received a living soul he was stuck by his side and then God separated them when Lilith saw this she fled but she is still capable of harming people Rabbi Shimon says that she is the destruction of the world and the only protection against her for one joining with his wife is for him to devote himself to holiness 315 and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance and the thing be hid Vayikra 413 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse rise up you women that are at ease hear my voice Yeshua 329 how much should men regard his master's glory so as to be a whole creature before the Holy One blessed be he when the Holy One Blessed be he created man he created him whole as it says that Elohim has made man upright Kahilat 729 man teaches us that they were male and female and that the female was included within the male then it says he is upright but later they have sought out many inventions Ibid 316 come and see in a hole by the great supernal abyss there is a certain female spirit above all spirits we have explained that its name is Lilith she was first with Adam being his wife when Adam was created and his body perfected a thousand spirits came on the body from the left side this one wanted to enter it and that one wanted to enter it but they could not the holy one blessed be he scolded them thus Adam lay down spiritless green in appearance with all those spirits around him 317 at that time a cloud descended and pushed aside all the spirits which surrounded Adam at that time it is written and Elohim said let the earth bring forth living creatures Nefesh Bershi 124 we have Explained that the female Malchut conceived from the male Zeir and Ben and was with the Nefesh of the first man and that she Malchut brought forth the Ruash to breathe within that man which is included of two sides male and female hence it says and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul Nefesh Bershi 27 a truly living Nefesh to wit that includes male and female whoever is not sure whether this living creature is a lower living creature Malchut or a living creature named Israel Zeir and Ben whether it is male or female let him be precise it does not say the living Nefesh which would refer to a specific living creature but just a living Nefesh which means general to wit this living Nefesh comprises everything 318 when Adam rose after receiving the living Nefesh his female was stuck by his side and the holy Nesham within him expanded to the side of the male and that side of the female and sufficed for both of them the male and the female. It therefore included male and female
was with him as long as this woman he was not made to be with Adam Lilith was with him when he was designed to be with him Lilith fled to the sea destined to harm the world 321 the remedy against Lilith doing any harm is that when a man joins his wife for procreation he should devote his heart to his master's holiness and speak the following the one wrapped with a sheet namely Lilith who is always wrapped and wailing the name Lilith derived from whale have yellow is come get you hence get you Hence you shall not come in nor come out this is not yours nor pertains to you return return the sea rages its waves beckon to you I cleave to the holy portion I am wrapped with the king's holiness 322 he should cover his head and his wife's head for up to an hour as long as they made up to three days to the conception of the sperm for the sperm which a woman does not conceive for three days she will never conceive in the book that as handed to Solomon he said it is up to thirty days. He also said that after the deed is done it behooves him to sprinkle clear water around his bed this is the best protection section 46 a woman who suckles her baby we learn that a woman who suckles her child must not have intercourse with her husband until the baby is asleep and she should not afterwards suckle her child for an hour 323 a woman who suckles her child must not have intercourse with her husband unless the child is asleep she should not afterwards. Suckle her baby for an hour the equivalent of a two mile walk or one mile if she cannot wait so as not to distress the baby if the baby cries if she does this she will never have anything to fear her Lilith 324 happy are the righteous whom the Holy One blessed be he teaches deep mysteries from high up and from below all for the sake of the Torah whoever studies the Torah is crowned with the crowns of his holy name for the Torah is a holy name and he who studies it is marked and crowned with the holy name for he knows then hidden ways and deep mysteries from high up and below and is never afraid section 47 women rule over the world rabbi shimon says that because a woman was the first to sin women rule over men on the side of severe judgment when men sin before god these women are the sharp brightness coming from the revolving sword rabbi shimon adds that woe is to the world when women rule over the people 325 on the day that adam was born they were commanded concerning a certain tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil but they transgressed the commandment of their master since the woman was the first to sin and the serpent came into her it is written and he shall rule over you bear she 316 from then on whenever men were guilty before the holy one blessed be he we explained that women who are on the side of severe judgment would rule over them on the side of severe judgment hence it says as for my people children are there Oppressors and women rule over them. Yeshayah 312 and surely women rule over them. 326 those women are called the bright blade of a revolving sword. Bear she 324 it is not that they themselves are the revolving sword but they are the sharp brightness coming from the sword called the sword that shall avenge my covenant. Vayikra 2625 and the sword of Hashem is filled with blood. Yeshayah 346 the bright blade revolves so that it is sometimes men and sometimes women as we have already. Understood 327 woe to the world when women rule over the world when a prophet in Yisrael saw Yisrael deviating from their way and are sinful before their master he said you women that are at ease Yeshayah 329 how can you be still how can you sin without stirring in the world rise up and rule over men we explained this verse elsewhere and the friends explained it 328 they spoke only of instances such as we find in Deborah as written she judged Yisrael at that time shoved him 44 we therefore learned that woe is to man whose wife says grace for him at his table to it that she speaks for her husband when saying grace since he does not know how to do it so was Deborah who judged Yisrael at that time woe to the generation in which there is no one to judge the people but a woman section 48 there were two women in the world we learned about Deborah and Hannah who praised God more than any man ever did Hannah opened the gate of faith in the world and she prophesied that Samuel would be the equal of Moses and Aaron. Rabbi Shimon analyzes a long portion of 1st Shmuel, the central message of which is that the strength of severe judgment will be broken by the illumination of Bunna. From what Deborah said, we learned that God invited all the nations to receive the Torah, but none of them wanted it. Rabbi Shimon tells us that because people sinned in Jerusalem, the whole nation sinned. 329 come and see, there were two women in the world who praised it. Holy one, blessed be he, such as no men in the world did who are the Deborah and Hannah. Hannah said, There is none holy as Hashem, for there is none besides you. I Shmuel 22 and all the following verses, she thus opened the gate of faith in the world, such as he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill of a date. This is the gate of faith which is Malchut, which is called the poor one and the beggar when the generation is sinful, when they repent, it says of her, he Raises up the poor out of the dust to set among princes. Ibid, this is the upper faith where the patriarchs of Bad Chisid, Bira, and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben, for who are the princes? They are the patriarchs, as written. The nobles of the peoples are gathered together. The people of Elohim of Abraham, Tehillim 4710. Thus, from the aspect of the fathers, they are called nobles. 330. Another explanation for to set among princes. She prophesied of Samuel that he would equal Moses and Aaron, as written. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call on his name. Tehillim 996. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. Ishmael 28. What is make them inherit? It is Samuel who made two kings, Saul and David, inherit the glory of kingship. Another explanation for and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Ibid, it is the Holy One, blessed be he who makes his servants inherit his throne. This is the meaning of and to make them inherit the throne of glory. 331. They Adversaries of Hashem will be broken in pieces of a ten mayavab lit adversaries is spelled without yud the mark of plural what does this teach us he answers mayavab contains the letters mayavab this is the holy king namely zeir and been called vav yud a the central column the secret of wisdom was spoken here when judgments awaken and the rulers of the side of judgment overpower mercy the central column mercy is subdued before the rulers of judgment when the holy one blessed be he is blessed by the source of the river by the mercy the central column overpowers and judgments which are drawn from the left are subdued hence the adversaries of Hashem will be broken in pieces mayavab namely judgments the adversary had mayavab the bab the central column will be broken in pieces by the illumination of by the 332 out of heaven shall be thunder on him if it who is him he answers when do namely the abundance of atika kadish akita rests on him and fills his head namely. The first three Sfirah called head in the place called heaven namely Zeir and then there shall be thunder and the strength and might of severe judgment will be broken and he shall give strength to his king Ibid this is the holy one blessed be Zeir and and exalt the horn of his anointed Ibid this is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut called Ram's horn as we explained his anointed carries the same meaning as in the words the anointed of Elohim of Jacob 2 Shmuel 231 which was said of David the aspect of Malchut it therefore says the horn of his anointed which has already been explained 333 when Deborah came to praise the holy king she said Hashem when you did go out of Seir when you did march out of the field of Edom shoved him 54 this teaches us that the holy one blessed be he invited all nations to receive the Torah but they did not want it he asked was it not known to him that they would not want it wherefore did he invite them he answered so that they would have no excuse to say that they would have kept the Torah had the Holy One blessed be he given it to them he therefore invited them all the verses uttered by Deborah are in the secret of wisdom until she praised herself as it says until I Deborah arose I rose a mother in Israel of it seven according to our explanation the spirit of prophecy then quit her and hence she said awake awake Deborah awake awake utter a song of it thirteen she had to awake again the spirit of prophecy three hundred and thirty four all this occurred when men were sinful and unworthy of the Holy Spirit resting on them surely if the whole congregation of Israel sin Vayikra four hundred and thirteen as we explained they heard in their instructions yet it says and if the whole congregation of Israel sin while it should have said and if the whole of Israel sin what is the meaning of the congregation of Israel the word congregation is redundant he answers it refers to the dwellers of Jerusalem once the Torah spreads to the whole people if People heard there, so did the whole of Israel according to what we learned since there in Jerusalem. They heard the whole people heard because everybody follows them, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly. Vayikra 413. The eyes of the assembly are the Sanhedrin who are in charge over Israel. Section 49. The greater Sanhedrin and the smaller Sanhedrin. We learned about the greater Sanhedrin of Mo
Therefrom is the Sanhedrin great who bears the aspect of Tiferet Aaron was the best man of the Queen Malchut whom we call the small Hayas and I will serve you seven years for Rachel your younger lit smaller daughter Beersheet 2918 for Rachel is Malchut and is considered small and they are called the smaller Sanhedrin after her so when Aaron Malchut's best man who raises her to Zeir and presided over the Sanhedrin the Sanhedrin was considered small 336 from there the Sanhedrin drew their knowledge of 70 languages the 70 aspects of the Torah for there are 70 languages on the side of the evil kingdom all of which are different hence by these were the isles of the nations divided in their lands everyone after his language Beersheet 105 since all these 70 languages are different from each other 337 in the Torah however there are 70 interpretations in one language the holy language this is Yezid which includes the seven Sfirot of Zeir and Benich. Comprising ten, they are seventy altogether. Yet of Yezid is one halacha small chakma, namely Malchut, which contains seventy languages. The numerical value of Sadlet secret equals seventy of Yezid. Yezid is the holy language, the secret of the chariot of seventy seats. In relation to them, we learn that whoever replies Amen may his great name be blessed with all his might. A decree of seventy years standing against him is torn. The one language Yezid is seventy languages by the small measure of small chakma, which is a small yet to which the Yud of Yezid alludes. And the numerical value of Yezid is the seventy languages that illuminate Yud together, comprising the letters of Yezid. Bet equals two is Moses and Aaron, the heads of the Sanhedrin. They are two, the two lips, namely Netzach and Hot. This is from the aspect of Sfirot, from the aspect of Mokin. They comprise Dat and Tavuna, as Moses is the secret of Dat and Aaron, the secret of Tavuna. With them, the number of the Sanhedrin is completed to seventy-two. Namely, which corresponds to the name of I and Bet equals 72 and R A I Mahim the section 50. I acknowledge my sin to you, Rabbi Shia tells us that a man can only open the gate of penitence if he reveals his sins to God, and even more so if he cries confession of sins causes mercy to overpower judgment and glorifies God. There are two glorifications, one in this world and one in the world to come. Rabbi Shimon says that David addressed the words in the title Psalm to the Kingdom of Heaven that is a messenger or a mediator. He adds that peace offerings are brought by confession. Anyone who wants a favor from the king should bring the unison of the holy name with all his will from below upward and from above downward. Then in this unison he can include his petition. 338 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi were walking along the road while they were walking. Rabbi Yussi said to Rabbi Shia, let us study the words of the Torah, the words of Adikim and let the ancient of days. Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying I acknowledge my sin to you Tehillim 325 from this I learned that a man who hides his sins and does not confess them before the holy king to ask for mercy on them cannot open the gate of penitence because he conceals from him if he uncovers them before the holy one blessed be he he takes pity on him and mercy overcomes judgment 339 all the more so if he cries because he opens all the closed doors by crying and his prayer is accepted confessing his sins therefore glorifies the king it causes mercy to overpower judgment it is therefore written whoever offers praise glorifies me Yashab Dinani Tehillim 5023 why Yashab Dinani instead of the common Yashab Dinani this is because there are two glorifications one above and one below namely one in this world and one in the world to come 340 the whole verse is difficult because of its excessive words the words I will confess my transgressions Tehillim 325 suffice why then does he say I Acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hid it, but then he says I will confess my transgressions to Hashem it should have been to you like he said before I acknowledge my sin to you and not to Hashem 341 he answers David said all his words by the Holy Spirit he addressed them to the kingdom of heaven that is a mediator and a messenger that takes a message from below upwards being a gate to the upper Sfirot and man has to enter it first and from above downwards since it receives abundance from the upper Sfirot and powers it downwards whoever needs a king should first notify it therefore I acknowledge my sin to you is addressed to the kingdom of heaven and my iniquity I have not hid from the righteous of the world is it of Zeir and ben. I said I will confess my transgressions to Hashem to the holy king Zeir and ben. that the whole peace is it behooves man to bring peace to him by confession namely he should confess his sins for peace offerings are Brought by confession is written his peace offering of thanksgiving derived from confess vi cross 713 and you did forgive the iniquity of my sin cell 325 is high above by the supernal abba and ima where atika kadisha keter dwells this verse is therefore attached to everything to malchut yezid tiferet and the supernal abba and ima on which keter rests 342 in the same manner he who pleads for a favor of the king should bring the unison of the holy name with his will from below upward from malchut to keter and from above downward from keter to malchut and he should bind everything into one unison with the blessed endless light in this unison it behooves him to include his petition rabbi yussi said who is wise to ask his request like king david did who guarded the gate of the king being a chariot to malchut called the gate of the king rabbi said to him surely this is so the torah therefore teaches us the ways of the holy king so that we shall know how to follow him is written you shall walk after Hashem your Elohim Devarim 135 section 51 Rachel weeping for her children Rabbi Yossi says that whenever a prophet begins his words whichever name is mentioned at first indicates either judgment or mercy he talks about the Shechonai sorrow when the temple was destroyed and Israel were sent into exile he says that Israel would never have gone into exile nor would the temple have been destroyed if all of Israel had not been found guilty before God and the leaders of the world first once the leaders of the people sent all the people followed them after this discussion Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi miraculously find a cave in which they can hide from robbers who were chasing them 343 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse that says Hashem a voice was heard in Rama lamentation and bitter weeping Yermeah 3114 that says Hashem it has been understood that whenever a prophet opens his words they are Recognized by the name mentioned at the beginning whether the name indicates judgment or mercy Zeir Anpin or Malchut etc. Thus says Hashem this is the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir Anpin what does he say a voice was heard in Ramah of Malchut as will be explained 344 we have learned that on the day the temple was destroyed and Israel went into exile with a millstone around their necks and their hands bound behind them the congregation of Israel the Shechinah was driven from the king's house to follow them into exile when the Shechinah descended she said let me go first to lament my dwelling place the temple my children Israel and my husband Zeir Anpin who separated from her when she came down she saw her abode ruined with much blood of the pious flowing in it and the temple and her house consumed by fire 345 she then raised her voice in weeping and the upper and lower beings were in a tumult the voice reached up to where the king Zeir Anpin abides the king then Wanted to bring the world back into chaos, many legions and hosts of angels came down to console her, but she took no consolation. Hence, a voice was heard in Rama lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be comforted for her children because she would not be consoled by them because he is not. But the holy king has risen above and is not inside her. Hence, it says because he is not and not they are not. Since it alludes to the holy king, three hundred and forty-six. Rabbi Shia said to him, Why does it say Rachel weeping for her children? I should have said that the Shechinah was weeping for her children. He said to him, We learned that Rachel is the congregation of Israel, namely the Shechinah. Surely she is Jacob's wife, namely the wife of Zeir and called Jacob as written. And Jacob loved Rachel. Beersheet two thousand nine hundred and eighteen. And but Rachel was barren. But thirty-one. It is also written, He makes the barren woman to keep house and be a joyful mother of children. Tehillim one thousand one hundred and thirty-nine. All these. Verses speak of the Shechinah 347 another interpretation for because he is not it resembles the words there is none greater in this house than I Beersheet 399 none does not simply mean that he is not but that there is no one greater in the house than I it is written in general and has many meanings one he is not because the Holy One blessed be he is gone above away from everything two he is not united with her and three he is not because his name the Shechinah is no longer his great name but is in exile 348 Rabbi Shia said once is the starting point of the Shechinah's exile he said to him from the temple where
What way since the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly before the eyes of the people are their chiefs after whom the whole people are drawn and follow 350 while they were walking they saw a lush place with a river flowing through it they sat down while they were sitting a bird flew past them Rabbi Shia said let us go from here because wild cocks about here namely robbers they rose and left when they looked back they saw robbers chasing of a miracle happened to them and they found before them a rock in which there was a cave they entered it and sat there all that day and all the night section 52 I will save you from afar Rabbi Shia talks about the possible meanings of from afar Rabbi Shimon explains that Zer Anpin rises high up to Chakma and powers the abundance down from afar he says that Zer Anpin will eventually return and descend to rejoin the congregation of Israel so that none need be afraid of Isaac the left column or Judgments just so God saved Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yusi by giving them the cave to be safe in 351. Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying, Therefore fear you not, O my servant Jacob, for lo, I will save you from afar. Your mayah 3010. He asks from afar, it should have said from nearby. We explained in relation to this verse that from afar is like the return from afar country to what it alludes to a place yet from afar has the same meaning as the words Hashem appeared to me from afar. Your mayah 312 and she brings her food from afar. Mishlei 3114. What is this? It is a deep river Chakma called far as written. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. Kahilat 723. This is the place from whence the river Bina comes out and flows 352 and Jacob shall return. Your mayah 3010. He asks since it already says, Therefore fear you not, O my servant Jacob, wherefore also does it say, and Jacob shall return and shall be quiet and at ease and none shall make him afraid of it, which is a repetition he answers as we have learned the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir Anpin rises high up namely to Chakma is written why Hashem stand you afar off Tehillim 101 in Chakma is explained above from that far place I will save you namely pour the abundance of Chakma and Jacob shall return to what Zeir Anpin called Jacob shall return from Chakma and descend to his place to join the congregation of Israel Malchut Yezid is quiet and at ease which means that it is at ease too. Set his abode in her in Malchut none shall make him afraid namely of Isaac who is the left column and of judgments is written and Isaac trembled very much Bereshit 2733 it is therefore written and the fear of Isaac Bereshit 3142 who is the left column when that fear is aroused Yezid is gone elsewhere and does not bestow plenty on Malchut hence the sinners in Zion are afraid Yeshehu 3314 they will fear the judgments of the left column called fear that removes the Yezid so it will not. Give plenty to Malchut Zion is accurate because Zion is Yezid of Malchut because Yezid of Zeir and then leaves her due to the judgments of the left hands it says and none shall make him afraid the Holy One blessed be he saved us from afar and hid us in this place in the cave in quiet and peace with none to make us afraid when the Holy One blessed be he makes a miracle he does so completely 353 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse and Barak said to her if you will go with me then I will go shoved him 48 he asks what does it mean he answers since the Holy Spirit rests on her Barak said I will be saved in her merit and shall come to no harm as Barak put his faith on a woman to be saved by her merit how much more we when the Torah is with us which is the name of the Holy King section 53 I will give you thanks forever because you have done it the rabbis are delighted when they hear two merchants talking outside their cave discussing the title Verse they come out of the cave to talk to them. Rabbi Shia says that men give thanks to God every day for the world that he has made. The merchant tells of overhearing Rabbi Shimon say that King David gave thanks for the last world, namely Malchut. Rabbi Shimon also explained the meaning of now therefore our Elohim hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication as for the sake of Adonai. And we learned that the name Adonai symbolizes the Shechina and is attached to the temple her dwelling. Place 354 they sat inside the cave all that day when night fell the moon shone into the cave. Two merchants passed by with their mules laden with wine and food for themselves. They rested on their load. They said to each other let us pass the night here we shall give food and drink to the donkeys and go into the cave. His friend said to him before we do so please explain this verse which I cannot understand. 355 he said to him which one he said to him a word in the verse I will give you. Thanks forever because you have done it. Tehillim 5211. Why does it say you have done without specifying what he has done? It is also written for it is good before your saints of it. Is it not good to others? Indeed, the Holy One blessed be he is good to all. He had no answer. He said, Woe to our merchandise for which we left the Holy One blessed be he. Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi who sat in the cave listening to their words rejoiced. Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Yossi, Did I not tell you that when the Holy One blessed be he makes a miracle? He does so completely. They came out of the cave towards the merchants. 356. When they came out, Rabbi Shia was the first to open with the verse, Peace, peace, both for far and near. Yeshayah 5719. There is peace twice here, one for the far and one for the near, and all is one to it to the far one who became near, who is a repentant sinner who was far before and now is near. Also far means that when man strays far from the Torah, he is far from the Holy One blessed. Be he the Holy One blessed be he draws him who is near the Torah near him he said to the merchants join us and come into the cave the merchants came and joined them they took the loads off the mules and gave them food then they all went out to the mouth of the cave 357 one of the merchants said let the sages of the Torah explain to us the verse I will give you thanks forever let the world because you have done it and I will wait for your name what is you have done without saying what it is also written for it is good before your saints so is he not good towards others 358 Rabbi Shia said indeed you have done what have you done the world to with the meaning of the verses that I will give you thanks because you have made the world it is for the world which the Holy One blessed be he made and fixed that man gives thanks daily to the Holy One blessed be he and I will wait on your name for it is good before your saints surely this is so the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he is good before the saints, not before the evil who scorn it daily by not studying the Torah. The merchant said to him, This is well, yet I heard something from behind the wall which I fear to reveal. Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi said to him, Speak up, the Torah is not bequeathed to one place alone. 359 He said to them, I went to Lot one day, I came into the town and leaned against the wall. Rabbi Shimon, son of Yaqay, was in that house, and I heard from his mouth this verse, I will give you. Thanks forever, let the world, because you have done it, I will give thanks, was said by King David about the last world, namely Malchut, he made to which world King David is attached, in which he inherited the kingdom, and I will wait for your name, for it is good. This is the Holy One, blessed be he in the unification of this world that is called good, namely Yezid. He explains the verse, When is it called good? Before your saints, he asks, Who are your saints? 360 He answers, There is Jesus and there is Chesed, namely an upper Chesed, Chesed of Zeir Anpin, and a lower Chesed, Chesed clothed with Malchut by a Netzach and Hot. The ones on Netzach and Hot are called the sure loving promises. Had Chesedim of David, Yeshaya 553. When the Chesedim of David, Netzach and Hot are filled with the goodness flowing from Atika Kadesh Akita, and Yezid is called good, and it is good before your saints. Had Hasadicha, who are Netzach and Hot, when Yezid is in it in goodness, it perfumes the last world. Malchut and everything is blessed. David therefore awaited this great Yezid called good, which shines on the world to which he cleaves, namely Malchut 361. I have heard these words this way, but do not know what they mean. Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi approached him and kissed his head. Rabbi Shia said, Who could cover your eyes with dust? Rabbi Shimon, from your place you cause high mountains to tremble, and even the birds of the sky rejoice in your words. Woe to the world when you shall depart from. It 362 the merchant also said I have heard yet another thing from him at that time the verse which says now therefore our Elohim hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication as for the sake of Adonai Daniel 917 he said the following if the name Adonai is more important than any other name it is well that he said for the sake of Adonai for thus people speak to for the sake of the king but it is known that the name Adonai is the courthouse namely Malchut from which judgments go forth into the world who has seen that the king is thus spoken to do for your servant or for something lesser than yourself 363 he answers surely it ought to be so said as has been said since this name Adonai has fixed a house for the king and the temple below and they cleave to
His friend the merchant said I shall tell you something which I studied on that day the verse saying is Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah Tehillim 631 David uttered the psalm when he fled his father-in-law and was in the desert he asked why did he say Elohim you are my El earnestly I seek you I in a dry and thirsty land David 2 Elohim you are my El means that I am always attached to the name Elohim which is pure because he is in the desert I seek you is difficult to understand since David could not have sought the Holy One blessed be he in a far land driven as he was from the land where the Sheshan not dwelt Jerusalem 365 he answers even though David was driven away from there he did not quit his business of seeking the Holy One blessed be he I have heard that I seek you is like someone saying I wish to see you but I cannot I seek you but I am outside the dwelling place of the Sheshan and cannot seek you my soul thirsts for you a bit for my soul and body long to be seen in your presence but I cannot because I am in a dry and thirsty land where no water is of it outside the dwelling place of the Shechinah it is considered a dry and thirsty land because there is no living water what is living water it is the Shechinah as it is written a well of living water Beersheet 2619 it is therefore written a dry and thirsty land where no water is 366 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi said surely the road is ready before us they entered the cave and slept at midnight they heard the sounds of growling desert animals and woke up Rabbi Shia said this is the time to help the congregation of Israel, namely Malchut which praises the king namely Zeir and they said let each say what he has heard and knows from the Torah all of them sat section 55 the morning do Rabbi Yossi tells us that the morning do is the congregation of Israel, and Rabbi Shimon says that she comes from the morning or she said he tells us of the travels of the souls at night when people sleep and reminds us why it is good to wake up at midnight and study the Torah at the time when God is delighting himself with the righteous in the garden of Eden 367 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying to the chief musician on the morning doe a psalm of David Tehillim 221 who is the morning doe it is the congregation of Israel called the loving hind and a pleasant row Mishlei 519 he asks his mouth to do in the morning not during the whole day he answers the explanation is that the doe is from the place called the loving hind and a pleasant row she comes from the place called morning as in the verse his going forth is sure as the morning Hashia 63 from Shisad King David said this of the congregation of Israel as understood from the words on the morning doe which is mouth when clothed in Shisad 368 come and see when night falls the gates of the upper and lower beings are found closed and all the far ones namely the External forces rise to walk and roam the world to go about the bodies of men and around their homes and beds they see the image of the Holy King that protects them and they are afraid of harming them since people strengthen themselves in their beds with the words of the Holy Name and protect themselves people's souls ascend each as it deserves as has been already explained happy is the portion of the righteous whose souls ascend while they sleep and are not needlessly detained in an undesirable area 369 at midnight a herald sounds a proclamation and the gates are open the wind from the north side stirs the illumination of Chakma of the left column strums on David's harp Malchut which plays by itself and praises the King's EIR and the Holy One blessed be he delights himself with the righteous in the garden of Eden 370 happy is the portion of he who wakes up from sleep at that time and labors in the Torah he is called the friend of the Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel moreover they are called his brethren and companions as written for my brethren and companions sakes I will now say peace be within you Tehillim 1228 they are called companions to the supernal hosts and angels as written the companions hearken for your voice sure hasherim 813 371 when day comes a herald sounds a proclamation the gates of the south side are opened and the stars and constellations awaken the gates of mercy open and the king sits to receive the praises of the friends who rose at night the congregation of Israel takes then the words of praise and rises to the king's eir and then all the friends who rose at night cleave to the wings of Malchut and their words of praise come to rest in the lap of the king the king then commands to record all these words 372 in the book are recorded all the members of his household who rise at night and the thread of grace is drawn on them during the day by this thread of grace man is crowned with it King's crown which is the secret of the first three Sfirot and is feared by the upper and lower beings he passes through all the king's gates and none dare stop him even when the prosecutors judge the world they do not sentence him because he is marked with the king's imprint and it is known that he is of the king's palace he is therefore not judged happy is the portion of the righteous who study the Torah especially when the Holy One blessed be he is desirous of words of the Torah at midnight. 373 come and see the secret meaning of this is that the congregation of Israel does not stand before the king's EIR and unless it is with the Torah as long as all of Israel in the land of Israel are occupied with the Torah the congregation of Israel dwells among them when they lie idle of the words of the Torah the congregation of Israel cannot be with them even for an instant hence when the congregation of Israel awakens towards the king with the Torah of the lower beings it's her power. Strengthens and the Holy King is happy to receive her. 374 When the congregation of Israel comes before the king without the Torah, she grows weak. Woe to those who weaken the higher power. Therefore, happy are those who do study the Torah, especially when it behooves them to participate with the congregation of Israel. Namely, at midnight, the Holy One, blessed be he, then declares about them and said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Yeshayah 493. Section 56 Watchman, what of the night? Rabbi Yussi talks about the time of exile in Edom, whose termination is not known. He likens the night to Malchut, who is not joined to Zer and God calls to his people to return with penance so that the captivity will end. 375 Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion, saying, The burden of Dumalit silence one calls to me out of Seer. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? Yeshayah 2111. This verse has been explained by the friends. In several places yet the burden of Duma means that as long as Israel are in exile the time and termination of their exile is set but the exile in Edom is the burden of Duma for its termination is not known like that of the others 376 the Holy One blessed be he said one called to me out of Seir which means I heard a voice in the exile of Seir of the oppressed of those who lie in the dust what do they say watchmen what of the night had Lil watchmen what of the night had Lil they beg me on account of my queen who is called night and say what have you done to my queen 377 the Holy One blessed be he then gathered his retinue namely his nearest supernal angels and said behold my beloved children oppressed in exile yet mindless of their sorrow they ask for the queen and say to me watchmen you who are called watchmen what of your watch where is the watch over your house what of the night what have you done with the night with Malchut called night is this how you watched over her what of Layla also refers to Malchut for she is sometimes called Layla and sometimes Layla before she is attached to Zeir and then she is called Layla and when she is attached she is called Layla hence it is written it is a night had Layla of watchfulness Shemot 1242 and this night had Layla Ibid 378 the Holy One blessed be he then answered to Israel here is she whom I watch whom I will receive and be with hence the watchman said yeah yeah 2112 he who watches over the house namely the Holy One blessed be he the morning comes and also the night Ibid first the Holy One blessed be he has ascended and raised with him the morning is it which is constantly with him now morning comes ready to be attached to the night Malchut and also the night is prepared for the union with Yezid they are withheld because of you if you desire it why are you delaying return Ibid return with penance come come to me and we will be in the same lodging and return all to our places hence it is written then Hashem your Elohim will turn back your captivity to Barim 303 it does not say cause to turn but it twice says turn once to the congregation of Israel who will turn towards the Holy One blessed be he and once to the Holy One blessed be he who will turn towards the congregation of Israel it is written then Hashem your Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion on you and will return or turn and gather you from all nations. Section 57 when the morning stars sang together the merchant tells us that when God goes to the garden of Eden to delight himself with the righteous everyone and everything praise him with joy and the morning mercy prevails and all the stars and constellations praise and chant to God the merchant wonders then why our shouts here call for if judgments are removed at the time of mercy Rabbi Shimon explains that this means the shouts broke the power of severe judgments this all. Happened because Abraham awoke and went to plant a tamarisk in Beersheba 379 the
She said are opened and the gates of healing venture into the world the east when Zeir and awakens mercy prevails and all the stars and constellations which are grades appointed under the reign of the morning which is Yezid shining which Asadim all begin to praise and chant to the supernal king hence when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy he asks what is the business of the sons of Elohim being judgment calling for shouts Latira in this morning. The time of Shisad if all judgments are removed when Shisad awakens in the world he answers all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy means that the strength of the severe judgments was broken and their power was broken since shouted Hebari literally means shattered as written the earth is utterly broken down Hebaro Ah Hesha 2419 381 this all happened that the severe judgments were broken because the morning arose in the world which is Yezid and Abraham Shisad awakened and went to plant a tamarisk in Beersheba a tamarisk being Zeir and Beersheba being Malchud for through Abraham who is Shisad Zeir and and Malchud were united I heard that it was indeed in Beersheba which is Malchud it is also written and called there on the name of Hashem the everlasting El Beersheba 2133 namely the unison of Zeir and and Malchud as Hashem is Zeir and and the everlasting El is Malchud section 58 as soon as the morning was light the other Merchant says that the morning was light means that judgments are removed and mercy settles in the world. He says that everything pertains to specific grades and tells us that the sun is a supernal grade. The rabbis then leave the cave as it is morning. 382. The other merchant opened the discussion with the verse. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away. Verse 443. What does it mean? The morning had Booker was light. He answers, I have learned it this way. What is morning? It means that when morning comes, when judgments are removed, and she said, which is to awaken all those of that side of she said, visit have Mevach from their place, she said, and produce blessings to the world. Hence it says, the morning was light. For mercy settles in the world, and she said, remains in its place. Then the morning is light, and it is written, and Elohim saw the light that it was good. Verse 14. As the light, I she said, and good, I is it called good and called morning, she said, is awakened by the Morning is it, this is the meaning of the morning was light. 383 come and see that everything pertains to specific grades. It is known that night is Malchud and it is well known that the morning was light is a supernal grade is it which is always in Malchud when she is luminous when I is it within Malchud when the sun shines it is known that the sun is a supernal grade that perfumes everything and shines on everything namely Typharet is written for Hashem Elohim is a sun and shield Taleb. 8412 the morning was light is it that shines with the light of the sun Typharet and it shines on night Malchud everything therefore is interdependent when the morning was light stirs all the inhabitants of the world namely all the grades of Malchud called world are joined together with joy and abide in the world now that day has broken it is a good time to be on our way 384 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi blessed them kissed their heads and sent them on their way Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Yossi, blessed be the merciful one who prepared our way before us. Surely it is the Holy One, blessed be he who sent them to for us. Happy are those who study the Torah and do not slacken from it. Even for an instant, Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi came out of the cave and went their way. Rabbi Yossi said, Surely my heart is bound with love for these merchants. Rabbi Shia said, I do not wonder about that, for even the birds in the sky utter wise words during the days of Rabbi Shimon, for his words are heard above and below. Section 59 As long as Moses was alive, Rabbi Shia says that since Moses there has been no generation like his who beheld the glory of God at that time, even a maid saw at the parting of the sea what Ezekiel could not see if those people in the desert had such wisdom. How much more has Rabbi Shimon and those who study with him in the future? When Rabbi Shimon has departed, people will seek words of wisdom, but it will be hidden and there will be no. One to reveal the depths of wisdom found in the Torah Rabbi Yehuda says that at the time of Messiah God will reveal the deep mysteries of the Torah and everyone will know God from the least of them to the greatest of them. 385 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse and Hashem said to Moses Behold you shall sleep with your fathers Devarim 3116 Come and see as long as Moses was alive in the world he admonished Israel not to be found sinful before the Holy One blessed be he since Moses was among them there is no generation like that one until the generation when King Messiah will come who beholds the glory of the Holy One blessed be he like they did because they attained what no other generation did 386 We have learned that a maid saw on the sea what the eye of the prophet Ezekiel could not if the maids reached thus far all the more so the wives of Israel and their children even more and the men even more the Sanhedrin all the more and the chiefs even more and all. The more so the supernal faithful prophet Moses who is above everyone now if these merchants in the desert uttered such wisdom all the more so the sages of the generations and even more those who stay with Rabbi Shimon and study from him every day all the more so to Rabbi Shimon who is above everyone 387 after Moses died it is written and this people will rise up and go astray but woe to the world when Rabbi Shimon will depart from it when the springs of wisdom will be sealed from it. World when man will seek words of wisdom but there will be none to utter it the whole world will err in the Torah and there shall be none to awaken it with wisdom of that time it says and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance vi 413 namely if they sin through ignorance of the Torah it is because they will not know its ways why because the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly of it for there will be no one to reveal the depth of the Torah and its ways woe to the generation then in the world 388 Rabbi Yehuda said the Holy One blessed be he will reveal deep mysteries of the Torah at the time of Messiah for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem as the waters cover the sea Yeshua 119 and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying no Hashem for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them Yermeah 3133 Amen may it be so section 61a Ruler has sinned Rabbi Yitzhak wonders why it is implied that a ruler will sin while a priest might sin Rabbi Shimon explains that a ruler will sin through the pride of knowing that all the people are under his charge the matter of his sinning is not in doubt this is why the gift of stones to be placed on the ephod and the breastplate over the priest's heart must be brought by the rulers and not by other men in this way the rulers atone for themselves 389 when a ruler has sinned and done Something through ignorance and has incurred guilt. Vayikra 422 Rabbi Yitzhak taught why it is always written if such as if the priest that is anointed do sin of it three or and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance of it thirteen yet your it is written when a ruler has sinned instead of if the ruler will sin what does this teach us 390 he answers priests are not very sinful as a priest always guards himself because his master's burden is on him daily the burden of it. Whole of Israel and the burden of each of them it is a great wonder if he sins it is therefore written if and also and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance it is a wonder if they are all found committing the same sin for if some sin others do not it is therefore written and if but here when a ruler has sinned surely he has sinned for his heart is swelled with pride because all the people follow him and are under his charge hence it says when a ruler has sinned. Namely in transgressing a negative precept and sinning against one of them it therefore does not say of him and if because this matter of his sinning is not in doubt 391 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse and the rulers brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate Shema 3527 he asks what is the difference here why were these brought by the rulers and not by other men indeed it is written whoever is of a willing heart let him bring it in. Offering of Hashem Ibn 5 and, and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate of Ibn 9 every man is commanded concerning this 392 he replies the Holy One blessed be he said though this donation is open for everyone let these stones be brought by the rulers what is the reason for this the stones are placed on the priest's heart so the Holy One blessed be he said let the rulers whose heart is proud come and bring these stones that are on the priest's heart and their heart's pride will be atoned for it is also written and they shall be on Aaron's heart when he goes in before Hashem Shema 2830 this is why the rulers brought the onyx stones to atone for themselves 393 therefore it is surely written when a ruler has sinned and done something through ignorance against any one of the commandments of Hashem is Elohim concerning things which should not be done Vayikra 422 we explained that he did this by transgressing
Written Torah is within the Oral Torah the secret of Malchut called night and called the Oral Torah while the Oral Torah which is Malchut rules by night and is awake more than by day when Malchut reigns the Torah is clear 395 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying but none says where is Aloha my maker who gives songs in the night EO 3510 come and see when the north wind stirs at midnight we explain that a flame comes out and strikes under the wings of the rooster and he flaps his wings and crows when the flame touches him and stirs against him he looks at it trembles and cries looking and searching for his master's glory to do his bidding and cries to men to rise and worship the holy one blessed be he 396 he is therefore called a rooster derived from washing and a cock head since he is awakened by the flame of Bura and comes from the side of Bura to awaken the world the faithful stand there and give might and strength to the congregation of Israel. Malchut this is called the chanting of the Torah for waking up at midnight David attained the kingdom for himself and his sons forever and ever for all generations 397 when the cock crows and people sleep in their beds and do not rise the cock crows later and says that which he says as we already explained he then flaps his wings and says woe to so and so reproached by his master and abandoned by his master since his spirit did not wake and he did not behold the glory of the king 398. When day breaks a herald cries and says of him but none says where is Aloha my maker who gives songs in the night in order to help him with praises so that everything will help he asks my maker lit makers it should have been in the singular why does it say my makers he answers this applies when man rises at midnight and is occupied with the chanting of the Torah as the chanting of the Torah is recited solely at night when he studies the Torah when day breaks the holy one blessed be he. And the congregation of Israel put on him a thread of grace so that he will be saved from everything and so as to shine upon him among the high and low beings 399 Rabbi Yehuda said I heard that Rabbi Abba discoursed the verse saying where is Aloha my makers it should have said who makes me why say my makers he answers as you said when man rises at midnight and studies the Torah at daybreak Abraham awakens by his thread of grace of which it is written from a thread even to issue. Lashit Bershid 1423 The Holy One blessed be he and the congregation of Israel model him and make him daily into a new creature hence Aloha my makers 400 we have explained that Aloha is spelled Elvav Hail is Abraham of whom it is written the great Elvav is the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir and is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut this is Aloha which hence at Jesus Zeir and and Malchut they make man and model him daily hence the verses my makers is left. Israel rejoice in his makers Tehillim 1492 allude to the Holy One blessed be he Rabbi Yussi said surely this is so and everything amounts to the same thing section 62 or if his sin wherein he has sinned come to his knowledge Rabbi Shimon says that God ordered the congregation of Israel to inform a man with their judgments of any sin that he has committed whenever a man sins but does not repent before God his very soul rises and testifies before God when it Congregation of Israel judges a man his spirit awakens to do penance before God and so he is humbled and brings an offering Rabbi Shimon offers the additional explanation that a man who rises up at night to study the Torah is informed of his sin by the Torah as a mother who tells her child with soothing words and he repents on his own we are also informed why David was punished through his son Absalom 401 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse or if his sin wherein he has sinned comes to his knowledge let cause him to know his sin Vayikra 423 he asks cause him from which side who should cause him to know it should have said or if he knew his sin why cause him to know he answers the Holy One blessed be he ordered the congregation of Israel to inform a man of the sin he committed with what does she inform him with her punishment as written the heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him Eo 2027 the meaning of cause him to know is like that of someone ordering another to inform him as it is written in the imperative to what he orders Malchut to inform him 402 we learn that when a man sins before the Holy One blessed be he it does not care for his sin to repent about it before the Holy One blessed be he but throws it behind his shoulder his very soul rises and testifies before the Holy One blessed be he the king commands the congregation of Israel saying cause him to know his sin wherein he has sinned namely sent him punishments and let him know his sin as in the verse caused Jerusalem to know her abominations Yashis 162 in which caused to know is in the imperative 403 when judgment reaches him his spirit awakes to do penance before his master he is humbled and brings an offering for he of a proud heart sins and forgets his sin and does not mind it the Holy One blessed be he therefore is ready for him and orders to cause him to know his sin so that he shall not forget it 404 Rabbi. You see said assuredly this is so we have seen in David that after he did the deed by Bathsheba he did not pay attention to it the Holy One blessed be he said to him you have forgotten it I shall remind you of it straight away it is written you are the man thus says Hashem the El of Israel 2 Shmuel 127 you are the man who did not remember the sin you are the man who forgot it with what did he inform him using judgment 405 the Holy One blessed be he also said cause him to know his sin. Wherein he has sinned Vayikra 423 these words are true and it is so for it is not written or if it be known to him as in or if it be known that the ox has long been in the habit of goring Shema 2136 whoever rises up at night to study the Torah the Torah informs him of his sin it is not harshly punishment but as a mother who tells her child with soothing words and he does not forget but repents before his master 406 you may say that David used to rise at midnight why did they come on? Him to let him know his sin through punishment he answers David is different because he sinned against that to which he was attached namely Malchut and which required punishment so he was judged according to his sin for he sinned against the holy Malchut to which he was attached being her chariot and holy Jerusalem which corresponds to Malchut he was therefore expelled from Jerusalem and his kingdom was taken from him until he made amends and properly repented 407 Rabbi Yehuda said why did the holy one blessed be he punished David through his son as written behold I will raise up evil against you out of your own house 2 Shmuel 1211 Rabbi Yehuda said we explained that the reason for this is when another man will rise against him he will take no pity on him he said to him but Absalom wished to kill his father with evil counsels more than any other man he said to him I have not heard this 408 he said to him I heard that David sinned with a bath the secret of Malchut the holy. One blessed be he said let a son of a daughter of a foreign come and take revenge who is this it is Absalom who was the son of a good looking woman taken prisoner during the war from this we learned that whoever takes such a woman at war and covets her a disloyal and defiant child issues from her in the end why because the filth has not yet been stopped from him as we have already explained section 63 Hashem has sworn by his right hand we learned that whenever a man sins before God there is a grade above that corresponds to this particular sin and it examines and judges the man if he repents the sin is erased but if he does not repent the sin is recorded in that grade if he keeps on sinning he adds grade on grade until he reaches five grades and judgment is made complete and rests on the man and the left is included within the right 409 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying Hashem has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Yeshayah 628 This verse has already been explained yet come and see as long as man sins before the Holy One blessed be he there is a certain grade above which corresponds to the sin that judges man and examines him if he wholly repents before his master the sin passes away and no judgment has power over him or reaches him if he does not repent the sin is recorded in that grade if he keeps sinning another grade comes against him which agrees with the judgment of the first grade he then needs greater penance if he keeps sinning he adds grade on grade until he reaches five grades 410 when the right is set against that man and agrees with that judgment the left is ready to agree with the right to be included within it as soon as the left agrees with the right it no longer depends on repentance this has already been explained everything is then in agreement concerning that man to use judgment and judgment rests on him 411 when judgment is made complete and rests on man it is Concluded and the fingers are placed five against five right within the left as an indication that everybody agreed on that judgment and his hands are straightened to with the fingers are interlaced which shows that it was done without the man's intention and without his meaning to do so it is therefore written your right hand Hashem is glorious in power your right hand Hashem has dashed the enemy in pieces Shema 156 which means that left was included within the right and judgment is complete and everything is resolved therefore when the Holy
world the altar is circled in order to supply it with blessings from the source of the spring by the number 7 and 70 are heavily emphasized in the section for our consideration 412 rabbi yehuda opened the discussion with the verse the fruit of the citrus tree branches of palm trees vayikra 2340 what is the fruit of the citrus tree it is the itrog he asks does the itrog grow on a citrus tree there are many thorns to the tree of the itrog around it in every direction and you Say the fruit of the citrus tree. He answers the secret of these words is that it is written and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken from the man he made a woman and brought her to the man. Bereshit 222. It is also written, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Shibit 23. This refers to the fruit of the citrus tree. Whence do we know this? Because man is called the tree as written for is the tree of the field of man. Devarim 2019. 413 branches of palm trees. The palm tree grows for 70 years in allusion to Yezid of Zeir and Ben in which are constructed the 70 supernal years. The secret of the seven Tzvirat, Chesed, Bira, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyezid and Malchut, each including 10 altogether. 70. It is tied Hadnish, namely attached above to Zeir and Ben and below to Malchut. It is therefore called branches Hadkap, which means bound since Yezid rises to this place and that Zeir and Ben and Malchut hence the words for all that is in heaven and on earth. Idabre. Hamim 2911 are accurate meaning that Yezid called all eyes attached to heaven Zeir and Ben and earth Malchut 414 Rabbi Yussi said the fruit of the citrus tree is an altar Malchut which produces fruit and buds in every direction why is it called the fruit of a citrus tree because all of the 70 years the seven Svarat, Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyezid and Malchut of Zeir and Ben each including 10 which makes them 70, give Malchut a portion and she is blessed by them all and Zeir and Ben is called a citrus tree what does that teach us that whoever sins and renders the altar defective Malchut sins against and renders all the seven Svarat of Zeir and Ben defective for Malchut is attached to that which is bound and connected above Yezid of Zeir and Ben they are therefore mutually attached Malchut and the seven Svarat of Zeir and Ben and it is written the fruit of the citrus tree branches had cap out of palm trees to show that they are tied had feed them to each other instead of and Bob branches in which the Bob would have interrupted between the fruit of the citrus tree Malchut and the dates which are Yezid Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Yehuda are not in disagreement except for the order of the verses 415 it is written this Hebzad is the portion of the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons Vayikra 735 what does this teach us that Zad is the altar Malchut anointed by Aaron who is Jesus of Zeir and Ben is written and you shall anoint the altar of it. Burnt offering and all its vessels Shema 4010 and of the anointing of his sons these are the rest of the Svirat of Zeir and Ben which come down from Jesus since the altar Malchut is anointed by all of them magnified blessed and purified 416 come and see that the altar is circled once every day and seven times in the end on the holiday of Sukkot what does that teach us a king invited guests and was occupied with them the king had an only daughter she said to him my master the king you do. Not care for me because of the guest he said to her upon your life daughter each day I will give you a gift that is worth the like of them all 417 similarly did Israel bring an offering every day during the holiday for the nations of the world 70 bulls corresponding to the 70 nations the altar Malchut said to the holy king Zeir and wherefore is everyone given parts and portions namely for the nations and to me what do you give he said to it you shall be circled every day by the seven supernal days the secret of the seven Svirat of Zeir and as each includes all of them in order to bless you they shall give you 70 parts daily as each includes 10 against the 70 bulls offered during the holiday for the 70 nations thus every day Israel bring offerings for the nations of the world 418 Rabbi Yehuda said there are seven parts every day and though there is only one circling this is because Malchut is daily blessed by them all as the seven Svirat are Included within each other the particular sphere of each day includes the whole seven but they are not seventy parts corresponding to the seventy nations by the end of the seven days namely on Hashan Arabah Malchut is blessed by the place whence the anointing oil comes namely from Bina where abundance of Chakmal is called oil it is therefore circled seven times in correspondence with these seven days the seven Svirat of Zeir and Ben in order to draw and supply it with blessings from the source of the spring Bina which always flows and never stops thus it is daily blessed on the seven days of the feast of Sukkot until the seventh day from the source of the river Yezid of Zeir and Ben it does not always flow but stops for it wholly illuminates only during prayer and on Shabbat had plural and holidays and also one other time on Hashan Arabah when the altar is circled seven times it is blessed seven times together and all the blessings are then established in it from the supernal place. Where the source comes and never stops which is mine as we have said 419 on every day of the holiday a proclamation sounds regarding it she saying while the baron has born seven and she that has many children has become wretched I Shmuel 25 while the baron has born seven this is the congregation of Israel which is daily blessed by the seven Svirat of Zeir and Ben and eventually rises to be part of the supernal count namely mine as was explained before and she that has many children has become wretched these are the heathen nations that receive a big number on the first day namely 13 bullocks which gradually diminishes every day untl there are only seven bullocks the altar therefore atones for the sins of Israel purifies them and causes blessings to flow on them from above downward 420 and the boughs of a thick leaf tree by 2340 this is the holy king Tiferet attached to both sides Jesus and Bura as Tiferet is the central column including in it the Two columns of the myrtle therefore three branches are taken a thick leaf tree means about that would become about a thick leaf tree that will be attached on every side to the right and to the left and willows of the brook of it are two pillars namely netzach and hot from whence abundance flows on the palm fronds namely is it the palm trees are attached above to zeir and pen and below to malchut as we have already said the ishrog malchut comes from the tree thorns namely the judgments called thorns of zeir and pen called tree for she is built from the judgments of zeir and pen similarly the fronds of the palm trees which are is it are always attached to the thorns of the tree the judgments of zeir and pen since is it tends towards the left of zeir and pen where judgments lie surely whatever emanates into the world comes from here and from here they arrive namely from the four kinds section 65 if a person committed trespass rabbi Yossi speaks about the altar of Elohim and says that the world inherits both judgment and mercy. Rabbi Yitzhak talks about sinning and says that it is the nefesh, not the neshama or the ruash, which sins therefore reward and punishment apply mostly to the nefesh. When a man is sanctified with the holiness of God, he is clothed with the holy neshama and then inherits everything. Such men are called the children of God. Rabbi Yitzhak says, Woe to those evil men whose nefesh have no merit in this world or the world to come. They are the demons of the world. We then read about the Sheshanah that journeys with the three columns so that they all become one crown and the holy name will be seen in their midst. 421 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion with the verse, Then will I go to the altar of Elohim? Tehillim 434 What is the altar of Elohim? It is the upper altar, namely Malchut, which is surely the altar of Elohim, a sign of judgment. It is also the well of Isaac, namely Malchut, called well, which is Constructed by Bure, the secret of Elohim called Isaac, sometimes it is also called the altar of Yudhe Bapay, which is the name of mercy, as written, he arose from the altar of Hashem by Melashim 854. The worlds therefore inherit from Malchut judgment and mercy because she sucks from both sides, namely the side of judgment and the side of mercy. This has already been explained. 422. If an official person committed trespass, Vayakra 515, Rabbi Yitzhak said, We have explained that it is the Nefesh, not the Neshama or the Ruash, for they do not sin but leave before the sin. It is written, Yet the soul Nefesh of my master shall be bound in the bond of life with Hashem, your Elohim, Ishmuel 2529. And the soul's Nefesh of your enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the hollow of a sling, but thus reward and punishment apply mostly to the Nefesh. 423. Blessed are the righteous, for they take part in the Holy One, blessed be he in the Holy Portion and in the sanctifications of it. King for they consecrate themselves with the sanctifications of their master whoever
soul nefesh of my master shall be bound in the bond of life. We explain that the nefesh is attached to the Ruash, the Ruash to the Neshama, and the Neshama to the Holy One. Blessed be he, therefore they are called the bundle of life. Happy is the portion of he who inherits this high inheritance. 425 Woe to those evil men whose nefesh has no merit in this world, not to mention the world to come of them. It is written, and the soul's nefesh of your enemies, he shall sling them out as out of it. Hollow of a sling they roam about the world, but do not find a resting place to stay, and they are defiled by the defiled side. A herald cries out, saying, If a person nefesh commit a trespass of Hashem, he has defiled the sanctuary of Hashem. Bar 1920, namely his nefesh, this is not really the temple of Hashem, for since he did not enter holiness and was not included within it, how could he have defiled it? There are the demons in the world, namely the nefesh of the evil, because they cleave to it. Other side and become unholy. 426 Rabbi Yitzhak said, We have explained that a nefesh when the congregation of Israel Malchut is adorned by the holy king Zeir Enpin and Malchut is named the bundle of life since everything is attached to her, the nefesh is attached to her from below and Zeir Enpin from above. Rabbi Lazar said, When the Sheshana journeys, which is Malchut, she journeys together with the fathers, Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir Enpin, hence it is written, and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of Israel removed Shemot 1419. These are the three verses Shemot 1419 to 21 that indicate the three columns Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir Enpin, of which the Sheshana is the recipient, and with which she journeys. 427 Rabbi Abba said, Everything the three columns, Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, and the Sheshana became one crown so that they will be crowned together, and the holy name, namely the name of Ayan Bet equals 72, will be seen in their midst at that time. Zeir Enpin is called like the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the suns. Sure, Hasherim 23 for the three columns, Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, are the secret of the three colors, white, red, and green, seen in the apple Israel, and saw on the sea a supernal precious splendor journeying before them. We have learned this from and brought you out, he himself being present with his mighty power out of Egypt. Devarim 437, these are the patriarchs, Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet of. And the angel removed, and it came in Moses stretched out, and therefore this name Malchut breaks mountains and breaks rocks, and it may bring good and evil. Happy is the portion of Israel. We are told that anyone who trespasses in the holy things must bring both the capital and a fifth part more. This is the secret of the capital awaiting one in the world to come. Rai Mahin the faithful shepherd 428, it is a commandment that he who trespasses in the holy things should bring the capital. At Karen and add the fifth part as written and add the fifth part to it. Vayikra 516 the capital also horn is the secret of Bob of the Yud Bob Hey namely Zeir Enpin and its fifth part is Hey namely Malchut as there are five aspects to Zeir Enpin Keter Shachma Bani Tiferet and Malchut of which Malchut is the fifth part this is the ram's horn Hebubal to with the horn Zeir Enpin receives from Jubali Hebubal Bani this is the secret of the horn that was on the forehead of the bull. That the first man sacrificed this horn had Karen alludes to Zeir Enpin for by bringing an offering he brought Malchut to Zeir Enpin this namely bringing the fifth part to the capital is the principal part in every offering this is the secret of the capital had Karen Zeir Enpin awaiting one in the world to come Bani namely he receives from Bani while one may enjoy its fruits in this world which is Malchut that receives from Zeir Enpin this is Hey Hey the first Hey of the Yud Hey Bob Hey Bani. And the last hay of the name Yud Hay Bob Hay Malchut Bob Zeir Enpin stands between them receiving from the first hay the secret of the capital awaiting him in the world to come and giving plenty to the last hay the secret of the fruit in this world and of Rai Mahin Rabbi Shimon says that a goat must be brought for an offering because it atones for the spirit of defilement that passed over the sinner 429 come and see why a goat is brought as an offering Rabbi Shimon said that it was brought because of her name goat Hebezi from which we deduce that it is the evil side and an evil species for Ezi indicates harsh Hebezi and severe judgments why therefore is she brought for an offering he answers Rabbi Shimon said that she has to be offered because if a spirit of defilement passed over him or he dealt with it he should offer the goat namely in accordance with his manner of sinning section 66 Nefesh Rash Neshama we are told by Rabbi Shimon that some people attain the Neshama, some attain the awakening of the Ruash, and some attain only the Nefesh, the latter cleave to the defiled side, and the evil side comes to these people in dreams to tell them some true things, but also some false things about what will happen in the near future. We read about the three grades of evil ones. We are told about what happens to the soul of man at night when it rises while he sleeps, when the righteous who have attained the Neshama go with the dough at midnight. They are adorned with her before God. Rabbi Shimon says that there is a difference between Israel and the heathen nations, and that even a man of Israel who has only a Nefesh still has a supernal grade on him if he wishes to attain a Ruash and a Neshama, he merits it and thus attains it, but the heathen nations can only attain the Nefesh. Rabbi Shimon describes the fire consuming fire, the fire that consumes the defiled side, and says that the man who brings his offering stands beside it, and he is. Forgiven 430 Rabbi Shimon also said that we learned that some attain the Neshama, some attain the awakening of the Ruash, and some attain the Nefesh only he who merits the Nefesh alone and does not rise further to attain Ruash and Neshama cleaves to the defiled side when he sleeps the evil sides come and cleave to him and let him know in a dream about the affairs of the world some of them true and some false sometimes they mock him and show him falsehoods and grieve him in his dream in the heathen nations therefore some see in their dreams true things because the side they cleave to lets them know all of them are things that will happen in the near future 431 come and see in these evil kinds there are three grades one on the other the highest grade is of those who hang in the air who hear that which was decreed above but do not come into this world the lowest grade contains those that mock at people and grieve them in their dreams because they are impudent as dogs there is a Higher grade, namely the middle one, where there are both of those above and those below. They hear things from the ones above, namely those hanging in the air, and announce things to men in a dream. Some lies and some truths, the words of truth concern that which will happen in the near future. 432 in relation to the grade of those who hang in the air, who are higher, he who attains but a nefesh when that nefesh desires to be perfected and receive a rash, then before attaining a rash at night. While sleeping, something comes out of the nefesh and expands in the world. This means that not the whole nefesh comes out of man while he sleeps, but a part thereof, for a measure of vitality remains. It desires, yet desires not to rise above among angels until it meets those clipot in the air that tell it things. Some of them that will happen in the near future, and some that will happen in the distant future. It is to this grade of those hanging in the air to which he is attached in his dream. Until he attains a rash 433 upon attaining a rash that rash comes out and smashes mountains and rocks that are the external forces it rises and expands comes among the supernal holy angels since the rash comes from the world of Yetzirah where the angels are it knows there some things and learns from them and then returns to its place that a man is attached to holiness until he merits a Neshama and attains it 434 when he attains a Neshama it ascends high up namely into the world. A Briah from whence the Neshama comes the guards by the gates do not detain it so it expands further up among the righteous who are bound in the bundle of life which is Malchut of Atzalam where it beholds the delights of the king and enjoys the supernal splendor 435 when the sacred dough which is Malchut is woken by the north wind namely at midnight she descends and the righteous who has attained a Neshama awakes and strengthens himself as a mighty lion with the Torah until daylight then. He goes with the sacred dough to be seen before the king and receive from him a thread of grace. What is it? It is the thread of Abraham, namely the light of Chesed, which he attained as written from a thread even to a shulash at Beersheet 1423. He derives no enjoyment from anything else but said from a thread. He thus merited that thread, the light of Chesed. This is called Abraham's thread. 436. When the righteous comes with the dough, Malchut, he is adorned with her before the king. And David says to the chief musician on the morning dough, Tehillim 221, which is the congregation of Israel, Malchut, the morning dough is the hymn of the congregation of Israel, sung
See some people cleave to that side of defilement because they have attained no more than the nefesh when the spirit of defilement passes over them it rests on them and they cleave to it then the sin that the man has committed is from the side of the spirit of defilement and his offering is one goat since this is the animal that comes from that side to atone for his sin 441 Rabbi Lazar his son said to him that it is written his body shall not remain all night on the tree that your land be. Not defiled Devarim 21 23 because the land is holy and so the spirit of defilement shall not find a place in the holy land on which to rest if this be so since the spirit of defilement rests on this animal the goat and comes from her aspect why is she brought as offering to the holy side he said to him you have asked well 442 yet come and see my son it is written for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire Devarim 424 there is a fire consuming fire a fire of the holy one blessed be he which consumes the other fire of the other side come and see there are angels who sing before the holy one blessed be he when they finish singing they are extinguished by the spark of the consuming fire that burns them down below the holy one blessed be he prepared the fire on the altar the secret of the fire of Malchut of her judgments this fire eats and consumes that defiled side which is brought to naught by the tongue of fire and nothing remains from it in the world the man who brings his Offering stands by it and by means of the rising smell of the sacrifice the side of the spirit of defilement that rests on him is removed from him and he is forgiven thus everything is brought to naught and is consumed and nothing withstands that fire of the altar section 67 and let the skies pour down righteousness Rabbi Shia talks about shower O heavens from above which refers to the nourishment from God we learn that nourishment does not depend on merit when the heavens receive nourishment from above the skies pour down righteousness manna is therefore ground for the righteous it is to be wished that every kind of mercy and goodness in the world will increase and there will be food for everyone in the world and that every world will be blessed 443 Rabbi Acha was walking on the way when he met Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi walking together Rabbi Acha said surely we are going to welcome the Shechina they joined and went together Rabbi Acha said let each of us say something in relation to the Torah as we walk 444 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying Shower O heavens from above Yeshua 458 This verse is the secret of wisdom which I learned from the holy luminary Shower O heavens from above what is Shower it is like the words my doctrine shall drop as the rain Devarim 322 it speaks about the rain which is everybody's food the eyes of the whole world therefore look towards the holy one blessed be he for sustenance since he gives food for all and feeds everyone as written the eyes of all wait on you Tehillim 14,515 445 you may say that it depends on the place called heavens Zeir and yet we learned that nourishment does not depend on merit merit as we explained is charity namely Zeir and as charity is translated into Aramaic as merit while charity and heaven are the same thing it thus does not depend on heaven which is Zeir and it is written here Shower O heavens from above namely heaven from higher. Above from above is surely from Atika Kaddish Arak Enpin whence nourishment is from not from the place called heaven and merit but precisely from above 446 and let the skies pour down righteousness Yeshua 458 when the heavens Zeir Enpin received nourishment from above from the supernal place resting on the Arak Enpin from the secret of the beard had dinner called Mazalah then the skies pour down righteousness what are the skies it is a place where manna is ground for the righteous and what are those Netzach and Hod which surely grind manna for the righteous to whom to the place called the righteous Yezid since they grind manna that comes from above from Arak Enpin all goodness is gathered within them to be given to the great called the righteous Yezid so that righteousness Malchut shall be blessed from their flow manna is therefore ground for the righteous who are the righteous righteous and righteousness which are Joseph and Rachel Yezid and Malchut who are called Righteous when joined together 447 net satch and hot indeed grind manna for the righteous righteous and righteousness the verse therefore says let the skies net satch and hot pour down righteousness then let the earth open it below and let them bring forth salvation of it namely the inhabitants of the world and let it cause righteousness also charity to spring up also of it so that every kind of mercy and goodness in the world will increase there will be food for men in the world and there will be joy upon joy and every world will be blessed Rabbi Acha said had I come only to hear this it would suffice section 68 my heart goes out to the governors of Israel Rabbi Yussi says that with an intent heart and great desire men must draw from the deep river by praying to God then there will be blessings drawn down from the light and spread throughout the world 448 Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion saying my heart goes out to the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people bless Hashem Shoftim 59 come and see it behooves man to extend blessings from above downward willingly and with the meditation of his heart to unite together the holy name he needs to draw by prayer to the holy one bless be he with desire and an intent heart from the deep river but as written out of the depths I have cried to you Hashem Tehillim 1301 there is the depth of everything in the supernal depths the supreme beginning where Abba and I am a are united namely Chakma and Bana of Bana here too my heart goes out to the governors of Israel who are the governors had Chukim of Israel it is not written those engraven had Chukim on Israel but the governors of Israel are Abba and I am a who engraved namely give Mokin to holy Israel's Eir and that is drawn from between them 449 that offered themselves willingly had Hamid and among the people are the patriarchs namely Chisip Bura and Tiferet of Zeir Enpin, called princes had Nedavim as written the nobles had Nedavim of the peoples are gathered together the people of the Elohim of Abraham Tehillim 4710 to with the patriarchs that are come from Abraham Chisit of Zeir Enpin are called the nobles of the peoples and bless Hashem to draw from him blessings downward so that there will be blessings throughout the world when blessings from above are here in this world below everyone is joyful and everything is in perfection as no light is completed save when it is drawn to this world happy is the portion of Israel for the holy one blessed be he pours plenty of blessings on them and hears their prayer of them it is written he eats the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer Tehillim 10218